Hello, hello, hello. Gotta dig deep. I'm on top of the mountain, but it's real steep. Uh, been through the valley, now I'm at the peak. Yeah, I how you learning every time I speak. And when kings collide, they expect to fight. But I know the truth, yeah, we the light. Don't believe the hype, nothing's overnight. Views from the top like a satellite. Yeah, I don't care what the they say. I live with honor for my name's sake. I do what I want and not what they say. Now I'm in the position for a big payday. Welcome to David E. Tweet. Uh, coming in here, looking at all the memorabilia and the uplift it's had. It looks fantastic. It's a great facility for you members to come and enjoy during the summer and have a wonderful time and watch Warwickshire win. I recall my time starting in Warwickshire. I was the age of 14 when I walked through the gates here at Edgbaston. Uh, over the years, it's been fantastic. I've been here a long time now and been associated with the club with a lot of success. And 1980 uh, was the first success that Warwickshire had that I enjoyed. As part of the squad, I was on the Lord's ground staff, but still playing a lot of second team cricket for Warwickshire. And the two guys here, David Brown and Bob Willis, lifted the John Player League, which was absolutely fantastic. And it gave us all the lift that future's gonna look good. So just going forward from the 1980s, uh, 1980, I joined the staff in 1981. And our first success really winning a trophy was in 1989. And I recall uh, the semi-final here at Edgbaston. It was a packed house against Worcestershire. And it's the first time uh, I appreciated how magnificent this stadium is to play in when its capacity is full. The best thing about it was about 2,000 Worcestershire fans and the rest were ours. Uh, a great atmosphere. And when we walked out, it was fantastic. And even better was that we beat them by 100 runs. You couldn't have asked for any more. But then we went on and we won the 1989 NetWest final against Mike Gettings uh, Middlesex, which again, uh, I was lucky enough to be there at the end. And Neil Smith hit a magnificent six at the end in the last over and we got over the line uh, and won that game. 1994, we come to that magnificent year where we won three trophies, runners up in the last one. And then 1993 was the NetWest final, which I suppose everybody remembers me for. The 100 at Lords chasing 320 to win. And we did, Dermot myself, put a big partnership on. And to be honest, there's members, every time I walk into the ground, still remember me for that day. But at the end of the day, it was a great day for Warwickshire. And for all the members, because at half time we were 4 0 down, at full time we won 5 4. I've played and viewed cricket from many grounds over my years watching cricket, playing cricket. There isn't a ground better than Edgbaston to view your cricket from. You can go to any part of this lovely ground and you get a great view. Please count yourself lucky that you're associated with this fantastic club, fantastic ground where your viewing facility is better than any other in the country. Came about on tour, um, obviously really proud and really honoured to be asked to uh, a great club like this, to, especially after only one season. Um, yeah, I was really pleased. Um, but yeah, built a really good relationship with Davo over the last over the last year I've been here, so I think we'll work well together. Um, but yeah, during tour got asked and was, was more than happy to accept. It wasn't really on my radar, purely due to the number of senior heads that we've got and some 
probably some of the other candidates and the leaders we've got in the squad. Um, but um, yeah, it's a really nice feeling to have been asked. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the most outgoing like that. I, I'm not the loudest in the change room, like you say, but um, I'm also, I feel like I'm not too shy in coming forward and I'll put my opinion across if I feel like something needs to be said. Um, so yeah, th there's obviously different ways of going about leading in, in parts, but obviously being advised as well, it's a lot of it's going to be alongside Al and just supporting him really and some of the jobs that he may not have time to do or he needs a bit of help with. It, it's been great. I've, I've loved every minute of being here and it, it was a big change for me. It was a big move for me, but it's, I've, I've loved every minute, like I say, and I'm hoping to kick on this year with the cricket. I enjoyed the cricket last year and it, it went well, but I'd like to kick on and, and do even better this year and hopefully this sort of tag work won't affect that and I can kick on, like I say. again. What a shot that is. Easy as you like for Sam Hay. Hold it. Brilliant from Wokes. That is stunning. I think I've always been involved in sport and I've got a really sporty family. Um, my sister's a professional athlete, so I'd always kind of seen up close what elite sport looked like and what it took to get there. So I always knew I kind of wanted to go into sport, but not necessarily playing. Just went to Northampton University to do my undergrad in sports science. Finished my master's at Loughborough in about September 2021, and then saw this role come up probably just before I finished that. Applied for it, got offered the job, and have been here since. November 2021, coming up to my third season now. With my job, it's kind of split between the pathway and then the professional squad. Um, so the main part of my job is to lead the pathway, so Academy and EPP, and then oversee our county age group programme. But then I also work closely and support the professional squad as well. Particularly here, it's a really great group of people. So the biggest thing I'd enjoy is just coming into work every day and being around people that you want to spend time with and you want to work together with, whether it's players or staff. Um, I think in terms of my actual job, seeing players progress from a place where, particularly young players, where they didn't either enjoy the gym or kind of understand how it would help them, seeing them get to a point where they're really keen to do it and they can see exactly why they're doing it and how it's going to help their cricket, um, they're probably the biggest things. The boys have made me feel so included right from day dot. They don't see me as kind of any different to it being a male less than um, So, yeah, I think if. There's a couple of us within the men's circuit, but um, it's really good to just kind of be one of few and kind of show that we're just as capable of fulfilling the role as well. I think it's tough if you don't see people in the role, then you almost don't believe that it's an opportunity. So I think it's if you're if it's something you're passionate about, um, definitely don't be afraid to stick with it and really kind of look to see where you can get to. Um, there's so many opportunities out there. Um, not just for men or not even just in men's sport, in um, women's sport or disability sport or anything like that. Um, so I think if it's something you're passionate about, put your all into it, get as much experience as you can um, and don't be afraid to dream big or try and get to where you want to get to.
through the valley, now I'm at the peak. Yeah, I hide you learning every time I speak. And when kings collide, they expect to fight. But I know the truth, yeah, we the light. Don't believe the hype, nothing's overnight. Views from the top like a satellite, yeah. I don't care what the they say. I live with honor for my name's sake. I do what I want and not what they say. Now I'm in a position for a big payday. <gasps> Welcome to David E. Tweet. Uh, coming in here, looking at all the memorabilia and the uplift it's had, it looks fantastic. It's a great facility for you members to come and enjoy during the summer and have a wonderful time and watch Warwickshire win. I recall my time starting in Warwickshire. I was the age of 14 when I walked through the gates here at Edgbaston. Uh, over the years, it's been fantastic. I've been here a long time now and been associated with the club with a lot of success and 1980 uh, was the first success that Warwickshire had that I enjoyed. As part of the squad, I was on the Lord's ground staff but still playing a lot of second team cricket for Warwickshire and the two guys here, David Brown and Bob Willis, lifted the John Play League which was absolutely fantastic and it gave us all the lift that future's going to look good. So just going forward from the 1980s, uh, 1980, I joined the staff in 1981 and our first success really winning a trophy was in 1989 and I recall uh, the semi-final here at Edgbaston. It was a packed house against Worcestershire and it's the first time uh, I appreciated how magnificent this stadium is to play in when its capacity is full. The best thing about it was about 2,000 Worcestershire fans and the rest were ours. Uh, a great atmosphere and when we walked out it was fantastic and even better was that we beat them by 100 runs you couldn't have asked for any more but then we went on and we won the 1989 Nat West final against Mike Gettings uh, Middlesex which again uh, I was lucky enough to be there at the end and Neil Smith hit a magnificent six at the end in the last over and we got over the line uh, and won that game 1994 we come to that magnificent year where we won three trophies, runners-up in the last one. And then 1993 was the NatWest final, which I suppose everybody remembers me for. The 100 at Lords, chasing 320 to win. And we did, Dermot myself, put a big partnership on. And to be honest, there's members, every time I walk into the ground, still remember me for that day. But at the end of the day, it was a great day for Warwickshire and for all the members because at half time we were 4 0 down, at full time we won 5 4. I've played and viewed cricket from many grounds over my years watching cricket, playing cricket. There isn't a ground better than Edgbaston to view your cricket from. You can go to any part of this lovely ground and you get a great view. Please count yourself lucky that you're associated with this fantastic club, fantastic ground where your viewing facility is better than any other in the country. Came back on tour, um, obviously really proud and really honoured to be asked to a, a great club like this, to, especially after only one season. Um, yeah, I was really pleased. Um, but yeah, built a really good relationship with Dave over the last over the last year I've been here, so I think we'll work well together. Um, but yeah, during tour got asked and was, was more than happy to accept. It wasn't really on my radar, purely due to the number of senior heads that we've got and some probably some of the other candidates and the leaders we've got in the squad. Um, but um, yeah, it's a really nice feeling to have been asked. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the most outgoing like that. I, I'm not the loudest in the change room, like you say. But um, I'm also, I feel like I'm not too shy in coming forward, and I'll put my opinion across if I feel like something needs to be said. Um, so yeah, th there's obviously different ways of going about leading in in parts. But obviously, being a vice as well, it's a lot of it's going to be alongside Al and just supporting him really in some of the jobs that he may not have time to do or he needs a bit of help with. It's been great. I've, I've loved every minute of being here and 
it, it was a big change for me. It was a big move for me, but it's, I've loved every minute, like I say, and I'm hoping to kick on this year with the cricket. I enjoyed the cricket last year and it, it went well, but I'd like to kick on and, and do even better this year. And hopefully this sort of tag won't affect that and I can kick on, like I say. again. What a shot that is. Easy as you like for Sam Hay. Hold it. Brilliant from Wokes. That is stunning. I think I've always been involved in sport and I've got a really sporty family. Um, my sister's a professional athlete, so I'd always kind of seen up close what elite sport looked like and what it took to get there. So I always knew I kind of wanted to go into sport, but not necessarily playing. Just went to Northampton University to do my undergrad in sports science. Finished my master's at Loughborough in about September 2021, and then saw this role come up probably just before I finished that. Applied for it, got offered the job, and have been here since November 2021, coming up to my third season now. With my job, it's kind of split between the pathway and then the professional squad. Um, so the main part of my job is to lead the pathway, so academy and EPP, and then oversee our county age group programme. But then I also work closely and support the professional squad as well. Particularly here, it's a really great group of people. So the biggest thing I'd enjoy is just coming into work every day and being around people that you want to spend time with and you want to work together with, whether it's players or staff. Um, I think in terms of my actual job, seeing players progress from a place where, particularly young players, where they didn't either enjoy the gym or kind of understand how it would help them, seeing them get to a point where they're really keen to do it and they can see exactly why they're doing it and how it's going to help their cricket, um, they're probably the biggest things. The boys have made me feel so included right from day dot. They don't see me as kind of any different to it being a male SSC. Um, so yeah, I think if there's a couple of us within the men's circuit, but um, it's really good to just kind of be one of few and kind of show that we're just as capable of fulfilling the role as well. I think it's tough if you don't see people in the role, then you almost don't believe that it's an opportunity. So I think it's, if you're if it's something you're passionate about, um, definitely don't be afraid to stick with it and really kind of look to see where you can get to. Um, there's so many opportunities out there, um, not just for men or not even just in men's sport, in um, women's sport or disability sport or anything like that. Um, so I think if it's something you're passionate about, put your all into it, get as much experience as you can um, and don't be afraid to dream big or try and get to where you want to get to. Side edge and dragged on, knocked it over. Welcome to David E. Tweet, uh, coming in here, looking at all the memorabilia and the uplift it's had. 
It looks fantastic. It's a great facility for you members to come and enjoy during the summer and have a wonderful time and watch Warwickshire win. I recall my time starting in Warwickshire. I was the age of 14 when I walked through the gates here at Edgbaston. Uh, over the years, it's been fantastic. I've been here a long time now and been associated with the club with a lot of success. And 1980 uh, was the first success that Warwickshire had that I enjoyed. As part of the squad, I was on the Lord's ground staff, but still playing a lot of second team cricket for Warwickshire. And the two guys here, David Brown and Bob Willis, lifted the John Player League, which was absolutely fantastic. And he gave us all the lift that future is going to look good. So just going forward from the 1980s, uh, 1980, I joined the staff in 1981 and our first success really winning a trophy was in 1989 and I recall uh, the semi-final here at Edgbaston. It was a packed house against Worcestershire and it's the first time uh, I appreciated how magnificent this stadium is to play in when its capacity is full. The best thing about it was about 2,000 Worcestershire fans and the rest were ours. Uh, a great atmosphere and when we walked out it was fantastic. And even better was that we beat them by 100 runs. You couldn't have asked for any more. But then we went on and we won the 1989 NetWest final against my Gettings uh, Middlesex, which again uh, I was lucky enough to be there at the end and Neil Smith hit a magnificent six at the end in the last over and we got over the line uh, and won that game. 1994, we come to that magnificent year where we won three trophies, runners up in the last one. And then 1993 was the NetWest final, which I suppose everybody remembers me for. The 100 at Lords chasing 320 to win. And we did, Dermot myself, put a big partnership on. And to be honest, there's Members, every time I walk into the ground, still remember me for that day. But at the end of the day, it was a great day for Warwickshire and for all the members, because at half time we were 4 0 down, at full time we won 5 4. I've played and viewed cricket from many grounds over my years watching cricket, playing cricket. There isn't a ground better than Edgbaston to view your cricket from. You can go to any part of this lovely ground and you get a great view. Please count yourself lucky that you're associated with this fantastic club, fantastic ground where your viewing facility is better than any other in the country. Came back on tour, um, obviously really proud and really honoured to be asked to a, a great club like this, to, especially after only one season. Um, yeah, I was really pleased. Um, but yeah, built a really good relationship with Davo over the last over the last year I've been here, so I think we'll work well together. Um, but yeah, during tour got asked and was, was more than happy to accept. It wasn't really on my radar, purely due to the number of senior heads that we've got and some probably some of the other candidates and leaders we've got in the squad. Um, but um, yeah, it's a really nice feeling to have been asked. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the most outgoing like that. I, I'm not the loudest in the change room, like you say. But um, I'm also, I feel like I'm not too shy in coming forward, and I'll put my opinion across if I feel like something needs to be said. Um, so yeah, th there's obviously different ways of going about leading. Well, the, left as well. So it's very much on the priory side of the ground. Uh, the two Worcestershire openers are waiting as well because Warwickshire have won the toss. Alex Davis leading the side for the first time. He called right against Brett D'Oliveira and uh, he chose to bowl first. In terms of the team news, for Warwickshire significantly no Sam Hayne. He is unavailable due to personal reasons. But there is a debut for the South African 
fast bowling all-rounder Michael Booth, who uh, will eventually qualify as English in around 18 months' time. Got a contract last year here for the Bears. Uh, played a little bit of cricket in the 50-over format, but he is in the first 11 of the season. So Alex Davis and Rob Yates, the opener. Will Rhodes, the former captain. Dan Mosley, Jacob Bethel, Ed Barnard against his former county. Appointed vice-captain of Warwickshire yesterday, Barnard. Michael Burgess, the wicketkeeper. Danny Briggs, Michael Booth, and then two wily performers with the ball, Chris Rushworth and the man in his testimonial year, Ollie Hannon Dolby. Worcestershire give debuts to the West Indies former skipper Jason Holder and also to Nathan Smith, the New Zealand seamer who was the leading wicket taker in the Plunkett Shield this year. So they have a strong looking team as well with Jake Libby and Gareth Roderick on their way to the crease. Kashi Valley, Rob Jones, who they signed from Lancashire last season, Adam Hose, the former bear, Brett D'Oliveira, the captain, Holder, Matthew Waite, Smith, Joe Leach and Adam Finch. Tom Taylor injured a knee in a warm-up game and as a result has not made it here today. And I'm not saying the players are keen, Mel. I'm not <laughs> saying the players are a little bit keen. But we're not even at two minutes to yet and Ollie Hannon Dolby is marking out his <laughs> run-up but we're nearly there. Well, it's it's not just about the start of the county championship season, is it? It's about the rivalry between the, these two and Worcestershire back up in the top flight. Uh, would love nothing better than to knock over their nearest and dearest, in inverted commas, neighbours in Warwickshire. And I, I was thinking about these two, and you look, go down and look at the players. There's so much intertwinedness, if you like, between yeah. these two sides, between players that have gone one way and the other, coaching staff as well, managing directors, everything. So I'm not sure there's anything else quite like it as far as two teams being so close. Yes, of course, Ashley Giles, the chief executive at Worcestershire these days. A very warm welcome to those of you listening on Sports Extra as well. Uh, this is the only Division 1 action that is starting on time. There's a uh, the game at Lords due to get underway in Division 2 as well, but everywhere else is awaiting and we will get underway and even a moment early or two for uh, Ollie Hannon Dolby to cut all the first ball of the season to Roderick who clips it behind square for four. What a way to start. It's a short boundary on the Priory side but he just leans on it, clips it through the onside and Worcestershire immediately on to four without loss. Yeah, that is quite a short boundary there. They were playing a warm-up game here that was uh, on the strip a couple of ones across uh, the other day of the other week against uh, Leicestershire and, and all anyone had to do is blow at the ball or look at it and it went to the boundary. So might be a little bit of that today, but anything down the leg side to Roderick is in trouble. Lower part of the trouser legs of the slip cordon all flickering as this is a short ball <laughs> and cut. And that may well be four. The outfield is slow, though. In fact, that has taken all of the pace out of the ball. An unnecessary slide from Alex Davis when he gets there, but three more for Roderick. Starting at Basball pace, seven without loss after just two deliveries, <laughs> Worcestershire, but uh, Ollie Hannon Dolby not quite getting the length right there. Well, I said anything on in the leg side was, was in trouble, but that one was outside off stump and was just able to, to carve it uh, in the, the gap in the covers, but it did slow up an awful lot. There's uh, quite a stiff breeze uh, that's uh, coming across the ground. As uh, Hannah Dolby comes in, it might take a while for him to find his rhythm here. Four slips in the cordon, that's a better delivery, straight, pushed by Libby, a former Nottinghamshire man, and it's the left boot of Hannah Dolby that traps it in his follow-through. Of course, it's an exciting year for Ollie Hannah Dolby. It's, uh, he's been granted a testimonial year this year, and signed a, a contract extension up to the end of uh, 25, I believe. So... A huge year for him. I know he's very excited about all the events coming up. Yeah, in fact, we had a dinner here last Thursday, which was uh, very entertaining. Charges in there, right arm over the wicket, bit of sun out. That's back of a length and left alone and some good pace and carry on that through to Michael Burgess. Yeah, he had um, some guest speakers last week. There was uh, Ashley Giles, Jonathan Trott was here to talk for him, Dennis Amos, who... Uh, Always likes a chat. And uh, Jason Ratcliffe, uh, former Warwickshire batsman, who uh, represents a few of the players in this Bears team today. I think Messrs Briggs, Barnard and Bethel are under the agency of Jason Ratcliffe, I think, if I'm right. It's, uh, it was a very good night for Ollie, who's uh, raising money for Kulu Kimin and for the former cricketer's benevolent fund this year. And he's in back of a length and a very straight bat from Libby plays it back down the wicket. And there's no run. We're in an era where you don't see many players get to the sort of benefit stroke testimonial year. 
Well, we've got two in this game today because yeah. Joe Leach, also from Worcestershire, he's uh, been granted a benefit year as well. So uh, that's something to have two in, uh, in one fixture, the first fixture of the year. Two great county pros. I think that's the thing they have in common. They've done a lot of heavy lifting for their counties over the course of a decade plus. It's Hannah Dolby coming in to complete the over into bowl to Libby. Forces it off the back foot. Nicely timed. Again, the outfield might just slow that up. It really does. Oh, it's wow. like it's an emergency stop in the outfield. <laughs> it is clearly quite wet out there as uh, Alex Davis gets there and he loses his towel, which he hasn't noticed. He's dropped that inside the boundary. So three more for Worcestershire and to Libby and ten runs taken off the uh, first over of the season. Now, I've got to do an update as soon as my clock ticks to three minutes past. So if uh, we just stay with me for a second, Mel, and then uh, you can take over commentary. Phil Britt will be uh, joining us in a bit as well. As uh, Chris Rushworth gets ready to uh, bowl his first over of the uh, new season. So uh, we'll get this uh, first update done of the morning. Maybe just before he uh, bowls the first ball. At Edgebaston, it's uh, play starting on time, which after all the overnight rain and the uh, miserable weather of recent weeks is quite a bonus. Warwickshire have won the toss and put Worcestershire into bat. They actually took 10 off the first over, bowled by Ollie Hannon Dolby. A debut for Michael Booth for the Bears today. He comes into the side. No Sam Hayne, who's not available due to personal reasons. While for the visitors, test bowler Jason Holder, the West Indian, he makes his debut. In the second over, it's 11 without loss. Richard Wilford at Edgebaston. Superbly, superbly done by you. I love listening to you. It's, it's all you can do, isn't That's it? That's uh... fantastic. <laughs> Such professionalism. Anyway, back here, it's Chris Rush Rushworth about to start his over. Bowling to Roderick is over the wicket. And that one just left with a nice little swoosh of the bat by Roderick. And uh, Chris Rushworth, well, we were talking about players who, who got testimonials. I reckon all, you know, when you look at players who've been a great servant, a lot of people thought that Chris Rushworth would be at Durham yeah. until the end of his career before he made the switch down here last year. But when you talk about great county pros and servants of the game, he's certainly been one of them as well. He turns at the top of his mark. He's in again over the wicket there's a big shout but it's sort of only half-hearted it was a big press forward by Roderick just clipping the pad he produced the the spell of the season for Warwickshire last year at Hampshire last May on the final morning of a game that the Bears ended up winning by an innings but he, he took six wickets in the air before lunch and it was just the control it was very much like he got a ball on the string and it was it was brilliant over 50 wickets in his first season for the Bears yeah, that's a, a pretty good start. He's running in again. Bowls good length ball, and it's just turned into the leg side, mid-wicket fielding. So Roderick just being a little bit cautious and playing plenty of respect to Rushworth in his first over. Still the four slips, and it's interesting. It's not terribly overcast. You'd think that with a bit of dampness around, it might suit the seamers. But this breeze, the strength of this breeze, may just even things out a bit this morning. It's always, it's always a bit of a fun lottery, isn't it, at the start of the season? Favouring bowlers as Rushworth is in, bowls a good, strong stride forward in defence by Roderick, but again, showing him uh, he's due at the moment. Uh, and also, it's, uh, it's interesting uh, for those of you who can't see, uh, some might be watching on the stream as well, that there are some sort of tram lines that you might notice around the ground on the outfield. There's a, a few at various spots around the square as well. And that's the new drainage system here at Edgebaston. So that might be one of the reasons that we've been able to get a game on. They've spent a lot of money on that. Rushworth is in. This time, Roderick does get it away. He's picked it out just behind square. Again, that outfield, it's like, honestly, there's, there's a big slosh of something out there that just traps the ball and stops it going any further. But they will move to 14 for none. Roderick on 10, or is that not ticked over? Yeah, no, it has ticked over? Yes, it has. And it is the end of Chris Rushworth's over. Uh, 14 for none. 
Yeah, the ball on the uh, on that side of the ground towards the old scoreboard. For about 80% of the way, it rolls very nicely. Yeah. And then it's like the elastic has, has been stretched too far and just starts holding back and giving resistance. But I do know how gingerly the Bears fielders are fielding the ball in that area. So I, I would... And that is another area where some of the drainage lines have been put in. But yes. I, I think that is still a bit damp. So that's clearly been identified as one of the patches that needed some work. As Michael Burgess is coming up to the stumps here. For Ollie Hannon Dolby's second over, bowling to Roderick. They've also withdrawn one of the slips. They're down to three. Yates, Mosley, and Bethel in that order. And a ring of three fielders in the offside as Hannon Dolby comes in to bowl. And it's just guided down towards point by Roderick, picked up by Barnard. And no run. How do you think uh, Ollie Hannon Dolby feels about? someone keeping up to the stumps. I know some bowlers hate it. Some think it's great. Some don't like it. I, I, I think he's fine with it, not least because, uh, was it the start of last season, uh, or maybe it'd been the previous season, that Michael Burgess came up with a brilliant stumping off his bowling. The ball down the leg side, it was a magnificent piece of glove work from Burgess. I love a leg side. A leg side wide stumping is the best yeah. stumping. <laughs> he's in again and this is off the pads and uh, behind square in fact fine and for four he's beaten Rushworth on the inside on this short boundary in front of uh, what used to be the old sort of members section and scoreboard but now it's uh, part of the, the pavilion but Rushworth again I think a little bit wary about going full pelt in that area of the ground which again has got the uh, fresh draining drainage uh, bits in but you saw the difference there between how the ball raced all the yeah. way to the boundary as opposed to that area that well with Roderick batting it's basically deep cover um, which is where the ball just stops as though it's suddenly run into to soft sand and Dolby approaches again short of a length and that's oh. an under edge past <laughs> Burgess and through for four his hands on heads he didn't know too much about that it's just gone past the top of leg stump and Roderick flying along on 18, but the first real false shot from him. 22 without loss, Worcestershire. Yeah, I don't think it missed by an awful lot. Hence, you saw the reactions from the Warwickshire players. It, it was, uh, I guess at least, gives them something because at the moment the, the score line's rattling along. 22 for none already. Of just 15 deliveries. Oof. He says county cricket slow, eh? Hey? This is where all the action is. They were just eager to get going, that's what it was. Roderick <laughs> forward in defence this time. Pushes it back out into the offside. Danny Briggs comes across from cover to do the fielding. Better length from Alan Dolby. He doesn't usually get a bit of tap on the opening morning of a game. He, uh, he will be grumpy about that. Whatever else he's uh, <laughs> feeling about the wicketkeeper standing up, he'll be very grumpy that he's gone for four boundaries early on. Yeah, that's, 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 not, that's not the start of the season you want, but... He knows, like you said, the conditions, the, the different factors coming into it early in the season. And that short boundary is a gift as, as yeah, Ollie lost, pulls yeah. up, actually. Lost his run-up in the, in the wind there, I think. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's three boundaries and two threes that he's conceded so far. It's been one of those mornings. Well, the threes probably should have been fours. If yeah. it wasn't for that that little slow patch in the outfield. Are you going to tell him that or shall I? I do. <laughs> uh, I'll, wait, I'll wait until he's taken a couple of wickets. Yeah, OK. <laughs> but Roderick, off to a bright start, awaits again. And this is, again, just back of a length. And it's a no ball to add to uh, Hannon Dolby's early frustrations. Oh, that's not going to cheer him up any at all. Two more to the score. 24 without loss. He... Uh, Slices his left boot through the crease again just to make a mark. Has a good scratch at it. Walks back to the other end. Of course, he sets high standards. He again was uh, beyond 50 wickets in the championship last season, second year in a row. And it's such promise. It's so hard, isn't it, when you come up at the start of the season just trying to work out where you sit amongst all the other teams. Good early tester. Again, full, drawing the batsman forward. Roderick prods it out into the offside. And there's no run. 24 without loss. Most of them will say probably somewhere behind Surrey. 
Yes, they are. I found it, find it quite odd. The ECB put out a, a survey of the county captains mm. where they ask them all who's going to win and who's going to take the most wickets and, and score the most runs. And I, I find that quite intriguing because a lot of them are obviously not voting for themselves because most no. of them said sorry. But it's... Oh, uh, He's Hannah lost, lost his run-up again, Hannah again. Dolby. Yeah. It, uh, you can see from the bare and ragged staff on the flagpole at the far end that it is really gusty out there at the moment. It certainly is. Very stiff, stiff breeze. But, I, yeah, I find that interesting just because I haven't really seen that, for example, in Australia where I've watched mm. a lot of sport, where, where you survey the players on what's going to happen that season. In comes... Hannah Dolby, back of a length, stands up high on his toes, Roderick, and pats it back down the wicket to Hannah Dolby and his follow through. The end of the third over, Worcestershire 24 without loss, off to a fly, Roderick with 18 and Libby with four. Thing is, if you did it in Australia, <laughs> then every, would say themselves. everybody would have to back themselves, <laughs> otherwise it'd be seen as a sign of weakness. Exactly. That's that's why I find it incredibly strange. I had, with, with spring coming, I had the, the perfect example of the difference between Australian and English sports fans. Uh, went to the Botanic Gardens, as Chris Rush Rushworth it is, who's going to continue from this member's end. It's uh, Libby on strike. Just uh, Roderick signalling for, I don't know whether a jumper or maybe a lighter one. Knit. Here comes Rushworth. He's in over the wicket. That's just clipped into the leg side. Thought about a run. Thought much, much better of it. As a fielder came herring in from mid on. Uh, yeah, so I went to the Botanic Gardens, beautiful here in Birmingham this time of year, and I commented on how beautiful the magnolias were, mm. massive magnolia trees. And I said to my English friend, they don't grow that big in Australia. And he said, oh, well, he says one thing we do better than you. Okay. That's I, hey, listen. So English. For a Brummie, that was quite positive and upbeat. <laughs> Rushworth into Libby, who just has a little flash of that. Maybe a little bit of a way movement beats the outside edge of the bat. No run. So Rushworth is proving to be a little bit more of a problem. He's only given up four runs so far in his eight deliveries. Yes, that's that's a you it's, know. See, see, normally the correct Brummie reaction. So I'm wondering whether this is this is an incomer. Um, it is because, an incomer. No, it's because the normal Brummie reaction to you saying what a magnificent magnolia tree would be. No, it's not as good as it was last year. Oh. <laughs> Rushworth is in over the wicket again. Beats the outside edge of the bat as Libby presses forward. So he's bowled very well so far. Uh, Rushworth, they just need Hannah Dolby to just make a few adjustments at the other end. Yeah, Libby, I think, probably played properly inside the line of that one. The one before, he certainly had a nibble at. Just a, a touch of nip now off the surface for Rushworth in this over. He's putting it in that area that he loves to, that he uh, can probe away at. He's in once more. It's full and there's a big shout. They all go up this time. The ball hits the pads, but it's very hard to tell from this angle, perhaps going down, angling across. You're watching yeah. the feed. I'm watching the live. The, the, the one person who had absolutely no interest in it was Chris Rushworth. <laughs> because he could, he could see that was going down leg and he, he did get a bit of movement in the air that time. An in-swinger, but it did just too much. As we see, there's, there's shadows and light just scudding across as the clouds move across the sky and Rushworth is in to Libby. This time it's a full delivery, clip to mid on. And they won't get a rum. So that just puts the brakes on when Rushworth is here. Still only conceded the four runs. So it's just a little bit of inconsistency from, from both the ends. But... If he can get out of this over quite well, then there's at least some balance, some restraint coming from the member's end. As he turns at the top of his mark. Bustling run up from broad shouldered man. He's in. It's a shorter delivery that's just played into the offside by Roderick. And that's the end of the fourth over. Yep. 24 for none. So still a healthy run rate. But a lot of those runs have come from Hannon Dolby, who is none for 20 off his two overs so far.
First maiden of the Division 1 season with uh, no play as yet at Durham, Kent, Lancashire or Nottinghamshire. In Division 2, no play at Derby or at Sussex or at Yorkshire. But uh, Middlesex and Glamorgan are underway in uh, Glamorgan. Ten without loss after four overs at Lords, having been put into bat. I note the former Warwickshire bowler Henry Brooks is making his Middlesex debut and Craig Miles on loan at Glamorgan is making his debut for them. As Hannah Dolby is in and turned into the leg side by Libby, he hasn't quite got his direction right. There's a sprawling stop by Michael Booth on debut who nudges it up to Will Rhodes, the former skipper now as he is at mid-on and they come through for a single 25 without loss. Yeah, uh, it's... Just looking at the sun coming out, and no play anywhere else. As, as an adopted Brummy, I, mm. I feel like I, I've got a weird sense of pride. That <laughs> look, centre of centre of the cricketing universe in England, at least. Yeah, it's going to rain in the next five oh, minutes. Now you've said stop that. Stop it! Stop it! Dear, oh dear. <laughs> Hannah Dolby in back of a length, guided into the offside, but he's picked out uh, Briggs. It slips through his hands like a bar of soap at cover, but doesn't go very far behind him. So there's no run. I, the, the weather could change quite a bit today as uh, as it goes on because the clouds are absolutely hurtling through the sky at the moment. And the weather is coming over our left shoulders uh, up from Worcester. And uh, <laughs> Just as you say that, look, the sun comes out, the clouds disappear, the shadow of the... Yeah, but the you can see what's coming next. Is there. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Dolby, the sun shining off the top of his balding pate, <laughs> is driven off the back foot by Libby. Up towards Alex Davis at mid-off, no run, remains 25 without loss. I like to think I, I, I bring the positivity to, to yeah. this. Yeah, you, you don't have to tell us you're an Aussie. We can hear you're an Aussie. <laughs> well, it's yeah, just Your cup's exciting. half full all the time. It's, it's at least three quarters. It's, it's definitely different, though. It's such a different feeling to this to how I feel at the start of Sheffield Shield season. It's more like a club thing over here. And Dolby approaches, Ooh. and that one goes past the top of the bat of Libby, sort of the shoulder of the bat. Got a little bit more bounce, and that was a definite nibble from Libby. Well, that and the, the under edge that... that Unfortunately for Hannah Dolby, went for four. The, the, the first couple of balls yeah. that you've seen him really threaten those two. And uh, he'll be hoping for a little bit more of that. Oh. Yeah, it'll be interesting. He'll have a, a decision to make as to what he wants to do in terms of his future direction. I know one of his frustrations has been a lack of opportunity to play T20 cricket because he actually has a game that is quite well suited to that format of the game. He's a good improviser. He's a good finisher. Down the order. And he will want to be involved more in that. Well, Chris Rushworth, he's got a, a short mid-wicket there in prime catching position. Just to put a bit more pressure, keep her up to the stumps and... That one just nipped up at him a little bit. He, he jerked back, did Roderick, as the ball went through to the keeper, as, who, as I mentioned, but just is now keeping up to the stumps to Rushworth as well. So they're really trying to keep the pressure on while this ball is swinging early. It's quite unusual to see Burgess stand up for Rushworth. I didn't see a lot of that last season. Rushworth hasn't got express pace or anything, but of course he gets a lot of little nicks. He's in again at Rushworth, and this time it's a definite leave by Roderick. Bat straight up in the air and lets that one go. But it's certainly making him think, having Burgess up there as well. He just rolled his fingers over that one a little bit, Rushworth. Slightly open stance, isn't it, that Roderick's got? Closes it a little bit more as the bowler releases the ball. But he's got that left foot closer to the square leg umpire than the right as the uh, bowler approaches. And he does approach now, Rushworth, staying over the wicket. And this one's clipped straight to that fielder at short mid-wicket I spoke about. So no run there. They're doing everything they can, aren't they, to just have basically fielders in their face or right in their yeah. ear. It's interesting how creative they've got very soon, which would suggest they feel the surface is pretty flat. Might also be an indication of the fact that 
Alex Davis, who's leading the side in the championship for the first time, is is one of these people that that wants to make changes, wants to keep in the game, wants to keep batsmen guessing. So Roderick still on strike as Rushworth is in and he punches that off the back foot. Straight past extra cover all the way for four. That's the short boundary. And that's a little bit of a release and a first boundary conceded by Rushworth. That's a good looking shot, that from Gareth Roderick. Mm. Lined it up nicely, beautifully timed. No real need for Alex Davis to chase. Through to the boundary. 29 without loss. The uh, breeze is a little bit less vigorous than it was 10 minutes ago. It sort of changes. You notice they've all got, as I've mentioned, the legs flapping. I meant the trouser legs flapping, not their actual legs. Well, no, no, we got, yeah. we but their got. hands are in their pockets often. It's Rushworth is in, and at this time a long stride forward and a press along the ground into the covers by Roderick, but no run. They have those little warming pouches in their pockets, don't they, this time Hand of year? I tell you what, I, I could really have done with that. Uh, in recent times that the heating in my flat is not very good and I've been rugged up and then my little portable radiator stopped mm. working oh so I've been rugged up in at night while watching TV in a, with a blanket gloves and a hat a woolly hat <laughs> and it's been a bit grim shall I say Rushworth he's in and he's angled that one straight in to Roderick a little bit of noise but nothing too serious about that one and uh, means that it was probably a bit high and probably going down leg as well it means the end of the six over uh, we have now seen Worcestershire move on to 29 for none so the run rate coming down a bit but it's still quite healthy the sun <laughs> comes out once more feel very excited every time <laughs> it, it lights yeah. up Lights up the ground. Two big paws of sand or whatever else that they use these days uh, brought forward by Ollie Hannon Dolby and then the uh, umpire will put his finger through the uh, front patch of sand so that you can see where the front foot line should be. So uh, clearly a bit of moisture coming up in the surface in the bowling crease for Ollie Hannon Dolby. Opening day of the Caddy Championship season via the... BBC Cricket homepage, you can follow the live text feed there throughout, uh, covering all of the games, all of the stories. As Hannah Dolby is in, driven past him, but uh, with no real power. And across from mid on Will Rhodes comes to do the fielding. Melinda Farrell alongside Richard Wilford at Edgebaston. Um, we haven't got a reporter from uh, BBC Hereford and Worcester today. Uh, there's a bit of a, a late withdrawal, and we uh, wish the reporter well. Um, but uh, we will... At half past, we'll give uh, Mel a break. Phil Britt will be here from Warwickshire County Cricket Club, who, amongst other things, curates the museum, which uh, has got a resplendent new frontage. I've never been to the museum here. Oh, you must do. Oh. It, yeah, in terms of the new frontage, it's like spot the difference from last year. But here's uh, Hannon Dolby, short, forced off the back foot for uh, a couple of runs by, <laughs> by Libby. And the ball again holds up spectacularly three quarters of the way. It's like when you see it in drag racing and the car racing along and then the parachute just flies out the back mm. and then the car suddenly just comes to a stop. Exactly, that's, it's, yeah. That's exactly what's happening every time out there. I, I don't know. If you, those of you who are watching the live stream today, there, there may just be a little parachute coming out of the ball that's, <laughs> that's causing that effect. <laughs> it, it, it is very damp and very slow for the last 10, 15 yards before the boundary on the Hollies side of the ground. As Hannon Dolby, for the third time, loses his run-up, and he's getting quite annoyed now. Mm, just had another. Okay. And it's this, I mentioned the, the fact that the, the nature of this breeze, it, sometimes it's really gusty, sometimes it's less so. If it changes mid-run-up, and he's a tall man, let's face it, six foot seven, that can be quite inconvenient. Uh, definitely. More than a little inconvenient. It's, and it is again, just the trouser legs out there going. He's lost it again. Gape. He's lost it, yep, gone. That's really unusual. Four times now. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bit like a tall sided vehicle on the M6. <laughs> well, he's also a slender man, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Ollie Hannon Dolby. So, with, you know, he's like a tall reed yeah. swaying in the. If he was in the inside place. lane right now, you'd go all the way to the outside <laughs> lane and leave one in between you if you're overtaking. Uh, yes, especially the way he's gone for runs. 31 without loss. He's into bowl now, and this time he does get through it. And uh, Libby defends into the offside. I, I wonder whether Alex Davis will contemplate making this his spell. 
the four overs. Mm. And maybe bring him back on when Chris Rushworth has finished from the pavilion end. He's got Ed Barnard and the debutant Michael Booth up his sleeve. Will Rhodes, the fifth available seamer. And then a whole host of spinners in the side. Danny Briggs and Jacob Bethel, the two main ones. Bethel, who should be fine for bowling this year after back problems last year, but terrific young cricketer. So, Alan Dolby approaches once more. It's a good ball angled in towards the off stump of Libby, who guides it out into the offside. He's got six. He's scoring at a rather normal opening bat's pace <laughs> on the opening day of the season. Yeah, Roderick, I mean, it's 23 off 21. He's, mm. uh, he's been watching a lot of IPL, perhaps, in recent times, because we've certainly seen some crazy, crazy batting it, over there, as it, far as high scores go. It, he'd be discombobulated by the overrate if he'd been watching the IPL. He's supposed <laughs> to take six minutes over every six balls, eh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Drives me And have a time spare. out every second over. Strategic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if the strategy is to put adverts on. Here's Alan Dolby in, turned off his hips, and oh. that will be for four. That will be for four. It's neatly worked. But it's also in exactly the right spot. We've mentioned that short boundary, and that one was just, just easy pickings off the yep. hip. He's, he's out of sorts, Alan Dolby, but Libby played a beautiful shot there behind square for four. No, I, I do. I do enjoy these afternoons listening to to the IPL when it's on uh, Sports Extra and maybe occasionally, occasionally catching the pictures if I happen to be at home. And and but I just wish they could end the games forty five minutes more quickly. <laughs> yes. Well, there's there's things coming in in the CPL. They they brought in the the almost the red card system. Oh, yeah. Last year. And Dolby approaches, and uh, that one is left alone. Just tucks his bat underneath it and uh, passed around hip height. End of the over. I wonder if that's the end of the spell for Hannon Dolby. Four overs have cost him 27. Worcestershire with an excellent start in this opening half hour, 35 without loss. Yeah, so in the CPL, not only did they have fielding restriction penalties if you were over um, the, the allotted time, but then you, they, they were also doing red cards. So basically, you, you would you lose a player, mm. didn't you? So that was that was quite interesting. So that was that a poor overrate or a bad tackle. <laughs> well, it was the first time that I'm all for that. I think there's loads of ways you can speed up the game yeah. if you have the will to do it. And then it comes down to what you said about perhaps advertising and how much say some broadcasters might have somewhere around anywhere yeah. around the world. But there's definitely ways you could speed up. It's, uh, just, it's just the pretense again. that amuses me. <laughs> it sticks in it sticks in the core of a context. A strategic timeout. <laughs> Here comes Chris Rushworth to Roderick, and he's just clipped that one away on the leg side. A little bit of a fumble in the field, but no damage done. They don't get a run. Head coach comes out to the batting pair. We were going quite nicely, but, you know, they've got to fill these two and a half minutes. It'd be like, golf tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, yeah, OK, we'll have a round tomorrow. Well, that's a strategic <laughs> yeah. a strategic way yeah. to plan yeah. your time Re out. Rest day strategy, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Midday tea time? Yeah, that'd be mm. grand. <laughs> well, well, that's all on, I can tell you. I'm just very excited that the county championship season has started. As Rushworth is in, oh, and has a stride forward and a strong leave, and put a few hands on head, suggesting that might not have been too far off the money. Do you know how else I'm excited to see? So I, I am a bit of an adopted Brummie. Yeah. I've been living here for several years. Whenever I've come to Edgebaston on a county championship day, I've noticed that there is a gentleman who sits up the back of the holly stand. Oh, yes. In between 23 and 25, the yes. numbers on the stands, in the same seat, every day he is there. In comes Rushworth, and this one is just turned behind square leg by Roderick. They will come back for a second quite comfortably so adding another two to the score 37 for none so he's always and and even when it's raining and it'll be raining for three hours if there's still a chance of yeah. play he will be sitting in that same spot if, if there's a day when you think it's a surefire rain off he will wait until the umpires finally yes ask the groundsman to go and get cover it up for the night i went and Finish spoke to him once did you i did he, I, I, I'm, I'm told he's you know, not necessarily all that chatty, is he? Well, I think he was quite terrified at this loud Australian woman. Who yeah. <laughs> came bounding up and wanted to chat to him. In comes Rushworth, and that one's lifted quite nicely for Rushworth, not so much we for We can Rodrick. all empathise with that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hear me before you see me. That's I, what they all tell I, me. I knew you were coming. When they had the door to the corridor open. <laughs> 
just excited by life. In no, but it, look, it, it, but <laughs> if you can't get excited about the first day of the season That's and the right. shock that we started on time. Yes. Well done, the grand staff, by the way. Absolutely. As Rushworth, he's in and again, he just has Roderick on the back foot, just dribbles out to mid-off. Getting no run. This has been really quite impressive from Rushworth. He's only given away the one boundary, which is difficult to defend when you've got a, a short boundary like that. You're yeah. going to leak a few, aren't you? It's, it's almost impossible. I was going to say at the end of the over, I was going to bring Phil Britt in for you, but he's just disappeared from the room. So oh. maybe it's his excitement at his first uh, time of the uh, season. Maybe I've scared him off as well. <laughs> Does happen. <laughs> OK, Roderick on strike as Livy is in and the big press forward, but just dribbles off to the offside. No run. End of Rushworth's over. It's 37 for none with Roderick on 24. Five racing along of 27, although it's just slowed down a little bit after that over. Libby is 10 from 22. So we're going to see Michael Booth come on for his first over in county championship cricket. South African, overseas player for now. He's on a long-term contract during which he'll qualify as an English player. Much shorter than Hannon Dolby. He's, he's quite a short player. He's a skiddy seam bowler. A lot of energy comes in the final couple of strides before he gets the wicket. From Worcestershire's point of view, and uh, very much want to concentrate on their perspective as well, as uh, unfortunately we haven't got uh, BBC here from the Worcester man with us, or colleague with us at the moment, um, they will be delighted, given the disruption that they've had and the seven floods at New Road over the course of the winter, to have made this start, having been put into bat, they'll be thrilled with this as Booth comes in well outside off stump, bit of a loosener, left alone by Libby, raises the bat height, you know, they've got first couple of championship matches at home are going to be played at Kidderminster. It's uh, the ground there, which is a terrific ground. But um, obviously a little bit limited in terms of what they can offer spectators. Oh, what about commentators? Because I'm going to be there for one you're, of those. You're going to be, well, look, I've it, never been to uh, Kidderminster. If you have a love of a trestle table, then, <laughs> then the opportunity is they're going to be there for you. Oh, I love a trestle table. Yeah. <laughs> Libby awaits Booth once more. Oh, and he draws an edge, and it's going to go down through third for four. In between second slip and a man at fourth slip, it was very low down. But he's got a bit of outswing there and taken the edge of Libby's bat. It's a lovely ball from Booth. Libby to 14, Worcestershire to 41 with that loss, but that is oh. the most authentic scare for the visitors so far. Well, it was a beautiful ball, nice bit of a way swing, and he got the line right to start it off with as well. And uh, that's a certain sudden impact that we're seeing with Booth in there. He'll want to do something like that again. In between Mosley and Bethel, this is a fuller ball, Yorker length and dug out. Interesting start, this from Booth. It's a positive start. And like I said, making his mark early, that Yorker was absolutely bang on the money. Tell you what, uh, Mr. Britt is now back in the box. So should we, should we seamlessly move you out and then you come and replace me just after 12, after I've done my uh, three minute pass report. Melinda Farrell with us for the first three days of this game here on uh, BBC Cricket homepage and Sports Extra with us this morning as Booth comes in the bowl once more to Libby and he's edging and it's just short of Dan Mosley. Don't think he got his hands underneath the ball. It's another fine delivery from Booth. And it, oh, did it carry? It's very close to doing so. You can see Mosley berating himself. It is really tight. Two authentic edges in this over drawn by Booth in his first over in championship cricket 41 without loss Worcestershire an excellent start for them but uh, they've been tested more in this over than any other over as this one is shorter and Libby guides it down into the deck Booth comes across to field off his own bowling and there's no run <coughs> So, very good morning to uh, Phil Britt from Warwickshire County Cricket Club. Morning, Richard. Morning, uh, everybody. Happy new season. And to you. It's uh, I, astonishing that they were playing. I was in the museum and I spoke to somebody about 10 to 11. I said, they announced what time they're going to start later on this morning. He said, they're starting at 11 o'clock. And it was like, 
throw everybody out. Who's in again? This is onto the pads, and he's actually got uh, Will Rhodes out on the square leg boundary. This is a bit of protection for that. So a single for Libby. Good first over that from Michael Booth, but uh, an excellent start from Worcestershire. Roderick's 25, Libby's 15, <coughs> and Worcestershire 42 without loss. That the breeze has changed direction. I mean, it has been really stiff from left to right. Looking at the flagpole, the far side, and now it's fluttering the other way, and then towards the city centre. Um, yeah, it has to some extent negated what otherwise might have been seen friendly conditions. Well, I walked around the outside of the pitch um, and it's really blowing quite hard and it, I wasn't sure which way it was coming from and those flags actually confirm that. It, one minute it's blowing across right to left and then it's coming towards us. Here's Rushworth from the pavilion end. He's in and bowls and this is clipped away through the third slip area. And Libby down to the boundary and Worcestershire continue this really bright start. 46 without loss. And he's one hand off the bat by the time he plays that. And Libby's having a bit of a moment here. A little bit more uncertain than he was, but uh, the sign that Worcestershire have won the first part of the battle is the fact that Warwickshire are down to two slips yep. 40 minutes in. 19 Libby moves to. Roderick's on 25. And Libby's 19 have come off 29 balls. So it's... Certainly they've uh, got on right from the word go. What was it, a 10 off the first over from yeah. Hammond Dolby? And uh, it's been going that way, not quite at that pace, but they've been scoring freely since. That third slip now comes in, having almost as if they heard you, Richard. That's Rushworth Ian Bowles. And this is dropped, I think, at second slip. Uh, judging by the reaction... From the fielders, let me look. Yes, Dan yeah, Mosley, that has just carried low to his left. It's really the two chances and half chances, the last two overs, both to Dan Mosley, have both been really low down. But Chris Rushworth looks uh, a little bit frustrated by that as he trudges back to his mark. It was at shin height going through uh, to his to his left. He had to sort of bend down. At, uh, it was in and out. Here's Rushworth again, Ian Bowles. This is one to run away to backward point. And again, there's no run. No. No, normally, second slip would be the home throughout the four days to Sam Hain. Uh, but in his absence for personal reasons, Dan Mosley finds himself there. And you can just see Rob Yates and Jacob Bethel either side of him, just uh, buoying him up a little bit. Yates, who took just shy of 30 catches in the championship last season, at first slip. Yeah, he was one of the top fielders in the country, wasn't he? There's Rushworth. The sun comes out as Rushworth comes in. Bowls. This one, again, is run away into the offside to extra cover. And there's no run. All given the polish and, uh, and tossed back. As Rushworth comes back, he'll be playing, if provided he's fit, against his old county next week when Warwick should take on Durham in the second match next Friday. First wicket of the season in the Championship has come in Division 2 at Lords. Regla Morgan a 31 for 1. Ethan Bamba, fine young bowler, uh, has uh, taken the wicket of uh, Zain al Hassan for 5. Regla Morgan 31 for 1 in the 10th over. The only other match with any cricket so far today. Rush was in. Bowls turned to Rhodes, who comes racing in from mid on. Does the fielding. So Libby thinks about a single, but is quickly put off by the speed that. Uh, Rhodes reacted. They Mel will. was talking about that guy at the back of the stand. He's got, there's two more with him this time. There's three men at the back of the stand, right in the back row. The one appears to be wearing high vis, though. Yeah. Which is, uh, well, I think so. We pick him out, probably. Mm, maybe so. But, uh, a long way from the cricket today, that is. As Rushworth comes in again. That's pulled and clipped away nicely between mid on. And mid-wicket, and they will come back for a couple of runs as Rhodes retrieves, looks up towards the sunshine, and turns it to Michael Burgess, end of an over, and Worcestershire have moved on to 48 without loss after the 10 overs. There will be no play today at Derby. Oh Derbyshire dear. and Gloucestershire is done for the day, but <sighs> teams have been announced at Trent Bridge, so Nottinghamshire and Essex will be getting underway fairly shortly. Nottinghamshire being led in the championship by Hasib Hamid uh, this year. Jack Haynes, the former Worcestershire player, will make his championship debut for his new county. So too Dylan Pennington. 
Essex with Dean Elgar opening the batting following the retirement of Sir Alistair Cook. And Jordan Cox, having moved across from Kent, is also named in their team. But uh, Nottinghamshire and Essex, the teams are named and uh, the toss has taken place. Nottinghamshire choosing to field as Michael Booth begins a new over, driven by Libby with rather more purpose this time. Beats a diving Briggs, an extra cover. Alex Davis gives chase. They've come back for two. There'll be one on the throw as well because that's one of the longer parts of the ground. In fact, he delays the throw for a while. And that is the 50 partnership for the opening wicket for Worcestershire. It's been uh, pretty resourceful so far. Roderick has been the main attacker. Libby has enjoyed certainly one and a half lives in the last couple of overs. But on the return to First Division cricket, this is just the foundation that they wanted, particularly having been put into bat this morning. Absolutely. The uh, perfect start for them. Booth in again. It'll be cut into the offside by Libby. And that will go all the way for four. That's the first time that they've managed to reach the boundary. You've got to hit it pretty well over towards that boundary if you're going to get uh, full value for it. Got that beautifully out the bat, at the middle of the bat. Actually, that's, that's Roderick. Yeah. It's it's Roderick. Uh, that, it was Roderick. Yeah, because the, the previous one, one was yeah. a three, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it, it was Roderick who got the three, and now yeah. Libby's on strike. Okay. Worcestershire. Uh, see, I think I see. To me, that's Roderick on strike. He's the taller of the two. Anyway. What this one facing now? Definitely, yeah. that's Libby. Okay. Quite, quite similar of build. This is pushed out into the offside. One has got a number showing, so I'll. Double check with that. There'll be two more. Booth being milked in this second over. Not necessarily sticking to one line or one length right now. Yeah, it's number nine at the far end. Who's yeah. Roderick? There we go. He's turned his back to show the number now. That was much yeah. more convenient of him. These Warwickshires have got their sweaters, numbers on the back of their sweaters. It's a continual criticism for us when we're commentating Booth in defended a full length delivery by Libby back down the track and there's no run it's difficult because if you've got the lovely traditional mm -hmm. cable knit then you can't really put numbers on it very successfully well I not, I've, I've always thought you could you could put if you can put badges on the front you can put a number on the back My my granny, uh, my auntie could knit them when I was a kid. She could knit anything into my sweaters. Could she? Yeah. Okay. Names and numbers, marvellous. Uh, forward in defence again is Libby. Rabbits <laughs> also. The I used that on my sweaters. One ball left in the over. Fifty-seven without loss. I mean, it'd be quite challenging to to put to, to, to knit it with the words Booth and the number twenty-seven <laughs> on the back. And the advertiser's name. Plus the advertiser's <laughs> name. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. So I, I have some sympathy for those who, who I don't uh, those counties that prefer the more traditional cable knit. Do you know somehow I don't think they're hand knit though these days. I think they might just be machine knit. It might be wrong. Booth approaches once more, clipped off his pads, past the square leg umpire, out to the boundary rider Will Rhodes for another single, and it's 28 apiece for the two batsmen now. Roderick and Libby, Libby's acceleration initially coming virtue of a couple of nicks, but now looking increasingly. Assured, the former Nottingham Shaman, 58 without loss on the uh, BBC Cricket homepage. You get uh, commentary of every single game, and don't forget the the text service as well, which gives you updates throughout. And if you're the sort of person who likes to go where the drama is happening, that often gives you a bit of a nudge in the right direction as well. I would think a lot of people this morning have thought, looked at the weather thought I'll just watch this on the live feed mm. and wait because it's they're not going to be playing but I'll uh, watch the super sopper on the live feed yeah. <laughs> but if you uh, were thinking of coming down then do because the weather at the moment is uh, beautiful as Rushworth in again and uh, this one is played solidly back down to the Warwickshire captain Alex Davis who's that down at mid off there's no run 58 without loss. It's been a terrific start from Worcestershire in this first hour, and, uh, and uh, one which will have the new Warwickshire captain just uh, thinking a little. This is not quite panned out the way that he hoped after he won the toss. Whereas Brett D'Oliveira will be sitting there thinking, "This is all right. This is all right." Oh, and the, the wind, oh, the wind I think, again. may have unsettled the batsman. Whether it's um, yeah. caused the the white 
sheet behind Chris Rushworth to uh, swirl a bit because we're so far over to the left of the pavilion with the, the track that they're using for this game that they they won't have the benefit of the main bit of uh, sight screen. Well, not much benefit from it anyway, I don't think. Well, th they had a match uh, last week against Leicestershire behind closed doors, which the rain ruined, but uh, they were right, they were even further across towards the left-hand side. This one is up on his toes and is clipped beautifully away between extra cover and cover point down to the hover cover for four more. And Worcestershire continue to chase this score along. 62 without loss. It's uh, that's Libby on to 32. Roderick's on 28. And Rushworth is, uh, by his standards, is proving... Also a little bit expensive, 20 coming from him so far as he turns and looking for that elusive first wicket of the season in bowls. And this one is left outside the off stump by Libby and through to Michael Burgess. A beautiful piece of timing, that previous shot. No big flourish of the bat, just guides it into the space. Here's the shorter boundary, but it got plenty on it. I watched uh, Michael Booth for the first time, although it was behind closed doors. I was working on last week, and uh, I popped down and had a look, and he was bowling. And uh, First time I've seen him play. Here's Rushworth in and bowls, and this one is, again, chopped away into the offside. Libby sort of leaning back and giving yourself a little bit of room and pushes it away for a single out into the very slow and soft outfield in front of the hopper cover down towards the, the groundsman's hut or groundsman's it's not a hut really it's a, it's where they keep all their equipment down there and that of course will all have to go very so shortly when the, the new development starts all that side of the ground will be where the new hotel and stands will be let's rush with in and this is driven beautifully through the gap between extra cover and mid off and down to the fence. A lovely flowing shot from Roderick for, for four. He goes to 32 and Worcestershire move on to 67 without loss. And the, this is uh, exciting, quick scoring cricket. We are only in the 12th over here. And Worcestershire racing along. Almost five and a half and over. So. Just wondering, are these are the, is it the first two games. Is that one of the patches where we is Cookaburra, it a Cookaburra ball as Cookaburra well? Cookaburra, so yeah. uh, m maybe a little bit of, uh, of what's happened this morning can be framed as as being the Cookaburra ball, which is meant to be harder for the seamers. This next one with Burgess standing up, he takes that ball left behind. Burgess takes it well, aims to take the bales off, but hadn't moved, and it's end of another over. So. 67 without loss. We've had 12 overs this morning. Remember, Warwickshire won the toss this morning and decided to bowl. Uh, but so far, as we approach the end of the another 10 minutes or so to the end of the first hour of the new season, it's been very much Worcestershire's morning. So, yeah, it's conceivable that with one of the earliest starts ever to a county championship season and a team winning the toss in damp conditions that we may see spin before lunch. That could happen, couldn't it? That, yep, absolutely. Right? And they say that's partly what they want the Kookaburra ball to achieve. I don't know. Here's uh, Booth starting a new over, looking to angle it in towards the off stump of uh, Libby, who defends it out into the offside. And there's no run. 67 without loss. Booth, say short in stature. Very whippy right shoulder. Does generate good pace. Skids off the surface. Hues of green in the centre of the surface, but it looks a pretty flat wicket. Carry's been decent. Well, Dan Mosley might dispute that. As uh, the ball is turned towards square leg here by Libby. And there'll be no run as it's picked up there by Will Rhodes. So Yates and Bethel are the two slips in position there. It's Mosley, <laughs> Mosley being sentenced to the outfield. <laughs> Ed Barnard was just running around in a circle. So whether that is... Uh, a putative warm-up for him for his first spell of the season up against his former county newly appointed vice-captain of Warwickshire 
Spoon scampers in again, pushed out towards Barnard, who comes forward from point to field. And there's no run. Yeah, I thought that was uh, that was a good move, having Ed Barnard as vice captain. He's a lot, very experienced cricketer. He's what, 28 now, I think. So it's, a, you know, it's a significant change. Two relatively recent newcomers to the home dressing room are now in the yeah. two senior positions. Still got Will Rhodes there as uh, yep. part of the Brains Trust. group of youngsters are uh, taking their seats to watch a bit of cricket at the moment, which is good to see. As Booth is well outside off stump here and a thick outside edge will go down to third for four. And Libby stretches up to 37 not out after a bit of a wobble 15 minutes ago he started to look increasingly settled so although it was a thick outside edge it was so wide and so full any bat on that was going for four 71 without loss <coughs> absolutely along the floor into the gap and uh, Bethel just had to tuck in behind and go and fetch it back from the ropes So the chances which have come Warwickshire's way, they've not taken this morning, and uh, they might regret that. Boo, this one much more direct at the stumps, looking to try and hit the top of off. A little inside-out defensive shot from Libby. To get it out into the offside. The uh, video advertising hoarding is, uh, which you tend to associate with the big games here is functioning at the uh, Birmingham end of the ground, imploring people to download the uh, Bears app. Booth back of a length and thought tennis forehand style. It's been clubbed back out towards mid-off by Roderick, no, by Libby rather. That was uh, an unconventional shot. Field and his follow-through. We're going to see a change of ends now for Ollie Hannon Dolby, who uh, We'll be hoping that the breeze doesn't knock him out of kilter like it did in his first spell from the Birmingham end. Yeah, he struggled, didn't he, if, if from running into the breeze. But uh, you don't very often see Hannon Dolby bowling from the pavilion end. Going to give it a go. Any port in a storm? I mean, it's not quite a storm, but it feels like it when the gust really blows. Did you know if, if Norwell um, was available for selection? He, he was available for selection. They've preferred Booth on this right. occasion. But Norwell uh, got through a pre-season. He was in the squad for mm. this he game. He was in the 15, wasn't he? Or 14, they announced. And uh, given that Craig Miles has gone off on loan for the yep. next few weeks at Glamorgan, uh, they must believe that uh, Norwell they is in a fit condition to select. We don't know necessarily... Well, I I'm not aware when Hassan Ali is going to arrive. Clearly, he's not here this week. Whether he'll be here next week, I don't know. Whether he'll be here for the game at... Southampton in two weeks' time. I think he's due back for next week. I thought the Pakistan training camp was only till the 9th or something like that. So he should be back for next week. Yeah, it's a little bit tight, doesn't it? So here's Hannon Dolby starting a new spell from the pavilion end. He's in bowls. And it's uh, Roderick fends that one back down into the offside. And there's no run. Two very interesting overseas players in this Worcestershire side. I mean, Jason Holder, outstanding cricketer. Brings so much experience to it. And uh, has done so much, I think, to reinvigorate international cricket in the West Indies. I think his spell as captain was a really, really important time for them. And then Nathan Smith, this exciting seamer from New Zealand. Player of the year in uh, the Plunkett Shield. He can bat as well, Nathan Smith, can't he? So Roderick's just clipped a single in front of square. 72 without loss. Sorry, that was my... I should be describing that one. Sorry. We've got there between us. So. But, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting to see when, when new overseas players come in. Good to see Wes Agar back in uh, championship cricket this year as well. His uh, brother Ashton had a spell yeah. with the Bears. What a brief one. Well, I was going to say, it didn't last too long, did it? Well, it hurt his ankle, didn't he? Yeah. That's Alan Dolby again. Comes in, arm playing out to the side. He bowls, and this is pushed away into the offside. A pick up and throw at stumps, and it's hit. A direct hit. But I think Roderick was home. Uh, wasn't too excited, any of the the Bears but, uh, yeah, I tell you what that was a lot no, tighter than Roderick thought it was going to be he's, yeah. he's got his bat 
down in time, but that was definitely a, a shorter single. He didn't get a wriggle on quite as quickly as he might have done. It wasn't a full dawdle, but Roderick could have afforded to perhaps stretch himself a little bit more because given how well these two have played, that would have been a, a daft way to break the partnership. They moved 73, and Roderick on to... Libby's on 38, Roderick on 33 as he faces this down the leg side, and this is going to be more runs down to the fine leg boundary for four byes. I thought he might have got just glanced the pad, but uh, missed everything. And <laughs> standing up, Michael Burgess couldn't get across to get to that one. So four more go to the total 77 without loss. We're only in the 14th over. I think Michael Burgess might be quite unfortunate to have uh, buys assessed against him. Or maybe it's moved a bit. It looked from the, uh, the first look on this stream that it might have clipped a pad on the way through. But, but perhaps from the, uh, the view behind, the umpire's got that right. I shouldn't have doubted him, of course. He would really not have had any view at all on that one. He's having Dolby Ian forward comes and pushes it back down the wicket, fielded by Rushworth at the mid-on. So... Roderick continues. He's on 33, 38 to Libby, and 77 without loss. Yeah, so, so little of the cricket as yet in the championship this morning. Um, how much the Kookaburra ball is going to affect things? So it's it, it's in for four championship matches, four rounds of championship cricket this year. A pair now and a pair later in the season. That's the plan. And Dolby in bowls again, defended everything behind it. In the another over, he didn't seem to have too much trouble this time bowling from the pavilion end. He was being stopped in mid mid uh, delivery stride at times on, the, on his first spell. Really struggled to get any sort of rhythm, but a little better this time. So he's five overs, not for 29. Rush with six overs, cost him 25. And Booth, who's bowled three overs, he has gone for 19 runs. So. All three Warwickshire seamers will look at it and think, that's, uh, I've had better figures than these in the past. Yeah, I, I mean, Booth a bit unlucky. He's had uh, sort of one and a half chances off his bowling that didn't quite go to hand. Uh, Nottinghamshire Essex are getting underway now, which is good to see. As uh, Booth is in, it's a short ball, it's pulled, it's a short boundary, but he hasn't got enough on it, and it's a diving catch falling forward. And Michael Booth has the first wicket of his first-class career. It's a top-edge pull from Libby out into the deep and a sprawling catch in the outfield. And the first wicket is down, 77 for one, and Libby goes for 38. Yeah, he sort of fetched that ball from outside, almost a sh short outside the off stump, and uh, couldn't control it. For a moment, I thought, with a very short boundary, he got enough on it to get it over. But uh, in the end, he was caught all oh, 10 yards, 10 yard metres in from the boundary edge. And uh, a good diving catch to get rid of him. So Warwickshire, it was Danny Briggs who got underneath it and uh, threw himself forward to take the catch. And Warwickshire, virtually on the hour, get their first strike of the season. And Michael Booth picks up, as Richard said, his first first class wicket so well done to him and uh, nice to see a number of uh, the Warwickshire players ran over to congratulate him that uh, a bit of relief as well I think there 77 for one and a first strike through so yeah. I mean Libby was always on the already on his way back to the pavilion when he when he top edged it yeah. he knew he hadn't got enough on it and that short boundary is always going to be a temptation mm. and uh, if you get it wrong I wonder as well whether the wind, which is blowing viciously across from that side, that held that ball up a little bit more in the air. Um, in the end, it was a very good catch from Danny Briggs because he had to go sprawling forward to take it. It wasn't an easy one and straight stand and it'll come to you. He had to go and fetch it. And uh, it was he took it in the end just above the, the, the turf. So it uh, wasn't easy. In uh, about 90 seconds' time, I'll be doing an update for listeners uh, to BBC Radio WM and BBC CWR. But Cashy Valley is the new batsman, and he leaves the ball alone outside off stump. And it was quite a tight line from Booth, looking to hit the top of off. Very high bat that he holds, Cashy Valley, in his bat lift. 
but he's judged that nicely enough it's uh, far enough outside off stump but a good piece of judgment when it's your first ball two slips in orthodox fashion plus Mosley you sort of fourth ish almost four and a half and quite a stride forward as well as Booth is in and Cashy Valley covers up outside off stump field and he's followed through to Booth who threatens to shovel the ball towards the stumps that's where it wouldn't have been out of his ground anyway and it remains 77 for one so the sun is uh, casting the odd shadow around a player at the moment which is good to see probably the bluest sky that we've had so far yep in this session yep and the forecast actually wasn't bad for today so it was just how much rain had fallen overnight Boo then, back of a length, guided very nicely by Cashy Valley down towards the third man boundary. And it will just be pulled up short. And they're going to settle, I think, for two. Quite surprising that they only got a couple. Here, Worcestershire 79 for one against Warwickshire, having been put into bat. The Bears have had to work very, very hard to claim a wicket in their first hour of the season. But Michael Booth on debut, the South African fast bowling all-rounder, has taken it. A short ball induced a top edge from Jake Libby and a good diving catch, diving forward by Danny Briggs, was able to claim the wicket. Cashy Valley has just got a few runs through third man as he comes in to join Gareth Roderick. Roderick on 33, Kashif on six, Worcestershire 83. Three for one. Richard Wilfin at Edgebaston. So, uh, yeah, well, during that report, a boundary to Cashy Valley down through third man. Yeah, it was a similar sort of shot to the earlier one and uh, the ball before, but this time he'd gone for it uh, a little bit more aggression and uh, the edge flew away and there uh, was no chance of cutting that one off. Booth in again and it turned up towards mid on and there will be uh, no run uh, I need to sort something out technically but uh, it's good timing because uh, Melinda is going to come in and join you Phil for the next half hour ok fine thank you Richard That's end of that over Warwickshire 83 for uh, sorry Worcestershire 83 for one uh, wicket there for Michael Booth his first wicket of his career and well relief for the new Warwickshire captain, Alex Davis, who was beginning to look at it and thinking, hmm, perhaps we should have had a bat. Good afternoon, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's just afternoon. You've, you're right absolutely. by a couple of minutes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and it is Oliver Hannon Dalby coming into Roderick. That one just has a nice bit of bounce on it. Had him on the back foot, but he just pushes it out to mid off so no run there bit of a improvement for Oliver Hannon Dalby having changed ends from the other end in that breeze that he kept losing yeah. his run up and four times he had to pull out of his run up uh, and uh, we were comparing him to one of those massive vehicles you see on a motorway oh, no. when you that you really want to avoid you don't want to overtake no. it not on a windy day oh no 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 <laughs> not in the M1 here is Hannon Dolby again and this one is just firmly defended watchfully by Roderick no run yeah, it's not till you stand next to him that you realise just how tall he is. Now, this is interesting, right, because a lot of profiles have Oliver Hannon Dolby down as six foot seven. But downstairs, uh, so in the in the concourse area, they have this sort of life-size picture of all the players yep. and you can stand next to it to measure yourself against them. And it says six foot eight yep. on that for Oliver Hannon Dolby. So which one is right all of him is running in at the moment, and that one again just defended out to mid off by Roderick. Uh, but I'll leave you to check that one. Well, I'm <laughs> going to check with him. There's something else I want to check, right? Because Jason Holder is playing today. Yeah. Now he's, I think, down as six foot seven. Put you going to well. put two together and back well, to no, back? No, <laughs> no. But but I like your way of thinking because I, my fun fact about Jason Holder is that we are the same height. What, you and Jason Holder? Yes, when sitting down. Oh. <laughs> so it's all in his legs, his height, you see, as 
Hannah Dolby is in. That one just angling in to Roderick. Again, defended no run. I was going to say, you must have been standing in a hole when I last saw well, you then. <laughs> no, because when I, I've, I've interviewed him several times and, and I, I've had to stand on <laughs> steps and boxes so that we can both be in frame. And then I didn't have a camera operator. I was self-shooting. And we were at Grace Road, and I said, look, can we try sitting down? And when we sat down, we were exactly the same height. So I want to sit down next to Oliver Hannon Dolby and see if we are the same height sitting down. As these are the things that keep me interesting. <laughs> interested, I should say. Hannon Dolby in, just short of a length, and again defended on the leg side this time by Roderick. Well, I was at the basketball last night over at Leicester. I went to watch... Uh, the Leicester Riders play uh, Bristol Flyers, and some of those guys are massive. <laughs> they're so, and the other thing is they're as thin as sticks, but their height, because you get very close to the action as you uh, walk around and see them. So the players, and I have to say, they're very good. They come out and talk to the public, and there's no sort of uh, keep well away. They really do mix. And Dolby is in over the wicket. This is a much better over for Hannon Dolby. He's found his line and his length. That one again defended on the offside by Kashif Ali. Excited to see him playing as well. What a what a wonderful mm. story Kashif Ali is. Another one of the Saka graduates, isn't he? Who's come into the game. Yeah. Wonderful program that's been set up. With, that's had quite a bit of <coughs> success too. Uh, my understanding, a few players who have who've made their way through to the senior sides now from from the Saka. Just uh, making sure cricket's accessible to everyone. That's good. It, uh, he had a good season last year. It uh, got some scores and uh, here he is on the opening day of the season. Uh, well, he was... Michael Booth is going to have... Ball. Yeah, he, he was good. He, he was opening the batting in first class for Ghani Glass in the President's Trophy in Pakistan. Right. Booth in bowls. That's edged past Ooh. Bethel at second slip. There's a gap between oh. Bethel at second slip and Mosley at fourth. Uh, and that one sort of quite nicely found the gap which had been left there by Alex Davis down to the uh, fence. And another four runners rush through the third man boundary. I'm not going to say even start on third man defence <laughs> on the opening morning of the yeah. new season. But gosh, how many runs today have gone down to third man? There are a few, and that gap is just nicely placed. And in fact, they're just they've just plugged <laughs> it. There you go. That's yeah. when you're chasing the yeah. game a bit. Barnard's at well, it's almost like a fifth slip. It's a little bit tight for a gully. In comes Booth to bowl, and this one, this time, he gets right behind it and pushes it back into the offside. Yeah, so Ka Kashi Valley, this was during the off-season. He was in Pakistan, uh, yeah, opening the bowling for Ghani Glass. Gar I like that. I don't know. Ghani Glass. No, I'm afraid I'm not familiar with them. No. Can you tell me anything about them? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> There I'm going to find I'm out. I'm glad it's not just me. Then. I'll find out a bit. See what I can find out about you Ghani Glass. You can see right through them, though. <laughs> oh, gee, pushed. delayed reaction from me. Yeah. Next Heavens one above. is pushed back by Cassie Valley and uh, Booth feels off his own bowling as he follows through. Gee, you've been impressed with Booth, though. What what a yeah. change he made. They were, they were just flying along so easily. And in his first over, he finally had them... Yep. Edging and and he, he could had so walkers. easily have had a wicket, really, really straight off, yeah. didn't he? But he has his first one in first class. Yeah, he's cricket. in again. Bowls. It's driven. That's a lovely shot. A little bit aerial to start with. It races away through extra cover. Don't think it's quite going to get to the boundary. <laughs> Davis is after it, but uh, pulls off, and so in the end, he can just uh, fall in behind it, and they come back for three. And Worcester should move on to ninety. Kashi Valley goes on to 13 very quickly. He's only faced uh, nine deliveries, so uh, he's racing along just in the same way as Worcestershire have gone along all morning. That's I have. It's been an absolutely brilliant start. Well, I would think it probably exceeds their expectations to actually be, having been put in on a morning like this, you would normally expect the ball to be seeming all over the place, wickets galore. 
and you know 60 for six at lunch and you know oh dear this is a hard life in division one oh, up to the know, contrary I, oh, I don't know I've, alan richardson i'm sure has got some pretty high hopes for his uh troops they've obviously sure lost some from players in the off season booth in bowls it's this ball this blooming cockroach ball they've given us <laughs> Where's it come from? Well, yes, the, uh, the uh, Kookaburra. Yeah. I've, I'd forgotten to mention that earlier, that they are playing with the Kookaburras yeah. at the first three rounds? Or first two. First two. There we go. Yeah, Kookaburra. So it's not as much swing on offer, not as proud as seam. Not as much movement. No. But, so it's not bowler friendly, this ball, obviously. But that, that's part of the reasoning for doing it, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Just to try and even things up at the start of the season. This next one has... Roderick defending, back to Booth, who feels off his own bowling. End of another over from Booth. His uh, fourth over. Sorry, no, not his fourth over, his, his fifth over, sorry. And uh, 90 for one, Worcestershire. Yeah, it's it's interesting because in Australia they started playing with the Dukes ball. And oh, that was like for for a couple of rounds they'd have a round or a, co a couple of rounds with the Dukes ball. Did it make any difference? Well, but it wasn't for that reason. My understanding is that I think it was after 2015 Ashes. I know Ricky Ponting was very vocal in Australia not being able to play the moving ball. And, and was suggesting that they needed to start playing at least some rounds. And it wasn't long after that that Australia then started including that in the Sheffield Shield just to try and get used to playing the Dukes ball with a yeah. view to playing in the Ashes. In comes Hannon Dolby, first ball, just defended straight back to the bowler's feet. He picks it up. And Kashi Valley, it's a dot ball for him. So there, there was that view, always that view to, to the Ashes and getting mm. players who could play that. So they have three different balls in Australia in the Sheffield Shield. Well, I don't know if they're still playing with the Dukes ball at the moment, but they were playing with Dukes ball some rounds. Um, the pink ball. Oh, always, you're still using that one. Pink then. ball yeah. for one round. And then the Kookaburra. Yeah, pink ball has died quite a lot over here, hasn't it? Yeah, in comes Hannon Dobby, a bit short of a length, that one. And... Just defended out into the covers, no run for Kashi Valley. Because the West Indies were coming this year. Their last tour over here was when we played the with the pink ball in that sort of, well, it's termed day night, but it never quite that in the middle of the summer gets night long and <laughs> night never really kicks in, does it? Yeah, it's I, I remember twi it's like for that. twilight and yeah, so it, you don't really get it. But that uh, that's the only one that's been played I over think here. It is, yeah. yeah. That's every year in Australia now, as Hannon Dolby is in and nice strong stride forward and defend by Cashew Valley out to mid off, no run. Well, I think as well, they came up with the idea uh, that people would come after work so you could work during the day, come to the test match during the. It doesn't work that way. If you're going to go to the test match, you've got a day off work and you're going to make a, a day of it. You're not going to pop in on the way. You can't get near the ground when the test match is on. So well, to do it after work is almost impossible. That's why it works so well in Adelaide. Because in Adelaide, it's a 10-minute walk from the city centre yep. or from the, the tra main train station. Yep. So it works perfectly for Adelaide in that situation. As Hannon Dolby is in, and this one just strays down the leg side a bit, flicks down behind square by Ali, takes a single, takes him to 14, brings Roderick back on to strike, 91 for one is for Worcestershire and a brilliant start to their season. Mm. You might be able to answer this question for me as well. Is there in first class, I mentioned this at the start of the day, the intertwined nature of these two teams with all the connections back and forth, backroom staff, players, everything, is there as close an association between any other two clubs in this country? As Hannon Dolby is in, and that one again is just flicked down towards deep, fine leg. In off the rope, uh, one run. 92 for one. Uh, I think it may be just a window in time that's causing that. But we're actually, because of the Giles, because of the Richardson, because you've got Worcestershire play, well, one Worcestershire, ex-Worcestershire player here and a couple at New Road. Um, three, in fact, Pollock. Um, um, 
and three coaching staff yes. from, from Warwickshire. As Hannon Dolby is in and just watched all the way through to the keeper's hands by. Ka but uh, I think it's just that window. I don't right. think it's normally you wouldn't normally have see that. I Hasn't there, uh, there always been a strong rivalry? Oh yeah, there's a rivalry. It's a it's um, it, it's always. But you could really you could make the same case because Warwickshire bed borders on to Northamptonshire. That rivalry doesn't isn't the same. The, the Bears against Pears tends to get more than any other one in the local area. As um, of course, that's that's part of it too, is the rhyming nickname. Yeah, that's who that's had the nickname first? With who came first, the Bears or the Pears? I would. I, I they're going to argue whichever way we go on that. <laughs> but to me, I think Pears has developed after Bears. Oh, but the pairs are going to go nuts. <laughs> right, that's not right. Right, if you're out there listening, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can tweet me at Melinda Farrell to tell me if uh, it was the Bears or the Pairs first. Well, I used to be a Worcester know. member. Um, so, so I'm going to have a foot in both camps here. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm the third. Well, I'm impartial, obviously. There's a bowling change. Will Rhodes has come on at the Birmingham end and his first delivery to Roderick is played back and Rhodes tries to build it with his feet with that great uh, football skills and in the end it's Mosley who's out at short extra cover who does the uh, tidying up but yeah there is a rivalry um, and, and of course with this there's been a few years where we haven't really played one another that much yeah. other than in T20 this one is turned away by Roderick through mid wicket just jog a single, 93 for one. And it's... Uh, I can remember Alan Donald standing on the pavilion. He played, because he played, I think, one game or two games for Worcestershire. And remember, I'd rather be a pear than a bear, which I think a lot of people remembered that. Oh. <laughs> which was... <d> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, was I suppose when you join a new club, you're going to say that, aren't you? I guess I was looking at someone like a like a Rob Yates. Rows in, bowls and driven. Mostly feels at short extra cover. There's no run. I, he was he was recruited by by Kadir Ali for yeah. Staffordshire, I think, when he came into the game. And now you've got Kadir Ali at Worcestershire. Worcestershire yeah. That that it's all of those little connections that when you start looking at the different players. Well, you're bound to be strong. because remember as well that um, most of these have players in things like the Birmingham League. This one is turned by Ali down to uh, fine leg for a single. Um, so all these players are playing together in the same competitions. They've come up through, played a huge amount against each other in junior cricket. Um, and uh, so they all know one another. And a lot of them have gone to the same schools and things. Well, exactly. The the ties between them are very, very close. Rhodes in, and this one outside the off stump and is left. Well, Worcestershire as well are one of the teams, uh, one of the club which uh, helped Warwickshire get Test match status. Their influence through some of their administrators back uh, helped Warwickshire towards getting Test match back in '57, because uh, they hadn't had a Test match here from 1929 till '57. They went to either side of the war, the Second World War, without any test cricket here. Um, ten years e either side. Rhodes in, bowls, and returns this to mid-wicket, and Briggs does the fielding, and there's no run. But it was thanks to some of the, um, the pushing from Worcestershire that that, uh, that helped Warwickshire get edge pass and retain, regain status, and obviously massive investment. Oh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine a summer without... Uh, Edge fast and well, test the ground, had, the, the ground oh. had gone into quite a serious state of disrepair, um, and certainly wasn't deemed to be fit for Test match cricket. I had the South Africans here in 1929, 24 and 29. Uh, they'd had pre two previous Tests, 1902 and 1909, against the Aussies, uh, and so they'd only ever played four Tests here until 1957, and then from 57 when the West Indies came, um, they've had Test cricket pretty much ev at least every other year. Hannon Dolby is in, and that's just fenced in the gap behind point. Uh, Will 
get to the, the ball before it reaches the boundary, though. It's more runs ticking over. Two runs there for Kashif Ali, who moves on to 17, 96 for one. I mean, just what I think about, I mean, last year, that Ashes test, that's one of the best tests I've ever been at. What an incredible match that was. Uh, just all the way to the end. It was it was one of the greats. Mm. And uh, this is always such a good venue. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've got that. Uh, we, we miss out after the... We've got next time's Ashes, but uh, then the following one, we don't have a game here against Australia. That ball just defended for no run by Ali. Yeah, that seems so strange well, to me. Well, in fairness... Guess you've got to share it around. You've got to share it around. Yeah, yeah. fair enough to... Yeah. Can't... You know, oh. do it every year. Uh, got uh, in fairness, we've got more test grounds than we've got test matches available, and beautiful ones as well. I have to say, I, I do really enjoy being over here, and the grounds are just beautiful. As Hannon Dolby runs in short of a length, and this time he gets enough on it. Kashi Fali almost identical. Oh no, he doesn't. There's brilliant fielding. I thought he had enough on that one. It slowed up a little bit behind point, but some good work in the deep has presented the four. He just managed to flick the ball inside as he got over the rope and then jumped back in. Backs towards me. I can't quite make out who was that is. Was that Jacob Bethel? Was it Bethel? Uh, no. It may well have been out there. It's got his back to me, so yeah. I can't see his number, and he is a long way away. It was either Bethel or Mosley. I'm not sure which one of them stops it in the end. But... Yeah, certainly this is one of those grounds. My criteria for if I really love a ground is if you can tell which city you're in when when you're in the ground. Right. As Hannon Dolby is in, and that one is right on the money. Just a nice stride forward and defence, but uh, lots of claps from the fielders for Hannon Dolby. Ball just nipping in slightly off the pitch. Definitely doing much better from this end. It was Ed Barnard who did that field. Ah, there you go. He turned around. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's great. The numbers are actually very clear on the vests. I was worried they were all going to be in cable knits without numbers on them because know, it's cold. We were talk Rich and I were talking about that before. <laughs> and, uh, how difficult it is when you're not familiar with the players. In comes Hannon Dolby, left well alone outside the off stump by Ali. Uh, but, yeah, so if, if, when you're here at Edgebaston, particularly where we, we are in the wonderful BBC commentary box, I absolutely love it because not only do you have the, the distinctive E light uh, towers, but then you look over the stand and you can see BT Tower out there. You see that city skyline, uh, the church spires. You know you're in mm. Birmingham. Yeah, it's quite distinctive from up here, isn't it? A lovely view. It's Hannon Dolby is running in just short of a length and that's just fenced down behind point i'll get a single for cashy valley to finish off the over it's 99 for one after 20 overs so pretty good run rate cashy valley is on 20 Roderick on 35. ollie hannah dolby hasn't looked quite today to be on the peak of his game he's just looks a little bit like he struggled there, and I just wonder whether it might be that uh, Alex Davis gives him another. He's, that's, he's in his second spell. He's one at each end, and he just gives uh, has another change. As Road starts his second over from the Birmingham end, it beats the bat as Ali pushes forward to that one. It, it's a little bit of a way movement as Ali pushed forward with that huge amount of. Uh, in fact, I'm going to give Ali the say he dropped the bat just inside the line there at the <laughs> last minute. We'll give him that uh, clearance on that. Well, he does get some really lovely away movement. Mm. Well, Rhodes, he, he's bowled good Yorkers as well. Far better bowler, I think, than he does as captain gave himself time for. Good little peel from behind the stumps to this next one as Ali is wrapped on the pad but I think that's come if A it was missing the stumps by a long way it was going down the leg side B did he get a little nick on it as well not sure if he did but either way it was Bowler definitely wasn't going interested down. at all was it it's 
going down. That's all right. It's not. It's, it's the job <laughs> of the field is to keep the pressure on, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Just keep it interesting. And he comes again and bowls and forward comes out and runs it away to that short extra cover. Don Mosley, who does the fielding. 99 for one. We are in the 21st over. Remember this morning, Warwickshire won the toss, chose to bowl, and really it's been, I think it's fair to say, Worcestershire's morning. But uh, we've just got the one wicket when Jake Libby missed time to pull. It's caught in the deep, as this next one is defended by Ali. It's caught in the deep to give Michael Booth his first first class wicket. And that was Warwickshire's sole success. We're coming up to an hour and a half. Richard will be rejoining us in a few minutes. Um, but I uh, don't know whether he has to do a news update on the half hour. No, he's shaking his head. He doesn't. <laughs> he's very good at those. Yeah. This next one is pushed into the offside. What? The, the half hour ones. Does it, the, <laughs> those, those news bulletins, I listen to him in awe. Do you? Yes. I'm, I'm easily well, impressed, at, at to home. be fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I'm sitting here. Oh, right. <laughs> Consummate you, you rushed to the radio to put it on <laughs> on the hour because Richard's doing an update. Well, that too. I'll make yeah, sure I'm I sure do that. I'm sure you don't, sure. <laughs> uh, they get a big surge in listeners on the hour. <laughs> Comes Rhodes the game. This is defended from the crease. End of the over. It's 99 for one. Roderick is on 35. Kashi Valley has moved very quickly on to 20. And uh, Warwickshire just got that one wicket, with Libby being the one to go. He made, what was it, 38, I think he made, didn't he? He did. He made 38 of 51. For he became the victim of Michael Booth. And uh, you are right. We are going to have a change in the bowling. That is the end of Oliver Hannon Dolby's second spell. Uh, so it is Ed Barnard who is going to be bowling from the members end for the first time today. Been pretty consistent, I believe, for Warwickshire. A really valuable player in that all rounder role for them. And he just turns at the top of his mark. It'll be Roderick to face him first. He's in over the wicket to the right hander who just presses the ball back to the bowler. Fields off his own delivery. Uh, just looking at the far end of the ground, there's a reasonable number of uh, folks in sat down at the um, in front of the David Heath suite at the Wyatt end uh, stand end. Um, there aren't many who are in shirt sleeves, though. It has to be <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a good number of anoraks and top coats on out there. Oh, I came with my woolies, my winter woolies, even a woolly hat. In comes Barnard. This one just defended to the leg side short mid wicket fields it so still no run two dot balls first up for barnard yeah i, I brought my woolly hat i've got layers i've got my coat look i didn't bring my scarf or my gloves because i figured i was inside but i'm prepared for anything else yeah i've uh, i've left all mine in the car i've brought a coat in with me i've got which is rather stupid because I brought the camera to go and st sit outside when I'm not on air. <laughs> you can borrow mine if you like. Oh, okay. That, uh, I've in comes Barnard. <laughs> Again, big step I forward. Don't think it'll fit Roderick. me, unfortunately. I'm sure it will. It's an overcoat. But yes, it's it's certainly chilly. And looking at the, what is it, the bear and something flag? Bear and ragged staff. Bear and ragged staff. What's a ragged staff? It's not a smooth one. Okay, why is there a ragged staff? Because that's what they used to tether bears to oh. in the, and it's also part of the As emblem. Barnard comes in, ball just defended on the leg side, no but run. It's part of the Warwick County emblem on the coat right. of arms, um, because they used to do bear baiting. Yeah, I know right. that makes uh, that makes me very uncomfortable. In uh, in the olden days, Horrible. and the bears were tethered to a big stake. Um, in the market squares and mm. things like that, which they saw as being entertainment for some reason. Um, but then the tether was taken off the flat of it. As Barnard is in, that's just a good length ball punched down to mid off 
by Roderick, <coughs> no run. But if you look at the um, de Brooke family, who are the Earls of Warwick, based at Warwick Castle, then their coat of arms has the bear and regular staff. And any, if you come into Warwickshire from any direction, you'll see the bear and staff. And the staff, which is, or the post it's hanging on, is called a ragged staff. Okay, so first castle I ever saw, Warwick Castle, in my life, as Barnard is in, and that one just a bristy flay, but it just goes straight to mid off. So I'm no going to leave you, Mel. I'm going over to the museum. I'll see you oh. after lunch. I'm going to have to check out the museum while I'm here. I, d I love a museum, uh, but it's the end, and that was a maiden over actually. Well, bold by Barnard first up it says still on 99 for one just not able to tick it over to three figures yet after that excellent over but still traveling beautifully uh warwickshire uh, of course we have reached the point in phil's career where he's both curator and artifact at the uh, museum <laughs> oh wow As, uh, coming forward is cashy <gasps> Fally to the first ball of a new over from will Rhodes. my word yeah. it's it's a beamer first up <laughs> wow <laughs> No run as it's pushed into the offside. He's smiling. Oh, he's, he's smiling. <laughs> I don't know. It's a the grimace. It, it's maybe the the smile of a bear that's been baited and has actually been broken free of its tether. <laughs> he's very yeah. used to it. He, 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 he is a member of the ragged staff. He's coming after you with the ragged staff. <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, Rhodes once more. He's cut through the offside this time and he's timed that beautifully. Kashi Fali. Very busy since he came in. He's to 24, and that's the 100 up before lunch for Worcestershire. It's been a great session for them so far. 103 for one. But that just sat up and uh, waited to be clattered through the offside for four. And you can tell he got some beautiful timing and, and a bit of power on that as well, because that one actually raced over the boundary rope on that very, very slow part where all the other balls have been pulling up so suddenly when they get to about within two metres inside of the rope. Rhodes arrives again, fuller on middle and leg. What an extravagant defensive shot from Cashy Valley. Quite a bit of movement. He's got an extremely high back lift, doesn't he? It, it, the bat almost looks as though it's, it's perpendicular behind his head. Just uh, very noticeable. It, it, it's an awkward looking start position, but by the time the ball is delivered, he's in mm. pretty orthodox shape. It's just that starting position where... See, so he defends back down the wicket. Yeah. It's interesting, look. Th there is not enough evidence yet to suggest whether the Kookaburra ball is uh, responsible for this. But three <laughs> games underway, OK? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Combined score of 239 for three <laughs> on an overcast morning in... April. I mean, I'm I just curious, isn't it? Knots have reduced Essex to 36 for one. Dylan Pennington, the former Worcestershire seamer, with a wicket there. As uh, Rhodes approaches once more, and this is forced up towards uh, the cover where M Mosley picks it up. The other two sides, Worcestershire 103 for one, Glamorgan 101 for one against Middlesex. Half century for Sam Northeast, he's 52 not out. Billy Root opening the batting, actually, for Glamorgan, 48 not out. So. There are runs being had. They've uh, they've thrown five seamers at it, Middlesex. In 23 overs, they've gone for 105. So a very similar picture there to the one here. With a similarly uh, not quick over rate as well, I would say. As Rhodes comes in once more to Cashy Fally, who is cutting this just over the head of point. There was a big leap from Ed Barnard, who was very interested in that. And it will creep over the rope for four. Nowhere near as convincing a boundary, that one from Cashy Fally, but the run's count all the same. He's to 28, and a score 107 for one. Yeah, he's been pretty exciting since he came to the crease. Really aggressive, not uh, not shy of, of taking on uh, the risk of a shot, as he did on that occasion. Well, it was way too high for Barnard, I think, to get to. But uh, two boundaries coming in that over for Cashy Fally. He's uh, looking very good early on. I think you, if you were Alan Richardson, you'd be pretty happy at how everyone's gone so far. Oh, what a glorious drive. First up off Barnard. Roderick just presses forward and it goes straight down the ground. 
Absolute textbook straight drive, that one. Quite a floaty full pitch delivery, really, from Ed Barnard, who was hoping that the stumps were going to do the fielding for him. <laughs> that was the only way that the boundary was going to be saved. Rushworth and Hannon Dolby at mid-on and mid-off were not going to be sprinting after it. They wouldn't have got anywhere near it anyway. But it's, uh, Roderick, who, after a flying start, has been quite becalmed. would be glad to get going again, though. So Barnard is in once more. This time the ball just defended to short mid-wicket. So at boundary, the first run's conceded, conceded by Barnard, who uh, started off with the maiden. That was a, probably the shot of the day so far. Beautiful straight drive. I'm going to go down to one slip now with uh, Jacob Bethel being asked to come in as another short fielder. So it's going to be an old school silly mid on, which, you know, as in closer to the uh, umpire at the bowler's end than the square leg, if you see what I mean. As in comes Barnard. It's short and he swivels the pull, but doesn't really get much on it, Roderick. And it's fielded down there, fine leg running up. So just another single takes him to 112. And that's ticking along nicely. Of course, we saw Jake Libby fall to the pull shot earlier to the short side of the ground. That was to the long side. There is actually quite a bit of space out there, but there is the slow outfield as well. As Barnard comes into Ali. Oh, flashes at that one. And just uh, takes a moment to compose himself. So Barnard. Just didn't really get much movement on that. It might have been a little bit quicker. Uh, it's, it's a good delivery. It's quite sharp. It's quite a flighty shot, isn't it, from Kashi Valley? Who uh, you don't want to get overconfident at this point. Worcestershire have put themselves in an excellent position with uh, just over 20 minutes to go till lunch. If they can get through one down, then they'll have had an outstanding session. The Kashi maybe should have uh, kept that club in the bag for now. Well, he's on strike again as Barnard is in. This time he plays. A much more defensive shot and it just squirts out in front of point. He does the fielding. So no run again. He he is quite swashbuckly, isn't he, Gashi Valley? On first glance. I haven't watched him bat before. Swash swashbuckly. Yes, swashbuckly. Not, 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 sw not swashbuckling. Well I know I've had swashbuckly. I don't know okay. if he's the full swashbuckle, but he's okay. swashbuckly. Okay, yeah, yeah. I made that up. <laughs> as as Kashi Valley, or the Roderick, I should say, rather, just defends that one to the offside to finish up with a dot ball for Rhodes, who's number for 10 after three overs. So it's a swashbucklish so, so sw far. Sw he, <laughs> <laughs> he showed he may have some swash about his buckles. Swashbuckles, swashbucklies, swashbucklish. Nice. Oh, gosh. Try saying all of that five yeah. times fast. That's what I say to you. So it's, it's always good. It's always good to go through all the declensions with it. That's excellent. It's, you know, clearly, you were a Latin student. 112 for one. And I just said Rhodes in the last over. Of course, it was, it was Barnard who finished yeah. the last over. It's, it's Rhodes now. It's Roderick Rhodes on now. strike. Roderick 40, Cashy Valley 28. The man dismissed for 38 was Jake Libby. He'll be fuming, got a top edge to a pull. Good catch diving forward from Danny Briggs. I was saying the deep. It's too short a boundary to be in the deep. If he's in the <laughs> deep, he'd be in the third row of the stand. It's, uh, that short boundary was too much of a temptation for Libby as Roderick takes a good stride forward and defends it, pops up into the uh, follow-through of Will Rhodes. And there's no run. The... Uh, Breeze has just diminished a little bit. The cloud is still moving quite quickly. Some sunshine. darker stuff has just passed us. But yeah. look at the sunshine and blue skies. But those ones that have just passed us are going to rain on somebody <laughs> very shortly. I, I, I'm going for a full day's play. Well, good, that's good. We'll, we'll, all, we'll all enjoy that. Forward again in defence, this time up to mid on. Uh, I, I reckon that's going to rain somewhere over Acox Green, that, that dark cloud there. It's heading that way. Well, I always know, I always go out the back of the, the press box where the coffee machine is. And if mm. you look out the window there, out that way, that's where it usually it, comes if from. If it's raining there, it's going to rain in yes. here pretty soon. Uh, that, that is the law of the weather always being sent up from New Road to here. Certainly the bad stuff is. 
Rhodes in again, back of a length, left alone. There's always been, and I've been, I think it's my 31st season doing this. It's frightening, isn't it? Um, the rule has always been, if they're off at Taunton, then they'll be off in Bristol about half an hour later. An hour after that, they'll be off in Worcester. And 40 minutes after that, they'll be off at Edgbaston. There you go. That's the, the general, right. general rule of British rain. Okay, I did not know yeah. this. Whereas if it's raining in Perth, everybody runs outside, takes their T-shirts off and enjoys it. <laughs> <laughs> so Rose wants what a Roderick driving a fuller ball, but he won't get that past Alex Davis moving to his right at mid-off. Hey, I've, I've been at a lot of cricket, a lot of test matches at the SCG in recent years mm. where there's been not very much play and that happens every year. It's just always storms in Sydney at that See, time. That's why I went with Perth. Exactly. You know. Oh, Sydney's had a lot of uh, days Global warming. Lost. Well, they've, they've got flooding there at the moment, I believe. So not fun if you're playing late season club cricket in Sydney. Rose wants more back of a length outside off stump left by Roderick. I do quite enjoy seeing the SCG when NRL games are played there. Oh, it's not very often. No, it's usually, usually, usually a couple each year, aren't there? Yeah, they might be one or two that they try and have like a Souths game or a Roosters game there yeah. or something. It always looks quite fascinating seeing these great big burly guys with their shaved legs and their ridiculously tight shirts <laughs> uh, coming out of the pavilion at the SCG Rhodes again back of a length and left alone outside off stump end of the over 112 for one I do love the fact they, sh they, they shave their legs to be harder to tackle don't they, they yeah. and to show off they, well, they want to show off their musculature well it's when you see how um how the, the the shirts have gotten smaller over the years. If you look at footage from back in you know, like the 70s and 80s, and they were all wearing quite sort of baggy shirts. Yeah. And, jerseys, I should say. And then in the modern era, everything is tailored and very tight. And that's, they, they again, the excuse is that they can't grab their shirts to pull them back. But come on. I think there's a little bit of flex there. Oh, I think a that, bit of no, sexy flex. I, I think there really is. Yeah. I, th I think there is. They they want to show just how keenly sculpted they are. <laughs> it's a it's a little bit different to, to to cricket where everything just seems to be the same. I don't think cricket shirts and kits have got tighter, have they? As Barnard it is to continue bowling to Kashif Ali, who just defends the first ball, and there's a nice little bit of oh. footwork. Wow, from Barnard just. Flicked his foot up at the back and and straight to know, Jacob Bethel. Jacob Bethel. Yeah, lovely back heel. Well, it was, yeah. wasn't it? Sorry, I'm, I'm not. See, NRL is my wheelhouse. Football is not so much my wheelhouse. Yeah, no, I don't know. The other thing in the, in the NRL, they, they don't call them shirts. I don't think they call them. Do they call them jerseys? Jerseys. Or do they, or do they call them guns? No, jerseys. I've heard them called all sorts of things. I'm sure. Uh, I would say jersey. Yeah, it's Barnard, it's in. Oh, and that one whistles past the outside edge of the bat. Uh, just replays the shot, does Kashif Ali. And looks far more defensive in replay as well. Just one slip in for him now. I, d I don't know quite why, but I've got a soft spot for the Parramatta Eels. So I just, Everyone you know. has a soft Do spot. Do they? I, th oh. I think so. Unless you're, unless you're a Manly fan, then you definitely no, no, can't no, have, no, no. A, have a soft spot for the, the Parramatta Eels as Barnard is in. This time it's a much more defensive shot from Kashif Ali. Yeah. Straight out in front of point, no run. Being considered a Lee man. Well, do you on, know, on any level, to be, yeah, to be fair. Do, well, do you know, there's what? actually a nickname in Australia. This is, this is a bit mean, I think. Okay. But um, I've heard that some, some guys will, will give someone the nickname of Bondi. I, right. As I'll tell like you why it's suspense. Yeah, Bondi Beach. Yeah. As Barnard comes in over the wicket, and that ball just watched carefully by Cashy Valley through to the keeper. Now Bondi Beach is in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, so it's south of of the Sydney Harbour. Right. And Manly is a long way north. Uh, the be Manly okay. Beach, north yeah. of Sydney Harbour, and quite quite a long way. So, so if if Someone is nicknamed Bondi. That means he's a long way from Manly. Okay. So that is it's That's mean. That's quite clever. It's clever, but mean, but clever. In comes Barnard, and there's a big swivel pull at that one from Cashy Valley, and that is going to go all the way, very fine, over the boundary rope for four. 
So still willing to play his shots when the ball's there for it to be played. Moves on to 32. And Worcestershire now 116 for one. Yes, so that's the uh, Manly Bondi. Bondi line, so if you hear someone called strong. Bondi, it, it's perhaps meant as a, as a bit of a cheeky kind of insult. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. No? That's okay. Well, do you have a nickname? I'm weighing it. I don't know. <laughs> not, not this broadcastable. <laughs> In comes Barnard, and that ball just pushed into the offside by Ali. No run. End of the over from Barnard. 116 for one with Roderick on 40 and Kashif Ali on 32. So if you had like an international super spy working for the British government who was into pastel shades and white wine spritzers, that would be James Bondi. <laughs> Is that... You could tell I was working on something, couldn't you? <laughs> 116 for one, Worcestershire. <laughs> <laughs> Normal service will re resume from Melinda Farrell very shortly. Ed Barnard has lost his cap in the wind. Uh, sorry. <laughs> You'll write that down and use that later, won't you? <laughs> oh, I love a good dad joke. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. <laughs> Roderick is on strike to face the new over from Will Rhodes and he clips it through the vacant square leg area because the fielder is out on the boundary. Danny Briggs comes in from in front of the hover cover at the Priory side of the ground. 117 for one. This is really tickled to me. It was quite, it was creative. That it was, was the dad joke. That no, was creative that was, joke. The dad jokes don't have to be all bad. That's uh, very good. I, I, <laughs> my daughter hates me ever telling a joke. So. Oh, I'm just wiping tears away. That's got me. <laughs> uh, carry Once on. Once more, Rhodes <laughs> approaches, this time to Cashy Valley. Turned in towards the mid-wicket area because Briggs is a bit closer for Cashy. And there's no run, 117 for one. It's been very close to the perfect session, this for Worcestershire. On the return to Division 1 cricket, having been put into bat this morning. And that's... Uh, Wonderful for them because that's always the the pressure, isn't it? So many people that oh, can they stay up in Division One? Rose to Kashif driving nicely, but not with the timing to get it beyond Alex Davis, who hurls the ball back to the other end, and Michael Burgess. That's a long way to go. We're only in the first session still, and we haven't seen what Warwickshire are going to do with the bat. But I, I reckon Worcestershire have set their store pretty high. I think they'd they'd like to finish in the top six. I think that's that's probably where they're they're setting their stall. Rhodes full outside off stomp hit into the ground and hops into the hands of the short extra cover Dan Mosley. And no run. And it's been pretty tough for them losing a trio of players who've moved up to Nottinghamshire as well, including Josh Tung. That's a a big loss for them, but uh, certainly that recruitment of Jason Holder is pretty interesting as well. Uh, getting him for these early, this early part of the season, someone who wants to push his claims to be considered for Test cricket again after opting not to play in Australia during the summer. Two short extra covers in now for Rhodes, Ooh. and it is driven on the bounce to one of them, diving to his right, Dan Mosley. Celebrates a non-catch. And even the youngsters who were well up for appealing <laughs> over in the Priory stand, there's probably about a group of 30 of them, none of them fooled by that. Not one of them. Uh, it's interesting, and it, it, it does suggest, or well, it, it shows, I guess, just how difficult things are that, that, that they're playing with the fields like this, just trying to conjure something out of this ball. Pushing forward. And dabbing it down to backward square is uh, Kashi. Final ball of that over. Uh, 27 done. Hopefully we'll get through three more before lunch. We'll only be uh, a little bit behind the rate, but we're certainly going to be behind at the end of this session. 117 for one. It's been seam all the way. I wonder if we'll see a putative over of spin before the interval, whether uh, Danny Briggs or Jacob Bethel 
will be called into service. Again, only three matches have started this morning out of the nine because of weather. No play at all at Derby. No play at all at Old Trafford. Lancashire and Surrey has been called off for the day as well. So that's it. Two abandonments. Durham against Hampshire has been called off for the day. That's three abandonments. But only three wickets have gone down in the three matches that have been played. All occasions where the uh, batting team have been put in. And there's 275 for three between them. Barnard to Roderick. Just defended on the offside. No run. So if this was a Duke ball round of matches, would we, would we be looking at run scoring at the level we are it's, it's a, a concern Alex Stewart was certainly very vocal in uh, his frustration at the use of the Kookaburra ball for four matches this season I'm, I'm, st I'm still getting over putity if that's a good word in comes oh in comes Barnard that ball just very sharply onto Roderick and I'll get a single that's a good word did you that's, did you say putative yeah that's a good Pusty. word. I'm, I'm impressed. From the Latin putare, to think. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Do you speak Latin? I'd, well, no, I mean, you'd have very few people to talk to if you did. <laughs> well. No, but I did, I'd have to do some of it at school, and that it, it helps. I did other languages, so it did help. So you're a very well-educated man yeah, with well, a wonderful vocabulary. Wa yeah, I've wasted it. <laughs> Oh, it's not wasted. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, then the cricket population out there would not have heard the word putative. Oh, dear. And they should be grateful. As in comes Barnard, watched all the way through by Cashew Valley. Let go. <laughs> the various extra covers are looking at each other. Jacob, Be Jacob Bethel has decided that he doesn't fancy the short extra cover. He's going to swap with somebody else. And it means that Alex Davis can come back a little bit closer to captain the side from nearer by it has been a morning where Warwick have tried to be creative mm. and I suppose the wicket came from a short ball because they were trying to bowl into a trap and it came off but in comes Barnard once more this time it's just flicked through mid wicket and deep mid wicket come running up to keep it to just a single so it adds one more to the total is that updated the scoreboard over there? Yeah, 119, for, 119 one. for one. I so you've got, you've was that before? No, no, but they're very, qu it's very quick. The scoreboard. It is here. quick. There's a there's a new scoreboard here that we can't see, but we've been told about it, and apparently it's impressive. Okay. But I I can't see it. I think it's below us. As Barnard comes into Roderick, and just defends that one. So no run. Yeah, it's to our left. It's on the edge of the pavilion that's nearest the Priory stand. So. Uh, at some point, it will come up on the feed. The feed, uh, my picture of the feed has gone down for now, but I'll, I'll get it back up during the uh, lunch interval. Yeah, well, so I've always loved the old clock here. Like even though it's uh, old clock, old, old scoreboard with the mm. clock, even though if you, it's obviously the digital one now, it's just got a lovely iconic kind of shape to it. it. Makes it quite distinctive. In comes Barnard. That's nicely flicked down towards long leg, but I'll uh, just get the single. So that brings up the 120. Catch if Ali moves on to 33. When that scoreboard, the traditional scoreboard at Edge Baston, before it was digital, uh, when it had, it had rolling numbers, they were on great big rollers. And inside, about halfway up, you would sit and there were steering wheels and the steering wheels turned the numbers. <laughs> and they, they were like bus driver steering wheels, great big things. And that's how they turned it. And there oh. were one or two other ones that you had to go and change the number manually, like for the next batsman. And that's what it's an ex it was an extraordinary place to go inside. Because I've been inside, well, I've been inside the old scoreboard at, at Adelaide Oval, which is still like that, and the one yeah. at the Wacker as well, which get, they both get extraordinarily hot. They'll only let you go in on certain days because it gets up to nearly 50 degrees inside. Oh, wow. Those. Yeah, they're really hot. That is a bit too much. Will Rhodes coming in to bowl to Roderick, who leaves it alone outside off stump. I would suspect the penultimate over before lunch. Oh, we've had putative and penultimate. Well, that's, well, that's, that's a straightforward word, isn't it? But they're both nice P words. OK. Could it be putative and penultimate? Probably not. The putative not. penultimate. Well, well, no, it could, could be, I be. suppose. You no, know, it could be. OK. Yeah. You've got to find another P word now. OK. Let's set you the task. 
<laughs> You're so glad I'm on it's with you. It's going to be a long you? day. <laughs> uh, Will Rhodes is into ball to Gareth Roderick, who uh, is comfortably in position, just turns a bit side on as he defends it back down the wicket, but he was uh, comfortably in shape to defend that. It's just, look, I, whenever we are going around the country, and I think you're, you're due to see Worcestershire at Kidderminster as well, aren't you, in the next week or two, it's just great to be watching cricket and enjoying the start of a championship season so no wonder we're enthused we're a bit like <laughs> we're, we're a bit like we started the school holidays today that's what it is Roderick awaits that is uh, too short and too wide for him to show any interest he will be very happy to keep an asterisk against his name it's like the, we've had so too much red cordial or you'd yeah. say squash would you say red squash S squash yeah do you say yeah, squash yeah, cordial's say cordial. usually written on the bottles yes that's, that's what we call it yeah and in Australia. We tend to, if it's lime, we tend to think of that more as a cordial, whereas if it's orange, we certainly think of it as squash. I mean, usually I'm quite bilingual in speaking Australian and English. <laughs> so, Aussie and English. Uh, back of a length and left alone, just lent back that time, Roderick, to make sure he got bat and body out of the way of it, through to Michael Burgess, 120 for one. Yes, so I just, there, there are certain things that I, I do struggle with in in translating from one to the other okay but most of the time i, I do okay i do all right see if i can bamboozle you later oh, with anything that doesn't i remember last me. year doing a brummy test with you and you, you did pretty well actually <laughs> as uh, this one is a little straighter and a little bit fuller and in pushing forward is roderick defends it out into the offside one ball left in this over is that down at, was that down at the oval or somewhere like that i was testing you as to as an adopted brummy whether yeah. you yeah yeah, yeah, it was. It was. We were, we were on with the Great Mart Church down yeah. at, at, at the Oval. You, 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 know, you, you knew, for instance, that they're not roundabouts, they're islands. Cause if, if you're in Birmingham, they're islands. You knew that one. I remember now. There, there's there's a few. You could, you know, there are uh, not everything. I mean, I love being called Babs. Makes <laughs> me feel welcome. This is full and driven, but it's going to hit the stump. That's wrong-footed Alex Davis, who then slips on the moisture in the outfield. And they set off for what will probably be a comfortable three here for Roderick. It moved into perfect fielding position, Alex Davis, had it not hit the stump on its way through. And 123 for one, Roderick on 46, and he'll uh, maintain the strike, which will give him a chance potentially to reach his half century. And we will see, as per cricket tradition, an exploratory over of spin. <laughs> what? That starts with E. Oh, you were hoping that I was going to... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Well, D D Danny Briggs is going to come on and bowl with a nice perpendicular arm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you press me to do that? Never mind. Oh, this is... See, it's... it's this yeah. is how you... Look at to see if there's any potential for spin. Hmm? Yeah. It's, that's going to be quite interesting to see. If there is much, of course, up at Lancashire, there's been the whole thing about Nathan Lyon and Tom Hartley, and would yeah. they be playing both? Were they, I wonder, were they both named today? Uh, well, of course, they haven't had to be named in the end. They haven't had to. Because that, that's going to be a three-day no. game now. As in comes Briggs. He's around the wicket, and that's just clipped straight to a fielder in a mid-wicket by Roderick. So, yes, he's coming around the wicket to the right hand, a bowling from the members' end. Second ball also sent in just the same direction. So, two balls without scoring. Mid on and mid off. Yeah. Swap for reasons best known to themselves. It looked like a choreographed dance move. In comes Briggs again. It's a fuller ball and just tap down back towards the bowler. So. Bit hard to tell from where we are, but if the ball is moving laterally much, this time it's outside the off stump and he leans back. Rod Roderick has a flash at it. <laughs> Chew what? That was like John T. Rhodes at backward point there. Great fielding. Ollie Hannon Dolby, all six. It was like a man with John T. Rhodes on his shoulders, diving <laughs> full length. And he did very well to, to stop that ball because it looked certain to be a boundary. Next ball just defended. And uh, cover coming coming in to do the clean-up work. So tight from Briggs. No run so far. Last ball of his over. And this one is firmly driven down to 
mid on but there won't be a run so it's a maiden first up for Briggs and that is the end of the first session of the county championship 2024 here at Edgebaston and it's a great one for Worcestershire who finished the first session 123 for one with Roderick on 46 and Kashif Ali on 33 the only wicket to fall that of Jake Libby who was out for 38 of 51 attempting to pull uh, Booth who picked up his first wicket in first class cricket as well yeah excellent morning for Worcestershire we'll have the whole of the afternoon session in around 40 minutes from now uh, with Melinda and myself and Phil hope you've enjoyed the morning session the return of cricket uh, all is well in the world at lunch Worcestershire 123 for one It's been a challenging morning for Warwickshire's bowlers here as Worcestershire have moved on to 123 for one. A really fine batting performance from them. Only Jake Libby going. He holed out to deep square leg off the bowling of debutant Michael Booth for 38. Gareth Roderick very assured all morning. Started brightly, then dug in deep. He's on 46. Kashif Ali attractive with 33. Very short boundary on one side. Worcestershire have made that pay. The gusty wind has caused some problems for the Warwickshire bowlers at lunch. Worcestershire 123 for one. Richard Wilford and Edge Baston.
If you want it, you gotta dig deep. I'm on top of the mountain, but it's real steep. Uh, been through the valley, now I'm at the peak. Yeah, I hide your learning every time I speak. And when kings collide, they expect to fight. But I know the truth, yeah, we the light. Don't believe the hate, nothing's overnight. Views from the top like a satellite, yeah. I don't care what the they say. I live with honor for my name's sake. Welcome to David E. Tweet. Uh, coming in here, looking at all the memorabilia and the uplift it's had. It looks fantastic. It's a great facility for you members to come and enjoy during the summer and have a wonderful time and watch Warwickshire win. I recall my time starting in Warwickshire. I was the age of 14 when I walked through the gates here at Edgbaston. Uh, over the years, it's been fantastic. I've been here a long time now and been associated with the club with a lot of success. And 1980 uh, was the first success that Warwickshire had that I enjoyed. As part of the squad, I was on the Lord's ground staff, but still playing a lot of second team cricket for Warwickshire. And the two guys here, David Brown and Bob Willis, lifted the John Play League, which was absolutely fantastic. And it gave us all the lift that future is going to look good. So just going forward from the 1980s, uh, 1980, I joined the staff in 1981. And our first success, really, winning a trophy was in 1989. And I recall uh, the semi-final here at Edgbaston. It was a packed house against Worcestershire. And it's the first time uh, I appreciated how magnificent this stadium is to play in when its capacity is full. The best thing about it was about 2,000 Worcestershire fans and the rest were ours. Uh, a great atmosphere. And when we walked out, it was fantastic. And even better was that we beat them by 100 runs. You couldn't have asked for any more. But then we went on and we won the 1989 NetWest final against Mike Gettings uh, Middlesex, which again, uh, I was lucky enough to be there at the end. And Neil Smith hit a magnificent six at the end in the last over and we got over the line uh, and won that game. 1994, we come to that magnificent year where we won three trophies, runners up in the last one. And then 1993 was the NatWest final, which I suppose everybody remembers me for. The 100 at Lords chasing 320 to win. And we did, Dermot myself, put a big partnership on. And to be honest, there's members, every time I walk into the ground, still remember me for that day. But at the end of the day, it was a great day for Warwickshire. And for all the members, because at half time we were 4 0 down, at full time we won 5 4. I've played and viewed cricket from many grounds over my years watching cricket, playing cricket. There isn't a ground better than Edgbaston to view your cricket from. You can go to any part of this lovely ground and you get a great view. Please count yourself lucky that you're associated with this fantastic club, fantastic ground where your viewing facility is better than any other in the country. Came back on tour, um, obviously really proud and really honoured to be asked to a, a great club like this, to, especially after only one season. Um, yeah, I was really pleased. Um, but yeah, built a really good relationship with Davo over the last over the last year I've been here, so I think we'll work well together. Um, but yeah, during tour got asked and was, was more than happy to accept. It wasn't really on my radar, purely due to the number of senior heads that we've got and some probably some of the other candidates and the leaders we've got in the squad. Um, but um, yeah, it's a really nice feeling to have been asked. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the most outgoing like that. I, I'm not the loudest in the change room, like you say. But um, I'm also I feel like I'm not too shy in coming forward, and I'll put my opinion across if I feel like something needs to be said. Um, so yeah, th there's obviously different ways of going about leading in in parts. But obviously, being advice as well, it's a lot of it's going to be alongside our and just 
supporting him really in some of the jobs that he may not have time to do or he needs a bit of help with. It, it's been great. I've, I've loved every minute of being here and it, it was a big change for me. It was a big move for me, but it's, I've loved every minute, like I say, and I'm hoping to kick on this year with the cricket. I enjoyed the cricket last year and it, it went well, but I'd like to kick on and, and do even better this year and hopefully this sort of tag won't affect that and I can kick on, like I say. again. What a shot that is. Easy as you like for Sam Hay. Hold it. Brilliant from Wokes. That is stunning. I think I've always been involved in sport and I've got a really sporty family. Um, my sister's a professional athlete, so I'd always kind of seen up close what elite sport looked like and what it took to get there. So I always knew I kind of wanted to go into sport, but not necessarily playing. Just went to Northampton University to do my undergrad in sports science. Finished my master's at Loughborough in about September 2021 and then saw this role come up probably just before I finished that. Applied for it, got offered the job and have been here since November 2021, coming up to my third season now. With my job, it's kind of split between the pathway and then the professional squad. Um, so the main part of my job is to lead the pathway, so academy and EPP, and then oversee our county age group programme. But then I also work closely and support the professional squad as well. Particularly here, it's a really great group of people, so the biggest thing I'd enjoy is just coming into work every day and being around people that you want to spend time with and you want to work together with, whether it's players or staff. Um, I think in terms of my actual job, seeing players progress from a place where, particularly young players, where they didn't either enjoy the gym or kind of understand how it would help them, seeing them get to a point where they're really keen to do it and they can see exactly why they're doing it and how it's going to help their cricket, um, they're probably the biggest things. The boys have made me feel so included right from day dot. They don't see me as kind of any different to it being a male SSC. Um, so, yeah, I think if there's a couple of us within the men's circuit, but um, it's really good to just kind of be one of few and kind of show that we're just as capable of fulfilling the role as well. I think it's tough if you don't see people in the role, then you almost don't believe that it's an opportunity. So I think it's if you're if it's something you're passionate about, um, definitely don't be afraid to stick with it and really kind of look to see where you can get to. Um, there's so many opportunities out there, um, not just for men or not even just in men's sport, in um, women's sport or disability sport or anything like that. Um, so I think if it's something you're passionate about, put your all into it, get as much experience as you can um, and don't be afraid to dream big or try and get to where you want to get to.
welcome to David E. Tweet. Uh, coming in here, looking at all the memorabilia and the uplift it's had, it looks fantastic. It's a great facility for you members to come and enjoy during the summer and have a wonderful time and watch Warwickshire win. I recall my time starting in Warwickshire. I was the age of 14 when I walked through the gates here at Edgbaston. Uh, over the years, it's been fantastic. I've been here a long time now and been associated with the club with Nineteen eighty uh, was the first success that Warwickshire had that I enjoyed. As part of the squad, I was on the Lord's ground staff, but still playing a lot of second team cricket for Warwickshire. Yeah and the guys here, David Brown and Bob Willis lifted the John Play League, which was absolutely fun. That's all the left. That... So just going forward from the 1980s, uh, 1980, I joined the staff in 1981, and our first success really winning a trophy was in 1989. And I recall uh, the semi-final here at Edgbaston, the packed house against Worcestershire, and it's the first the best thing about it was about 2,000 Worcestershire fans and the rest were ours. Uh, a great atmosphere and when we walked out it was fantastic. And even better was that we beat them by 100 runs. You couldn't have asked for any more. But then we went on and we won the 1989 NetWest final against Mike Gettings uh, Middlesex, which again uh, I was lucky enough to be there at the end and Neil Smith hit a magnificent six at the end in the last over and we got over the line uh, and won that game. 1994, we come to that magnificent year where we won three trophies, runners up in the last one. And then 1993 was the NetWest final, which I suppose everybody remembers me for. The 100 at Lords chasing 320 to win. And we did Dermot myself put a big partnership on. And to be honest, there's Members, every time I walk into the ground, still remember me for that day. But at the end of the day, it was a great day for Warwickshire and for all the members, because at half time we were 4-0 down, at full time we won 5-4. I've played and viewed cricket from many grounds over my years watching cricket, playing cricket. There isn't a ground better than Edgbaston to view your cricket from. You can go to any part of this lovely ground and you get a great view. Please count yourself lucky that you're associated with this fantastic club, fantastic ground where your viewing facility is better than any other in the country. Came back on tour, um, obviously really proud and really honoured to be asked to a, a great club like this, to, especially after only one season. Um, yeah, I was really pleased. Um, but yeah, built a really good relationship with Dave over the last over the last year I've been here, so I think we'll work well together. Um, but yeah, during tour got asked and was, was more than happy to accept. It wasn't really on my radar, purely due to the number of senior heads that we've got and some probably some of the other candidates and the leaders we've got in the squad. Um, but um, yeah, it's a really nice feeling to have been asked. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the most outgoing like that. I, I'm not the loudest in the change room, like you say, but um, I'm also, I feel like I'm not too shy in coming forward and I'll put my opinion across if I feel like something needs to be said. Um, so yeah, th there's obviously different ways of going about leading in, in parts, but obviously being a vice as well, it's a lot of it's going to be alongside Al and just supporting him really and some of the jobs that he may not have time to do or he needs a bit of help with. It, it's been great. I've, I've loved every minute of being here and it, it was a big change for me. It was a big move for me, but it's, I've, I've loved every minute, like I say, and I'm hoping to kick on this year with the cricket. I enjoyed the cricket last year and it, it went well, but I'd like to kick on and, and do even better this year and hopefully 
this sort of tag work that won't affect that and I can kick on like I say. Six again. What a shot that is. Easy as you like for Sam Hay. I think I've always been involved in sport and I've got a really sporty family. Um, my sister's a professional athlete, so I'd always kind of seen up close what elite sport looked like and what it took to get there. So I always knew I kind of wanted to go into sport, but not necessarily playing. Just went to Northampton University to do my undergrad in sports science. Finished my master's at Loughborough in about September 2021, and then saw this role come up probably just before I finished that. Applied for it, got offered the job, and have been here since. November 2021, coming up to my third season now. With my job, it's kind of split between the pathway and then the professional squad. Um, so the main part of my job is to lead the pathway, so Academy and EPP, and then oversee our county age group programme. But then I also work closely and support the professional squad as well. Particularly here, it's a really great group of people. So the biggest thing I'd enjoy is just coming into work every day and being around people that you want to spend time with and you want to work together with, whether it's players or staff. Um, I think in terms of my actual job, seeing players progress from a place where, particularly young players, where they didn't either enjoy the gym or kind of understand how it would help them, seeing them get to a point where they're really keen to do it and they can see exactly why they're doing it and how it's going to help their cricket, um, they're probably the biggest things. The boys have made me feel so included right from day dot. They don't see me as kind of any different to it being a male SSC. Um, so, yeah, I think if there's a couple of us within the men's circuit, but um, it's really good to just kind of be one of few and kind of show that we're just as capable of fulfilling the role as well. I think it's tough if you don't see people in the role, then you almost don't believe that it's an opportunity. So I think it's, if, you're, if it's something you're passionate about, um, definitely don't be afraid to stick with it and really kind of look to see where you can get to. Um, there's so many opportunities out there. Um, not just for men or not even just in men's sport, in um, women's sport or disability sport or anything like that. Um, so I think if it's something you're passionate about, put your all into it, get as much experience as you can um, and don't be afraid to dream big or try and get to where you want to get to. Side edge and dragged on, knocked him over. He's got it, Basto. More drama here against Basto. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's just snuck through. Runs the boundary. He's got the fight. My word, what a thump down the ground. Welcome to David E. Tweet. Uh, coming in here, looking at all the memorabilia and the uplift it's had, it looks fantastic. It's a great facility for you members to come and enjoy during the summer and have a wonderful time and watch Warwickshire win. I recall my time starting in Warwickshire. I was the age of 14 when I walked through the gates here at Edgbaston. 
Uh, over the years, it's been fantastic. I've been here a long time now and been associated with the club with a lot of success. And 1980 uh, was the first success that Warwickshire had that I enjoyed. As part of the squad, I was on the Lord's ground staff, but still playing a lot of second team cricket for Warwickshire. And the two guys here, David Brown and Bob Willis, lifted the John Player League, which was absolutely fantastic. And it gave us all the lift that future's gonna look good. So just going forward from the 1980s, uh, 1980, I joined the staff in 1981. And our first success really winning a trophy was in 1989. And I recall uh, the semi-final here at Edgbaston. It was a packed house against Worcestershire. And it's the first time uh, I appreciated how magnificent this stadium is to play in when its capacity is full. The best thing about it was about 2,000 Worcestershire fans and the rest were ours. Uh, a great atmosphere and when we walked out it was fantastic. And even better was that we beat them by 100 runs. You couldn't have asked for any more. But then we went on and we won the 1989 NetWest final against Mike Gettings uh, Middlesex which again uh, I was lucky enough to be there at the end and Neil Smith hit a magnificent six at the end in the last over and we got over the line uh, and won that game. 1994, we come to that magnificent year where we won three trophies, runners up in the last one. And then 1993 was the NetWest final, which I suppose everybody remembers me for. The 100 at Lords chasing 320 to win. And we did, Dermot myself, put a big partnership on. And to be honest, there's members every time I walk into the ground still remember me for that day. But at the end of the day, it was a great day for Warwickshire and for all the members, because at half time we were four nil down, at full time we won five four. I've played and viewed cricket from many grounds over my years watching cricket, playing cricket. There isn't a ground better than Edgbaston to view your cricket from. You can go to any part of this lovely ground and you get a great view. Please count yourself lucky that you're associated with this fantastic club, fantastic ground where your viewing facility is better than any other in the country. Came back on tour, um, obviously really proud and really honoured to be asked to a, a great club like this, to, especially after only one season. Um, yeah, I was really pleased. Um, but yeah, built a really good relationship with Davo over the last over the last year I've been here, so I think we'll work well together. Um, but yeah, during tour got asked and was, was more than happy to accept. It wasn't really on my radar, purely due to the number of senior heads that we've got and some probably some of the other candidates and leaders we've got in the squad. Um, but um, yeah, it's a really nice feeling to have been asked. Yeah, yeah, I'm not the most outgoing like that. I, I'm not the loudest in the change room, like you say, but um, I'm also, I feel like I'm not too shy in coming forward and I'll put my opinion across if I feel like something needs to be said. Um, so yeah, th there's obviously different ways of going about leading in, in parts, but obviously being advised as well, it's a lot of it's going to be alongside Al and just supporting him really and some of the jobs that he may not have time to do or he needs a bit of help with. It's been great. I've, I've loved every minute of being here and it was a big change for me. It was a big move for me, but it's, I've loved every minute, like I say, and I'm hoping to kick on this year with the cricket. I enjoyed the cricket last year and it, it went well, but I'd like to kick on and, and do even better this year. And hopefully this sort of tag won't affect that and I can kick on, like I say. again. What a shot that is. Easy as you like for Sam Heng. Hold it. Brilliant from Wokes. That is stunning.
I think I've always been involved in sport and I've got a really sporty family. Um, my sister's a professional athlete, so I'd always kind of seen up close what elite sport looked like and what it took to get there. So I always knew I kind of wanted to go in sport, but not necessarily playing. Just went to Northampton University to do my undergrad in sports science. Finished my master's at Loughborough in about September 2021, and then saw this role come up probably just before I finished that. Applied for it, got offered the job, and have been here since November 2021, coming up to my third season now. With my job, it's kind of split between the pathway and then the professional squad. Um, so the main part of my job is to lead the pathway, so Academy and EPP, and then oversee our county age group programme. But then I also work closely and support the professional squad as well. Particularly here, it's a really great group of people. So the biggest thing I'd enjoy is just coming into work every day and being around people that you want to spend time with and you want to work together with, whether it's players or staff. Um, I think in terms of my actual job, seeing players progress from a place where, particularly young players, where they didn't either enjoy the gym or kind of understand how it would help them, seeing them get to a point where they're really keen to do it and they can see exactly why they're doing it and how it's going to help their cricket. Um, they're probably the biggest things. The boys have made me feel so included right from day dot. They don't see me as kind of any different to it being a mayor less than see. Um, so yeah, I think if there's a couple of us within the men's circuit, but um, it's really good to just kind of be one of few and kind of show that we're just as capable of fulfilling the role as well. I think it's tough if you don't see people in the role, then you almost don't believe that it's an opportunity. So I think it's if you're if it's something you're passionate about, um, definitely don't be afraid to stick with it and really kind of look to see where you can get to. Um, there's so many opportunities out there, um, not just for men or not even just in men's sport, in um, women's sport, or disability sport or anything like that. Um, so I think if it's something you're passionate about, put your all into it, get as much experience as you can um, and don't be afraid to dream big or try and get to where you want to get to. Welcome to David Eatsworth, uh, coming in here, looking at all the memorabilia and the uplift it's had. It looks fantastic. It's a great facility for you members to come and enjoy during the summer and have a wonderful time and watch Warwickshire win. I recall my time starting in Warwickshire. I was the age of 14 when I walked through the gates here at Edgbaston. I was commentating on some very unusual stuff in New Jersey. Um, unusual cricket or just unusual stuff? Well, it was a mashup between cricket and baseball held, played in a warehouse in Jersey. A mashup between cricket and baseball? Yeah. Was yeah. it the 100? <laughs> no. Oh. No, it, uh, it's quite interesting. I don't know if you've heard of John Boy or seen John Boy's no. uh, stuff on social media. It goes viral quite often. He's an American who loves cricket and he does these explainers of things might be from oh. county cricket or test cricket, World Cup, whatever. And he, he, but he does it for an American audience, so he okay. uses some baseball terms. 
That's um, good. Yeah, it's fantastic. And he's invented this game called Ball in Play. Okay, well, ball is about to be in play here. <laughs> uh, here's Ed Barnard coming in from the Birmingham end to begin a new spell. And he bowls to Cashy Valley, who looked like he was a dab it down on his stumps. Barnard felt there was a bit of pad before bat. I don't think there was, looking at the pictures, but uh, nice little ball to warm up for the second session. 123 for one. Yeah, so so you came up with this game. It's a series of, of games they call the warehouse games that they're playing. So they've, so they've got a derivative of... of um, right. of ice hockey and they've got a derivative of baseball that all can be played in the warehouse and so ball in play was uh, what I was commentating on Barnard once more that's short and outside of stump is it sort of a version of indoor cricket no uh, well maybe a, a little bit it's more of a mashup so they they you would say pitch the ball rather than bowl it right um and they have instead of the the stumps behind the player, they have like a a square plate with a big round hole in the middle so, of so it. So a bit like a strike zone. Yes, a yeah. bit like a strike zone. Uh, but they run between wickets. Barnard sprints in back of a length, guided down towards third, but it's going to be blocked by deep backward square. Booth does the fielding. No I, run for Kashif. So they have two batters in at one time. Each team has four players, and they have two batters in at each time, and they run between right. wickets. And so, you know, they they, they had a, a f almost a form of, of uh, kind of LBW. They had wides. They had mm. runouts. They uh, it was all sorts. And the bat itself is a combination. It's like a baseball bat with one side flattened out a little bit. Once more, in comes Barnard, Ooh. and again, there's just a hint of the inside part of the bat from Cashy Valley. Slightly unsure start to the session from him, but he's already got 33 on the board. I feel like Barnard's rushing him a little bit, yeah. it looks like. So how many fielders in this game? Have, uh... So uh, there are three, and right. they have their version of a, of a wicketkeeper. Right. So one fielder behind this, this plate, if you like, the, yeah. the wicket. Um, and then you've got your thrower, and then you've got your other two two bowlers. And they have boundaries and sixes as well. On our bowls again, back of a length, left alone by Kashif. But it, so it was just fun because it, primarily they've got a big baseball audience. But yeah. then what they're doing is actually introducing some cricket terminology and okay. and thinking which was your into role. it. Yeah, which was why which was why I was there. Um, it was absolutely mental, but it was so much fun. It was incredible. I, it, it goes out on YouTube in May, um, and I can't wait to see it, but it was amazing fun. Ooh, we'll have a look. As Kashif Ali waits and again wants to steer it down towards third, but gets rather more on it. Goes in front of Square to Bethel, who's at point, and there's no run. Made an over from um, Ed Barnard, 123 for one. Does the ball bounce before it's hit, or is it no. full tosses? Yeah, it's full tosses. So it's so it's, it's it's more. It's sort of baseball it, pitching. It, it's indoor baseball with a bit of cricket scoring, really, by the sound of it. No, but because you don't have the the bases, the baseball. No, no, but you, you, they yeah, run between the, cricket, the wickets. Yeah, so that's the cricket scoring. You run between well, the yeah. wickets and hitting boundaries, but the rest of it is very baseball-y. Some of it, but some of the batting ended up being more because they because there are no fouls. Ooh. So you can hit 360 degrees, which obviously you can't do in baseball. Okay. So they were able to, and if it hit the back wall um, at a, b below a certain line, they got a boundary. Okay. So th there, there, were, there were various things. It, w it, was, it was very much a, an amalgamation yeah. of a load of different things. But essentially it was a lot of fun. And, uh, and you just found it interesting that, that they were so keen to introduce different concepts because even just running between the wickets is yeah. quite foreign um, when you think of it for a lot of US supporters. And of course, with the T20 World Cup in the US and Caribbean this year, it's a good time to interest them. Chris Rushworth from the members' end is in and, and it's defended off the front foot with a big stride by Roderick. It is at that end. So no run to start. They've got that silly, silly field. What did you call it? A, the traditional it's, 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 silly... It's a, it's a traditional silly mid-on. Mid-on, yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good 15, 16 yards from the bat. Yeah. Um, he's, it, it does mean that, uh, of course, Cashy Valley has to stand a bit wider as well as Rushworth comes in. He's over the wicket. Oh, that's really cramped him. It's come on him very quickly. Might have come back in a little mm, bit as a well. Bit. Yep. Sorry. Has. Sorry, you're sharing Was your monitor. Was there a crowd? 
for these uh, things. So they have, so it's it's indoors in this warehouse. So they have like uh, all the other team members and the various crew and stuff, and they make right. so much noise. There's a little bit of like, there's almost like a bit of a, a, a wrestling element to it in there. There are definite villains and, and okay. heroes, and they play up to it. It, it was it was just the, very, very fun. As Rushworth is in, that ball just pushed straight back at the bowler by Roderick. Rolls past him, but no run. So the uh, Melinda Farrell World Tour <laughs> stopped in at New York. Did? Where else did I go? I was in South Africa for the Under-19 Men's World Cup. Oh, yes. I remember hearing your voice at that. Wasn't a great one for England, I'm afraid, but was a very good one for Australia. Although there was a rather good one for, from the point of view of Warwickshire and Tazim Ali, the young spinner he who was, bowled beautifully. Taz Ali was yeah. absolutely outstanding. A couple of really good young spinners in that squad. As Rushworth in again, just defended out to the covers. Uh, yeah, Taz Ali was absolutely uh, outstanding, but so was Farhan Ahmed, Rehan mm. Ahmed's uh, brother. My goodness, 15 years old to have the amount of control that he had yeah. at that point. Uh, blimey, I was like, where are all these spinners coming from for England? Sprit, they're spitting out talented young spinners. They're very welcome. They might like the Kookaburra Ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, the seamers ain't been liking it much today no. as one of them, Rushworth, is in. And all oh, that time, the finger's gone up. They like this Warwickshire as it goes past the bat. But it all comes to nothing as the umpire remains resolutely unmoved. And I think the Bears agree with the decision. I think that's gone past the bat before Roderick's finished his shot, if anything. <laughs> and certainly when it was turned down, Chris Rushworth did not look shocked at all. Yeah, I think that's past him before he's, he, he flicks out at the very end. But I think that's gone beyond him. And you can see from what we see on the monitor now that, that Chris Rushworth just trudged back and thought, nah, it's OK. Yeah, he, he, he had half a... I think it, maybe he was appealing because he saw everyone else appealing. He appealed on the quality of the delivery. <laughs> it was a good one. He comes in once more. This time it goes to that traditional silly mid-on position that yeah. we discussed. And that's the end of the over from Chris, Chris Rushworth. And... It's 123 for one now, continuing their wonderful start to the season, Worcestershire. Roderick on 46, Kashif Ali on 33. It's been another abandonment for the day in Division 1. Kent and Somerset off for the day. So no play at Chester the Street, Canterbury or Old Trafford in Division 1. Uh, they're at lunch at Trent Bridge, Nottinghamshire against Essex. Essex 62 for two. As, uh, Barnard comes in now off the back foot. It's forced through the offside rather neatly by Kashi Valley. There is a fielder in the deep there, so there's just the single. In Division 2, off for the day at Derby, and, and looking at the pictures, uh, during the lunch interval, looking at the pictures, I would be surprised if they got on there tomorrow. They were abandoned effectively at 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, Sussex and Northlands, Yorkshire and Leicestershire, they are both still hoping to get on there. And at Lords, Glamorgan, 122 for one against Middlesex. Half centuries for Billy Root and Sam Northeast. In the IPL at three o'clock, Hyderabad against Chennai. Well, I'll give it a mensch. Barnard in. The bold and rushing uh, Roderick a little bit. Jabs down at a ball that was angling in towards his pads. And forces it out towards mid-wicket and Danny Briggs. Now, I've had some tweets in the morning. Now, I know it's called X now, but I refuse to call it that. So well, I've had some tweets. I, I mean, yeah, if you said I've had some X's, <laughs> then we're expecting stories that are altogether different. <laughs> well, that's probably uh, not yeah, for, no. uh, for, for BBC uh, on that, a that, Friday that, afternoon. That's over a drink in Harbour. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Barnard is in to bowl to Roderick forward and prods it back down the wicket up towards Hannon Dolby at mid-on. Um, now... So we were talking about the manly and Bondi, how in Australia oh, Bondi yeah. can be a nickname for someone who is not very, is manly. Not very manly. A long way from manly. A long way it? from manly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, Propster has tweeted saying there is a London equivalent. If someone is East Ham, they're one stop short of barking. That is good. <laughs> I love that. That is good. I love that. Oh, if you know any more of those, please tweet in. <laughs> That's outstanding. <laughs> Barnard, oh, he's gone past the outside edge. He was pushing at that. He was reaching for it, Roderick. And uh, he gets back into position. The outside of his glove suggests that did a little bit from Barnard. Good ball. 
Uh, Eddie Johnson had a very good suggestion for a P word, another P word, parsimonious. I like yeah, that. But we ha- we didn't see any parsimonial <laughs> overs in no. the in the pre prandial session. Oh, whoa. oh gosh, he's been he's been off looking <laughs> this up. <laughs> Barnard back of a length defended by Roderick, and there's no run. Just the one single since lunch in 17 deliveries. So it's been a parsimonious session. It so has far. now in the post prandial <laughs> session. So. <laughs> This is like an episode of Sesame Street now, where today's commentary is mainly being brought to you by the letter P and the number one. Uh, well, I've got yeah. another one for you. Okay, we'll see what Roderick does with this final delivery. The sun comes out again, and he pushes it out into the offside. Just the single off that over. Worcestershire consolidating. Very good session for them this morning, and they're keeping that second wicket partnership intact. 124 for one. Now, this is this one is, is kind of a, a compliment and then a bit of a sledge um, from okay. at Litchfield Wolfie. Is he sledging you or me? David, you, I think. Oh. Well, no, it says starts off saying you and Mr. Wilford are comedy gold, James Bondi. And then follows that up with for an old man, he does have classic comedy timing. You, don't, you never lose your timing. You lose your legs, but you never lose your timing. Unless he's talking about me and has confused me with an old man. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, that is a bit of a worry, but thanks for your comments. Rushworth, it is, continuing his spell, and the first ball's just pushed into the covers by Kashif Ali. No run. And the sun's really bright now. As I, I told you, full day's play. You didn't believe me. I didn't. I didn't no, I didn't disregard that. When I've turned up this morning, I was... Surprised to see how quickly the grand staff were working to try and get things ready for a, a timely start. I think it was a magnificent effort because it was certainly very damp. I only live a few miles down the road. and, and I mean, you wouldn't have been playing in my garden by <laughs> 11 o'clock, that's for sure. Well, that depends what facilities your garden has for the media. As Rushworth pulls out of his run-up, we saw that quite a few times from Oliver Hannon Dolby this morning from the other end. But I think this time it might have been the batter... Distracted by something? You could broadcast from the decking. Oh, that'll do. Yeah, you'd be, right, you'd, be, no, you'd be right on the decking. So this is a nice big backyard for backyard cricket. Uh, it was until we put the decking in. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined a good it's, outfield. It's, it's made it a little bit awkward, yeah. <laughs> I have to bowl on the diagonal now. <laughs> Rushworth, with that bustling run-up, comes in over the wicket and just tapped out into the covers by Kashif Ali. So it's there. And South Africa, where else? Uh, Nepal. I mean, you know, I always used to call it Nepal. Yeah. But in Nepal, they call it Nepal. So, uh, but, uh, so, so, it. so as long as when you go to France, that's what you come back ah, calling it. Ah, la France. No, Mais oui. The, yeah, but the point, the, the point being that you don't have to say it the same way as the locals necessarily. <laughs> I know. I just got used to it. I had to train Other, my brain uh, to uh, say it. Otherwise, I'd say you, you came back over from Straya. Yeah, that's how you should say it. That is it. In comes Rushworth. Again, just defended uh, to mid off this time. No run. Yeah, it's, it is Straya. Straya. I had to teach m- the American commentator that I was on with um, because he kept saying Australia, and I, I, I couldn't cope. It's only no, got two syllables. T- Straya. 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 Yeah. Straya. No, that's it. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, that's, that's, that's how it should be said. I'd be all right. Yeah, I'd be all right in Australia. If I, I know to start all my sentences with look. Or well. with an or in front of <laughs> yeah. an or look, in comes Rushworth. There's an edge, and that has gone into the hand and out. I think yeah. he actually dropped it. Rob Yates, isn't it? A slip. Slip. Such oh. a good slip fielder he's... normally, and that is. Uh, it's low, but it's nice. It's a nice height in a way, and that he's reaching to his right. And Rob Yates, nine times out of ten at least, would have taken that, and it would have been the end of Kashi Fali. And Rushworth was uh, was heading off in celebratory mode and then had to cut that short. Well, frustrating because the chances have been few and far between, shall we say. It w- wasn't an easy one by any means, uh, but it'll go down as a drop. As it should, the next ball is just pushed out to point by Roderick. So I have to note down, dropped on 46. How costly might that be? And how frustrating for Rushworth, Rushworth, who has toiled and toiled all morning, just looking for for some opening. 
and it's uh, not come there. Yeah, it was Kashif, wasn't it? It was put down on, th so it would have been 34. Ah, he moved Kashif. up to 35 with the uh, when they scored. Yes, my apologies. And then with a couple of drops from Mosley in the first session as well, as much as this Kookaburra ball has not done as much as a Duke would, the reality is they have had the chances to make better inroads into this Worcestershire top order of Warwickshire. Well, there have been times when... And again, I, I guess I'll put it, put it in there. What, what uh, effect the wind, the strong wind had, especially first thing this morning when it was howling around but that they didn't always do um, the job that they would want to do in defending that short boundary. No. And that there were a lot of runs leaked there, early doors. Barnard to continue from the Birmingham end. Big stride forward from Kashi Valley out to one of the uh, short fielders in in the offside. Just the one slip in place. There's a backward point. There's uh, another shorter point in front of square. Short extra cover. A man on the cover boundary and mid-off. So looking to bowl to a very much offside field. Mid on, mid wicket, and deep backward square leg, really, where Rushworth is and the fielders on the onside. So, Miss Chance is part of the tale of the day. The win that forced Hannah Dolby to abort his run up four times this morning as well. As Barnard again draws Cashy forward steadily, pushed up to Mosley in the offside. Interestingly, now that you've, you've brought up, or you did bring up the Bare and ragged staff, which I was very happy to hear about. Oh, that was that was you. That was you when you were talking to Phil. Earlier. Yeah, but yeah. you brought it up earlier, and which is why I wanted clarification on where it had come from. It's now blowing the opposite direction than it was blowing oh, the in flag. this morning. Yeah. Yes, the flag is completely going to our right now. On our back of a length, that's a nice looking cut shot from Kashif. It split the two fielders who weren't far apart, far apart, and it will go for four. And the uh, Outfield is at least quickening up with the uh, warmth and the sun. And that is the 50 partnership between Gareth Roderick and Kashif Ali. They've added 52 in just over 20 overs. Kashif has been the more aggressive of the two. He's on to 39 and uh, now they realise they've reached that landmark. They do the little fist bump. And Roderick jogs back to the non-striker's end. But that was a lovely shot from Kashif Ali. I think that's probably his best stroke of the day. Yeah, that was a, a beautiful shot from him. What did what did we say? Swashbuckly? Yeah, you, you, well, yes. You can take responsibility <laughs> for that particular word. As this is a straighter delivery in fuller and guided up towards mid-on. But he has got a lovely flourish to him, to his batting Kashif Ali. He's made a few sort of looser shots or risky shots, perhaps, but... Um, Overall, he's been he's, he's good to watch. Very, very elegant. Got a lot of potential. Mm. It really has. And this, this has been a, a mature innings. There have been a couple of false moments along the way, but it's not a problem as long as you just put them out of your mind and get on with it. They're sending square leg deep. See whether Barnard digs one into Cashy Valley. He doesn't. It's full outside off stump. Driven up towards Mosley. Goes through his hands. He then hobbles after the ball, Dan Mosley. Don't know what he's done to himself. Had a very busy franchise winter and a bit of England Lions and busy winter for Dan Mosley. Yeah, and I, I did I did check with him as well because I have heard his surname pronounced Mousley, but even by people at this club. Yeah, even by Ollie Hannon Dolby at his dinner last Thursday. Uh, and and I'd, he's actually it, confirmed it. He, he's Mosley. very very insistent that it's Mosley. He is, he is insistent because uh, his nickname's Danger Mouse, so I suppose that's why people want to say it. But he says it's Mosley, like the suburb. Danger Mose. <laughs> As uh, this ball on leg stump is uh, guided up towards mid on, and there's no run. 129 for one Worcestershire. Outstanding day from them so far. We welcome listeners to uh, Sports Extra as well. So one of three games currently underway. Uh, Worcestershire on their return to Division 1 cricket have been outstanding so far. They're 129 for 1. I'm Richard Wilford from BBC Radio WM. Alongside me, Melinda Farrell. Thank you very much. Yes, it has been absolutely outstanding for Worcestershire. Newly promoted up against the arch enemy in their neighbour, Warwickshire. And uh, it's been a wonderful start for them. Long way to go in the season, of course. But it'll do their confidence, the world of good, to have a start like this as Chris Rushworth continues from the members end and he's in 
to Roderick, who just strides forward, defends that one on the offside. No run. And, uh, yeah, it'll just, I think, give them a real lift because I just think everyone expects when teams are promoted, they're going to possibly labour at the, the bottom of the table. Mm. And, and it's, the question is, can they stay up? But uh, you've got two sides in Durham and, uh, and Worcestershire. I'm sure Durham have got a much uh, higher, loftier goals than just staying up. There's Rushworth is in. And that one just left well alone by Roderick. Of course, with Ben Stokes. And they're here soon, Durham, aren't they? Uh, next week, next week. That Durham are here. And then yeah. uh, I know Warwickshire the week after at Southampton because uh, I'm heading down that way. Uh, I'll be oh, you, you'll be excited to know I'll be back here with you next week. Oh, you'll be excited to know I'm not here in person. <laughs> so I, uh, uh, <laughs> you don't have to, to avoid me. To, 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 the impact on my life is so minimal. <laughs> well, I'd... In comes Rushworth is over the wicket and that one's just plotted to, to the leg side down towards mid on by Roderick. No run. Okay. Oh, and then, yes, and then going to Kidderminster for the first time. First time. I mean, I'll get there early if you're parking. Uh, but it's a don't, very, it's, it's don't a very drive over oh, okay. oh, it's not far from the station. Oh, the good. Ground. Yeah. Okay. I did. I drove past it um, a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, I've been there for a couple of social events. There's a lovely cricket club at Kidderminster. Oh. And uh, people will be very welcome for those uh, those matches. I'll be looking forward to it as in comes Rushworth. That's just flicked around down towards long leg. Fielder cleans it up, giving away one run, 130 for one. It's got one of my updates coming up, so uh, if I just hold the fort for a moment here. Update listeners to uh, BBC Radio WM and BBC CWR, who are hosting us this week. In a few moments' time. Maybe before Chris Rushworth gets this next ball in, we'll see. Worcestershire on 130 for one here. They're still batting very nicely indeed. Gareth Roderick on 47 and Kashif Ali 39 have put on the second half century partnership of the day. Having said that, Kashif was fortunate on 34. He nicked one from Chris Rusher through to first slip where Rob Yates put a chance down. Dan Mosley had got two chances that he put down in the morning session as well. The Bears have probably not made the most of what they could have done bowling first in these conditions. Worcestershire 130 for one. Richard Wilford at Edge. Bastard. So you are done. so good at that. Safely done. That was it vaguely made some sense. It always makes sense. I, I'm always very impressed. I couldn't do it as well as you. He could. No, definitely not. Russ Rushworthy gets into his run up, and that's a short ball pulled, pulled firmly, and it's. Oh, I think it's going to be four runs. Is it? There was a good attempting. Attempted a save in the outfield. I think they're going to give it as two. I, Are I, they? I, 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 like you, felt that Will Rhodes' legs may have been on the rope. Uh, that's what I thought at the as time. Well. But we'll see whether the replay demonstrates it. It's, it's going to go as two for now. 132 mm. for one. Uh, for those who joined us on Sports Extra to fill in with the uh, the major picture, I mean, astonishing that we started on time after all the rain in recent weeks and indeed heavy rain overnight. Warwickshire winning the to toss league. Cookerborough ball did not do a lot, but they did put down a couple of chances. Two low opportunities to Dan Mosley. Jake Libby looked in great order uh, up to the score of 38, and then he fell for a short ball from debutant South African Michael Booth. And... His top edge was caught in the deep by Danny Briggs falling forward. It was a very good take for him. He got two hands under the ball. Uh, Roderick, who started quickly, has just dug deep. He's on 47, and he's about to face Ed Barnard against his former candy, of course. And he just turns it towards mid-wicket, and it's picked up by Dan Mosley. Kashif Ali has been very positive, hasn't he, Mel, since mm. he came in? So we saw that this partnership has kept them going along nicely. 55 they've added. Uh, it's a... It, there have been times when hey, all the batters seem to get off. Certainly, Broderick got off to a motoring start early on. And so did Kashi Valley when he came out as well. But they've both sort of settled in as well. They haven't... Uh, so they've sort of varied the, the pacing of their innings. Barnard approaches once more, defended on the turn a little bit from Roderick. He was uh, almost square on by the time he defended it. 
but there wasn't a lot of pace about that from Barnard. And I don't mind that, and too, it's like they've they've timed their aggression quite well. They've taken on their shots, uh, when and taken on the bowlers when they've felt that there's been a time to do so. But they've also been happy to play defensively when they've needed to just rein things in a little bit. And the net result, 132 for one, you'd be happy with. Creative fields from the new Warwickshire captain, Alex Davis. They came in quite early. Is this off a thick outside edge? will squirt out to backward point where Booth picks up. So, I mean, just at the moment, you have a slip in place in Yates. Backward point, there's an extra cover and a mid-off. That's fairly orthodox, but there are two short mid-ons <laughs> and a more orthodox mid-on as well. You could say that one of them is a short mid-wicket as he just peels away with his hands in his pocket at the moment. But um, it's an old-school silly mid-on standing only a couple of yards in front of the non-striking batsman with his hands on his knees in a static fielding position as Barnard comes in off stump line pushing forward with a big stride is Roderick yeah, you've got those three fielders there with that uh, sort of silly mid mid on and then you've got sort of the short mid on um, or mid wicket I should say and then you've got the mid on there so they sort of form a triangle it's basically a little triangle of fielders in that pocket on the onside. It's, it is unusual. Mm. Bit of blue sky overhead at the moment, so some sunshine on play. Barnard, very straight, nudged back into the ground and back into his hands by Roderick, who then walks round behind the stumps in a rather pronounced arc. I must say, I think this is the nicest day since I've been back in the country. Oh, there were the, the day I went to, to, to the uh, Botanic Gardens was a nice morning and then got very cold. But this is this is about as good as it gets. They keep telling me it's a summer sport, you know. Yeah, yeah they, they keep telling me that we have yeah. summers. But on our back of a length, guided off his pads through to square leg. Danny Briggs does the fielding. Single off the final ball of the over. 133 for one of Worcestershire. Roderick closing in on his half century. He's on 48, and Cashy Valley 41. For, for those who don't come to Birmingham very often, there are there are lots of lovely green areas. I mean, oh, those yeah. who come to Edgebaston will be familiar with Cannon Hill Park, that's just, just away to our right. But the Botanical Gardens is not far from here, probably three quarters of a mile as the crow flies, and and it's just a beautiful, beautiful area. Um, I don't think they've still got the minor bird inside, have they? There used to be a minor bird no, there they've, for years. No, they've released or they've, they've sent all the birds to, to sort of specialist oh, care places. It's, okay. I think it's not not seen as the, the right thing anymore to have yeah. caged birds. So the, the birds are no longer there. They've been uh, honed elsewhere as Chris Rushworth, he continues his spell. That's an expansive drive, but it only goes straight to mid off off the bass of Roderick looked good yeah <laughs> didn't get any runs but hey there, there, there could be a photo from that one it, it was a good swing I mean it would look like a three wood off the first tee that was not it <laughs> there we go it was uh, have, they, have they still got the bonsai collection the oh I gardens? don't know I, I was with a friend who had two two small children so uh, we spent a lot of time in the uh, yeah. in the for their play area. Accident prevention for most of that. You've got two <laughs> young kids with you. <laughs> yes, it was like that. As Rushworth is in, it's defended straight back to the bowler. and Exaggerated fashion by Roderick. Twirls his bat. Uh, it's, yeah, but Birmingham has lots of really interesting things. I, I get interested in quirky things in Birmingham. Like, I love the Pen Museum. Okay, yeah. yeah this is, of course, it. the Pen is one of the... The things that was invented in Birmingham, along with a host of other things, the mass spectrometer, the pacemaker, the microwave, lots of things invented. The microwave? Yep. yep. In comes Rushworth. He's he's just defended out into the offside. The the electric kettle. Um, there's the skateboard. I think was invented here. Uh, as, uh, the, the, the I'm sure you're making some of this up now. I am so not making this up. There's okay. a the whole book. I've seen the, there's a no. book of things. One of the greatest things to come out of Birmingham is the Acme Thunderer. What's the Acme Thunderer? It's a whistle. Oh, yeah, the whistle's another one. Yeah, there yes. you go. That's, there's a huge list of things that were invented here. And in comes Rushworth. He wasn't invented here. He was invented in Durham. That ball is just defended to the offside. But the Penn Museum is <laughs> quite quirky uh, and, and quite interesting. So I like the Penn Museum. You have that sort of unbridled enthusiasm of somebody who lives in an adopted city and therefore can give it the hard sell. 
I feel like you've had friends visit and family visit and you've shown them round and you've you've given them the real hard sell on Birmingham. That's, oh, that's, that's I, impressive. I don't have to. I've taken them to the, the, the outdoor museum. In comes Rushworth. And that's just left alone outside the off stump. The 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 uh, black country L- black country living, living museum. museum. I've been I there mean, about I mean, four I, times. Well, well, see, now that's that's pleasing all audiences because that's in Worcestershire. Is Cause, that in Worcestershire? Because it's, it's in Dudley, isn't it? In the ah. in the foothills of Dudley Castle yes, Zoo. So, yes. Yeah. Well, I haven't been to the castle zoo, but uh, yeah, I've been to the outdoor living museum. Uh, mm. Very very good. You get very good fish and chips there. They are very good. You can do, go down the mine shaft. Yeah, I've done that as well. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, on the canal boat, legging it through the tunnels as Rushworth in and defended just straight back to the bowler. And that ends the over from Rushworth. So 133 for one now, Worcestershire, with Roderick still on 48, Kashif Ali on 41. So has anybody, anybody got the number for the West Midlands Metropolitan Mayor? Because <laughs> I think Andy Street needs to know here that we have somebody who can promote our... Region. Oh, really? so what else? I, oh, the other thing that's fascinating that I've been to here. Uh, so I love walking the canals, but right. uh, but near the canals, I think it's near. Oh, I can't remember the street. There's a place called Coffin Works. Yeah, okay. And it is. It's. It was a, a a factory where they made coffin furnishings. But all the... Oh, like, well, well, like the handles and that sort of thing. Yeah, and the insides and, and all the stuff. Oh, the sort of velvety. Okay. Yes. And they, uh, they've they prov- done it for royalty nice. um, as well. So, so royal funerals. Ed Barnard is in to <laughs> pull to start a new over. Cashy Valley defends it out to the offside. I'd, honestly, I really didn't know how little I knew about my own city. Yes. But so, so what's interesting about this is it, it's... From the Industrial Revolution, the factories essentially remain unchanged. Yeah. And so it's it's like this, this incredible just snapshot into how things worked in a factory probably, you know, 150 years ago, uh, up until recent times. I, I'm, I'm talking about coffins. I, I feel like I'm betraying myself. <laughs> this was Fuller outside off stump from Barnard. <laughs> Very watchfully once more, Kashif Ali. Dabs it away into the offside. Worcestershire determined to build on that good morning session. 133 for one. But it's not so much about the coffins. It's the fact that it's this incredible... It's not a replica. It's it's the actual factory. So it gives you an idea of what factories were actually like in in a place that was, you know, heart of the Industrial Revolution. That's very good. So, yes. Well, oh. you, you, know, you, you, know, you, you need to go to the Whistle Factory for much the same reason. That is very, very good. I didn't know there was a Whistle Factory. Yeah, well, where the Acme Thunder is, is oh. made. That's in the Jewelry Quarter, on the edge of the Jewelry Quarter. Oh, well, that's where the Penn Museum is. I've yeah. missed that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll set, set myself up for that. Yeah, and I mean, there was also a very special type of whistle that was made for the army, and when you heard it, it was never good news because it meant you were going over the top from the trenches. And it was not many oh, people came back from that. No. So, the, so those whistles were made in Birmingham as well. And just up the road in Walsall, that was the heart of the leather industry. So you've got leather museums up there. That's why, why Walsall Football Club are known as the Saddlers. So you've got all these industries. Oh. You see? Barnard to continue. There's a bit of a field movement. There's three close in on the offside now. He tries to puncture that, but it's just behind square and picked up by Michael Booth. But there's a, a short, very square point. A short cover and a short extra cover in a line of three. Again, Alex Davis is trying to find some sort of way to break through here. That's a very Ben Stokes field. Like it is, when, isn't it? when, yeah. yeah, in Test cricket, when nothing's happening, he's trying to force it. You've seen that sort of little straight line of fielders on the offside. Don't let the grass grow under your feet if you're captaining these days. This is driven <laughs> in the gap between two of them. <laughs> Dan Mosley and Danny Briggs look at each other. Alex Davis has to come round to do the fielding, and Kashif gets his 42nd run. 134 for one in the 39th over Worcestershire. On the opening day of the county championship season, one of just three games that are underway. Um, only two have survived at all in this top flight. Uh, Essex are 71 for two against Nottinghamshire at Trent Bridge. A wicket each for Pennington and Patterson. Dean Elgar, 31 not out. It's been quite quiet there since lunch. And uh, only one game underway in Division 2, although there has been another wicket there. As Roderick awaits Barnard. And does he get anything on that? No. For a moment, it looked like he was going to pull out one of those one-day shots and try and guide it down to third man. He showed the face of the bat, but it goes through untouched to Burgess. Um, Billy Root out for Glamorgan for 67. 
Now, 149 for two against Middlesex at Lords. A first Middlesex wicket for Henry Brooks, who joined the county from Warwickshire during the course of the winter. So, uh, second wicket of the day is down there. Oh, yeah, Phil's back. He sneaks in, doesn't he? He <laughs> sneaks in, does Phil. So, uh, he may jump in in a moment. As this is driven through the offside, well fielded by Barnard and his follow through. End of the over, you're gonna you're gonna go and take a break. Melinda is gonna take a break. Phil Britt from Warwickshire County Cricket Club is going to come back in. This is gonna be a slightly longer session, Mel, so if you want to come back sort of three ish without the time I'm doing my report. Yeah. And then there'll be uh, it's because uh, we are still twenty five overs away from T, so I think reasonably that's gonna take us a bit closer to four o'clock. And it otherwise would. Chris Rushworth is uh, going to continue. None for 29 from his uh, 10. As, uh, Phil will tell us all of the goss from the museum. Having said that, we now have such an insight into the various things available to see in Birmingham that we might nip out there at tea. Um, uh, first ball of Rushworth's over is defended by Cashy Valley out into the offside. Um, I said earlier you've got a new frontage to the museum which is at the back of the uh, Priory stand. Presumably you're going to have to move at some point soon if with the redevelopment. Oh, don't say that. Yeah, but I think <coughs> the new development is going to be dangerously close to where the museum is so situated. Ah. And health and safety wise, I'm not entirely sure whether we're going to be able to stay open or not. Kashif forward again. That was a Probably pull back his length to touch there, Chris Rushworth, but the bounce is not extravagant. The idea of moving at Richard does not fill me with great enthusiasm. No, to be fair, I've known you a long time, Phil. I remember last time you had to move the uh, stuff from the museum. You were um, you were not happy for a couple of months. Yeah, and I was 12 years younger. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah, we will see. 134 for one. Worcestershire making... Really good headway here with the bat. As again, Kashif Ali defence. It's interesting since lunch, relatively becalmed. It's it's like they realise they've got away to a good start here. And uh, maybe the message from Alan Richardson is, is, is don't waste the opportunity that you've been given. Yeah, just 11 runs in eight and a half overs, nine and a half overs since the uh, interval. It slowed down a little bit just before lunch as well, didn't it? They started just that breakneck speed they'd been going at just it slowed down a little but uh, they're consolidating what they've got Kashif again watchful pushes it out in towards the covers Alex Davis needs three touches with his left foot to get the ball under control all I'll say is when watching the cricket last week um, there was it certainly wasn't seeming around a lot and the batsman didn't seem to be having huge problems last week so the wick the wicket is obviously playing extremely well apologies if you uh, lost us for a while but we uh, should be back with you now as chris rushworth comes in the bowl you uh, won't have missed anything as the ball is clipped round the corner and down for a single down to long leg 134 for one we had a lot of people in lunchtime they expected to because nearly all the people who are watching the cricket on the Birmingham side are located in fairly close proximity to where the uh, the museum is located. So, oh yeah, of course, works, yeah. yeah, it works quite well that way. You get a little bit of uh, footfall. Yep. Rushworth in again, and that one has uh, jagged back a touch at Roderick, who will come back for a second to complete his fifty here. That's a good half century from Gareth Roderick, who. Got off to a flying start. He got to sort of 18, 20 in his first 10 deliveries or so. And since then has become considerably more watchful to build in innings. It's the 37th half century of his first class career. It's been a very well compiled knock. He is on 50. And Worcestershire 137 for one at the end of the 40th over. And well deserved. He's batted very well indeed. He started off like a rocket, him and Jack Libby. And... Uh I mean, despite slowing down a little, he's really put Worcestershire in super position on, on the opening day. As Alex Davis continues to strive to find a way of uh, 
breaking what's becoming another annoying partnership. The opening partnership worth 77. This one's added 60. So good, two good openings uh, partnerships at the beginning of this Worcestershire innings. Remember, they were put in by Warwickshire. Uh, Ed Barnard from the uh, Birmingham end. He's on his way in and bowls. And back goes Cashy Black Ali and uh, tries to cut that ball away square on the offside, but uh, uh, goes past the uh, the bat and through to the keeper. Just one slip in place now, but Warwick should have got a point in place and two short extra covers for the uppish drive. So they must have uh, got a plan going. As Barnard again turns and is in and bowls. And this one is fended into the onside. Barnard comes running across to field up his own bowling. But uh, in the end, he leaves it for Hannon Dolby to pick up. And there's no run. Very interesting how uh, batters dominated ball. Especially this early in the season, you are used to seeing the ball being in control, but uh, it's definitely not today so far. In he comes again, Barnard, bowls, and this was fended away out to just in front of cover point. Bethel does the fielding, comes jogging in, and uh, just picks it up clean. He threatens to give it to Dan, Mos Dan Mosley, but uh, in the end he tosses it up to his skipper at mid off and there's no run hands the ball back to Ed Barnard so Warwickshire have used six bowlers so far uh, just the one with any success that's Michael Booth we've got the only wicket to fall as Barnard comes in and bowls and this is played away playing away with, well away from his body but uh, confidently out into the offside Keshi Valley and there's no run Davis now having a chat with the umpires. Martin Saggers and um, Glenn Lloyd are uh, two umpires. And match referee is bid such as Barnard comes in again and bowls from that Birmingham end. This time it's cut away to deep backward point uh, where Booth does the fielding and again restricts to the uh, to just a dot ball so you've been finding out about all the things which are produced in Brum yeah I mean I knew some of them but I think it's it's really striking I think wherever you are in the country that yep. when, when somebody who moves into the area as, as, as Melinda has from Australia speaks with such passion and enthusiasm about things that we get you know, that we're used to them aren't we yeah Bonnard in bowls and he just runs this one away again adding to one of those two fielders in the short extra cover position this time it's Mosley who does the fielding end of the over 137 for one Roderick's got his 50 and 43 to Ali sometimes you know there are things near you or around you that you don't even notice so it's only because of um, thing, events at Birmingham City Football Club recently that I've spent a bit more time on Henley and Arden High Street. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no, no idea what was there. Yeah. And, and what an interesting place it is. Yeah. The, the ice cream shop. Have you been oh. to the castle? No. Ah, the castle behind the high street. Okay. It's not, there's no, I think there's a little bit of rubble left, but but it's mostly the... It's uh, a bit like Wheelie Castle then. It's no, no, moment. it's not as big, no, it's... Not as grand as that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wheelie Castle is, is, there's quite a lot to look at, but... Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a full day over it. No, but there's, there's a lot more there than there is at, uh, at Henley Castle. 137 for one, Worcestershire. Right, are you, are you, are you, listeners from uh, BBC Hereford and Worcester who follow the county, you'll, some of them will be aware. There's a, a while ago now, I had a year working at BBC Hereford and Worcester presenting a show there and uh, and got to know a lot about the city and enjoyed finding out uh, the various merits of the curry establishments down the tithing for instance <laughs> did you get into Hereford much? no no 
I was having to present from Worcester, so it was... Uh, uh, no, uh, because it's Hereford and Worcester, I just wonder how much time was actually spent in Hereford. Uh, well, uh, tremendous reporters who said stuff from there, and certainly did at the time. As uh, Michael Booth is coming on for his second county championship spell of his career, he took a wicket earlier, the only one that's fallen today. And uh, he certainly enjoyed that moment when he extricated Jake Libby. Floodlights have been put on now, which is interesting. Mm. Um, it, it is a little bit darker, but they've gone very quickly to the floodlights. But it does make you wonder whether there might be a patch of weather that might just hit us and interrupt us. Although the forecast for this afternoon was better than the forecast for this morning. So having got this far, it would be a shame to lose any time. As uh, Roderick guides the ball out into the offside to uh, extra cover. There's no point. Just uh, dragging it back in his length a bit there was Booth. No real suggestion on the forecast that we're going to see any rain between now and the close of play. Which, uh, we're on schedule to finish around half past six, I think. So considering we've only seen one over of spin, the yeah, over rate, it, it's not, it's not reasonable, disastrous. It? No. Reasonable. I've seen worse. Boo then. And that just turns Roderick around. The one flaw in Roderick's game, and, and I don't think since the uh, new ball lost its shine. I don't think there's enough pace in the wicket to cause him too many problems, but he does get a little bit front-on defensively from time to time. Partly because he starts from a slightly open stance, and on occasion he just opens out that a little bit further, and almost like he's playing French cricket when he defends it. Those were the days. <laughs> French cricket in the back garden, as it goes dark and he can't quite see the tennis ball. This is very full. Might have struck him on the boot, or did he just get a bit of Bat on that down the long leg. I think it must have been Bat. That'll be another single to Roderick. 51 for him. 139 for one. Booth is not reluctant to pop a, a Yorker in. No. He uses that well. But that was very well played by Roderick. Just uh, got right over the top of it and just worked it away. Used the pace and just turned it down. The way, the way he bowls a Yorker reminds me a little bit of uh, Michael Edmund. The... Australian born seamer had a couple of years here who could be very effective in white ball cricket. Just back of a length, pushing it forward and out into the offside is Cashy Fowl. It is no run. I remember him bowling, I think it was one of the seasons where it was 45 overs, a reason that nobody fully explained. Um, the one day league. I, I, I seem to remember him bowling effectively nine overs of Yorkers. And he, he took a couple of wickets, didn't go for very many runs, and, and he was quite good at doing that. No real pace about him. He'd bustle in, though. Did he play any first-team cricket, first-class first, first class cricket? Or was it all white ball cricket? He, he, he may have played one or two. I'll have to look it up. Back of a length Shouldn't again, that. and that's a, a good stop low to his right there. I think Dan Mosley in that position it is. Prevents it squeezing through between the other two fielders on the offside towards the boundary. End of the over, 138 for one. That was a, a tidy enough return to the attack from Michael Booth. I think we're going to see Oliver Hannon Dolby coming back into the attack. It's from the Birmingham end. It struggled this morning from this end. It, uh, the wind kept blowing and uh, disturbing him on his approach to the uh, crate, to the crease, to the delivery stride. But uh, he's going to have another go. He bowled another spell from the pavilion end. But, uh, most unlike Hannon Dolby, like in the way today, he didn't really look threatening at all. I don't know where I got the Australian link with Michael Edmund. Cause I, I knew he'd played for Cumbria, and he was a Cumbrian. He was from Barrow in Furness. But no, it's not Australian link with him at all, according to this. He did play eight first-class matches. Yeah, it wasn't many, I knew. Yeah, but he wasn't here that long, was he? Seven wickets at an average of 53. 138 runs at just under 20. Did rather better in the one-day game. And Dolby is in for his first ball of his third spell of the innings. And the first delivery... Is played by Roderick away to backward point where Barnard does the fielding and there's no run. His 14 wickets in List A games came at just 19.57. So uh, I should know this because I, I um, archived a file, his file during the winter. So I went to all the letters and so I should know more about him. This next one is driven a little uppishly, but straight up to Davis. A, a deepish mid-off. He's given himself an extra five or six yards, and, uh, but straight at him. But, uh, well struck. 
stays on 138 for one. 51, Roderick. They don't expect you to memorise everything you archive, do they? Well, no, but you, when you're going through it, because you're reading it through to see, do you want to keep that piece of paper, or is it something which is just, you know, thank you for your letter thanking me, sort of thing. This next one is clipped away in the air, and that, uh, no, there was a little bit of excitement, but uh, it was a tumbling dive by Briggs at uh, mid-wicket, but uh, in the end, the ball bounced down in front of him, and... Uh, but that's exactly the sort of shot they're trying to get him to play. Yes, in, absolutely. <coughs> to be fair, that, that, that was the, the two mid-wickets there. That, that's the trap that they're yep. setting for Roderick. And it nearly came off. Very close. It just dropped down in front. But, uh, anyway, he gets away with that one. And Dolby turns and comes in, running in again and bowls. And uh, this time Roderick's forward to it with dropping the back ball down in front of him, just taking hand off the bat and just... Uh, Allowing the ball to drop down harmlessly into the on side. At 138 for what it remains. No, but you go through, and so when you're reading it through, you tend to, to remember not everything, for obviously, but uh, quite a bit about people. That's one of the things we've had, we've been very fortunate this winter that um, had three or four volunteers who've been very, very helpful. This next one is turned just square on the onside and allowing Roderick to get through comfortably for a single, taking him on to <coughs> 52 and Worcestershire on to 139 for one. It's amazing how fast the winter's gone, actually, from the, the work we've had to do. It's kept you busy. It has, yeah. It's been... It's been uh, Good, and uh, we've been able to cover an awful lot. Very grateful to the people who come in every week without fail, and uh, they work all day for absolutely nothing other than the, the love of being able to do it. Hannah Dolby in bowls, and this is pushed up to Davis a bit off. End of Hannah Dolby's first over back. That was a better over from Hannah Dolby. Probably, I would say that's probably as good as overs. He's bowled today. Um, yeah more controlled and much more like him so uh, it's a lot more comfortable didn't yeah, it yeah he did see i've been very busy this winter doing lots of data files and records and keeping right up to date just to keep track with who the latest birmingham city <laughs> manager is so you know it's it's very similar it's you, very similar you've met a few this winter haven't you? yeah i mean i mean six different people have taken charge of them this season yeah. and, and we've had seven different people give pre-match interviews so it's it's been lively Sadly, only one consistency through most of it. Here's Booth the bowl, and that one uh, bounced a little bit more than Roderick imagined. And he jabs down and tries to keep his gloves above it. Quick shout of no. There's no run on there. So, are you at the football tomorrow? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Leicester City tomorrow. Oh, I was in Leicester last night for the basketball. Ah. Watching the Riders get beaten again by... Bristol. Every time I go, they lose. I think they're probably going to pay me to stay away. Full of ball, trying to guide it behind, sort of squarer than he did there, is Roderick. Instead, he uh, finds Danny Briggs in extra cover. And there's no run. It has been remarkably becalmed progress <laughs> <laughs> since uh, the interval. 55 minutes, just 16 runs have been added. Yes, in total contrast, isn't it? Yeah. But they're in a strong position, that's the thing. Yeah. They are in a strong position, but they haven't run away with it. One or two of the darker clouds that have passed over us recently may actually be shedding some rain elsewhere, but they've gone beyond us. As uh, this next full ball is turned on the bounce towards Dan Mosley, who rolls to his right in order to gather just, just a hint of a bit of rain towards the north of the city on the clouds that have gone past us. We've got such a panoramic view of the Birmingham skyline here. I was trying to work out whether there were more cranes on in view now than there were. We had a huge number last year, but it does seem to be a real cluster built up yeah. right in front of us. You're going to cause me to do one of my crane counts. In yeah, I reckon. I, I reckon something like about. I reckon a dozen or thirteen. Well, th that's kind of where we were last year. It looks busier though to yeah. me. You're you're right. Booth short of a length, reaching for it and cutting the ball for four. Here's Roderick, and that was uh, 
help your self-delivery to some extent. All he had to do was make sure he didn't put it into the hands of Barnard, and he's dispatched it very effectively as Roderick. He's to 56, 143 for one. During the next over, I'll do my first sort of tentative count of cranes. We haven't got one to our left when the building site was uh, almost within the uh, confines or footprint yeah. of the ground. That's, uh, that work's been finished now. So this is full onto the pads of Roderick. Comfortable single round the corner to Hannon Dolby at long leg. 144 for one. One for 38, Boo, then his seventh. It's not an easy sort, though, Richard, with those... Uh, there's a the number which are sort of crossing over each other on those quite yeah. side. So best of luck with your count. That's why it's tentative. Yeah. You know, definitive takes three or four counts done. And there's a few at the back where you can just see them poking up over the top of yes. the uh, tall building. And the one, it's a sort of one that sort of terracotta flanks that you yeah. can see a couple. Turned into a vacant mid-wicket this next delivery by Kashif Ali. They run the first one hard. Should be able to come back for two, and it's a very wet patch that Will Rose just watches the ball kind of wobble to a halt. And they will come through for two. So expensive few deliveries at the end of that over. Kashif Ali, 45. Roderick, 57. These two have now added 69 for the second Worcestershire wicket. And they uh, continue to be well placed on 146 for one on the opening day of the new county championship season at Edgebaston. And Dolby will continue the sheets which form the sight screen up there behind him, billowing away on this strong breeze which continues to pull at the Warwickshire flag, which is uh, down to our right. It's uh, really being pulled off the flagpole as Hannon Dolby comes in and bowls. And this one sees Roderick go up on his toes and just run down to backward point where Barnard does the fielding. Just opened the face and ran it down. And, uh, defensively plays it out stays on 146 for one floodlights still on although the sun now comes out as it the clouds being blown across very quickly that uh, the sun briefly out as Hannah Dolby runs towards us and bowls and this again has Roderick playing it sort of from the crease just uh, standing and let it, almost letting the ball hit the bat and running it away rather than playing bat to ball. Just runs it away into the offside. <coughs> I've, I've got my first offer on the number of, cr of uh, cranes currently visible from this end of the 15, ground. I, reckon. I can find 17. Oh, right. That's, a, that's good. 17. is That's more than we saw last that's year. That's a high number, yeah. Hannah Dolby in, bowls, and uh, that turns Roderick a bit square on, and he plays it out into the onside, but again, very safely and very confidently. What do we say every year? Uh, City of Birmingham, it'd be lovely when it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a lot of redevelopment going on, which uh, generally you would fancy would be healthy for the economy, you'd hope it would be. I think it always turns out quite that way, but yeah, it's uh, quite a bit still to do with uh, HS2, isn't it? This one is left totally through to the keeper, no shot offered. But th this yeah. sort of area across where those cranes are gathered, is I'm just going to bite my tongue for a second. Hold on. No, I don't think I'm meant to pass comment. Oh, <laughs> I'll stitch the cricket for now. I can have an opinion about what's going on out there. No, I just wonder whether they were the cranes. Well, no, your opinion on HS2 didn't make... Wasn't no, what no, it was I just, no. It was just, just whether the cranes were building it. <laughs> As Hannah Dolby comes in and bowls and run away into the offside and there's no run. Like it or not, one of the incredible things which I've seen is some of the archaeology for whether you, you might be for all the wrong reasons, which has been discovered though, where they've been putting it through mosaics and all sorts, which are incredible finds. There we go. <laughs> all to do with progress, they say. It is, yeah. Yeah. 
Was it? You can get to London in an hour and 12 minutes from yeah. from Wall Street, can't you? Yeah, it's, currently. Save you, it's going to save you six minutes or something like yeah. that. And comes Han and Dobby's driven up to mid on, and of Han and Dolby's over. And again, nice tight over from Han and Dolby. So 146 for one. Roderick's on 57. And uh, Ali is on 46, that is, 45. We have a twelfth man coming on, Chris Benjamin, who's coming on to do some fielding. And Will Rhodes has trudged off for the time being. Fans will be hoping there's nothing too much of a problem for Will, because I think he'll be needed to bowl before too long. Benjamin, who would have been a close call for selection for this match once uh, Sam Hain became unavailable. Yeah, it's uh, it must have been between him and Jacob Bethel. Yeah, I think so. Because I'm just looking at the way they've sort of put the team out, and Bethel, if taking notes of it, is quite well down the batting order. First ball, a new over from Booth is defending into the leg side. There's no run. Well, he's low down the batting order on the official scorecard, is he? Well, he wasn't on the official one. Oh, he okay. Wasn't, yeah, he wasn't. So, he so, but w what <laughs> they what they what they what they put out on the uh, social media site, formerly known as, and also on Instagram, um, they, they actually had him batting at about five. So, okay. I suspect that will probably will be. He may well bat in the top six. Well, with Ed Barnard and Michael Burgess, there's a bit of room for manoeuvre there. There's Booth bowls onto the pads of uh, Kashif Ali. Just guides it down to long leg for a single. It gives him a very good opportunity very early on to be able to actually make an impression, doesn't it? Um, well, he started last season, Bethel, and then he picked up the back injury yeah. that that, um, that prevented him from bowling. Very rare to see him and Briggs in the same eleven, but if he's playing especially his special bat, especially on the opening day of the season, well, <laughs> yeah, well, the Cookerborough factor may well play a part in that. Of course, as Booth loses his run up, it's been a story of the day, hasn't it? Yeah. The other quirk is that you have a, a section of the Warwickshire scorecard that reads Bethel, Barnard, Burgess, Briggs, Booth, the V men. Yeah, yeah. Worcestershire with uh, Rob Jones, Adam Hose, Brett Dolivera still to come. Jason Holder, Matthew Wade, uh, Matthew Wade, Matthew Waite, full all-rounders. Nathan Smith can bat. Joe Leach, a bit strong for a 10. As, uh, forward in defence there is Roger. It's a long batting order, is this for Worcestershire. And to have a platform like this at 147 for one, they're going to be seriously pleased with this. And, you know, look at the period to go still till T. 18 and a half overs till T, which would be, you know, close on four o'clock. If these two can get close to or beyond the T interval. And they're set up to try and get a big score. The, the question that all county coaches have about this Cookerborough ball, ball is just how big runs are going to be scored. Uh, whether, whether you do end up with a bunch of 500 for four declares, because <coughs> nobody really wants that no, that'd in be. an ideal world. That could negate it too much, couldn't it? It would have the, the wrong effect. And the doors to the boxes on the... Uh, Priory stand is open, which is rare, but look at it, or is that a black screen? I thought it was an open door. It's hard to say. It might be an open door. You don't very often see anybody in that area during a championship game. You used to, some years ago. It's turning the ball towards short mid-wicket. Here's Roderick. There's no run. 147 for one. I haven't seen any of the coats coming off yet, although the sun's out over there. They must be starting to warm up a bit on the uh, on the seat stand in front of the David Heath suite. Well, but perhaps not enough yet to take off the top layer. Castanera clout till May is out, isn't it? This is full and uh, pushing forward. It's uh, nudged up towards Bethel, who comes across from Silly Mid on. To pick up, 46 to Kashif, 57 to Roderick, 147 for one. Uh, Worcestershire and the floodlights have been switched off again. So so that's good if they've done away with this habit where it used to be that if you put the floodlights on, they were meant to stay on, which seemed a nonsense because right now the light is beautiful, perfect yep. for cricket. Will Rhodes is restored to the field and off trudges Chris Benjamin. Probably something to do with the fact the electric's got so expensive that they've uh, 
They've yeah. made a change in policy. Although the theory, part of the theory is that it's uh, more expensive to switch them on and switch off. Them on, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, there will be some play at Hove today. Sussex and Northants have now tossed. And Sussex have won that toss and will field against Northamptonshire. So uh, good to see that play is going to happen now. And Dolby starts a new over and this ball is played firmly up to mid-off to Davis. And there's no run. Cashy Valley, who's on 46. And, uh, Roderick is on 57. So these two well set. 147, they've added 70 for this second wicket to go with the 77 partnership for the opening wicket. Libby and Roderick as Alan Dolby starts to run in and then breaks off yeah. as the wind catches him. Look, it's actually bending the flagpole at the moment, the the, Brent, the, uh, the wind. Well, it almost took the umpire's hat off at the same time. He just rescued it. Alan Dolby had stopped, but the hat almost flew off the umpire and probably would have caused Alan Dolby to stop anyway. He Starts again on his way in. Bowls. This one is cut away for four. Between a uh, couple of points and backward points. Found the gap beautifully. And that has brought up Cassie Valley's 50. He moves exactly to 50. It's come off 92 deliveries. And Aaron behind us uh, pushes forward a stat. That's his fourth half century in first class cricket. Only passed 50 once last season in the county championship. So, uh, great start to the season for him. And it was a lovely shot to, to bring up his 50. It's the second time he's played that nice back cut. Was it against York, Yorkshire? Yes, it was. Yeah, against Yorkshire. He got 90-odd, didn't he? And Dolby in. This is driven. Driven nicely up to uh, Davis at uh, mid-off for Miss Fields. And they scamper through for a single. So, the skipper can have a really crossword with himself there as he walks back give the ball to Hannon Dolby it's extraordinary 434 for 5 for the uh, three teams that are batting today all having been put in uh, and, and it will it will continue the debate about the Kookaburra ball um, 112 for 2 Essex against Knotts in 30 overs Algar 59 not ahead Hannon Dolby in bowls and it turns to mid wicket, there's no run. Glamorgan 175 for two against Middlesex at Lords. North East 84 not out. Um, Kieran Carlson with him has 18. It was a half century for Billy Root. A wicket each for Ethan Bamber and Henry Brooks. It's, um, it's not been a day for the bowlers, and the bowlers suffer enough over the course of a county summer, don't they? Yep. Without uh, the chairman of selectors or whatever his official title is deciding that you. Uh, Need to negate the impact of seam bowling by using this ball. In bowls, driven, driven nicely in the gap between the stumps and mid on. Been chased up to the fence. Now they'll come back. Uh, no, they won't come for a third. They've signed for two. So Roderick gets two more. And Worcester should move on to 154 for one. Seven off this over from Oliver Hannon Dolby. And it takes the partnership to 77, which was exactly the same as uh, the first wicket put on. That's Hannon Dolby in bright sunshine now. Beautiful overhead, blue sky, sunshine. And Dolby in bowls, and the ball goes it's left through to the keeper. End of another over. The 47th over of the innings. And... Worcestershire are 154 for one and not looking really to be in any trouble at all. For those who haven't followed the story, by the way, of the Kookaburra ball, the rationale from Rob Key is that it will better prepare England cricketers when they play in Australia in any country that uses a Kookaburra ball. Now, it'd be for a start interesting to know what percentage of players playing county cricket this week are going to play in an Ashes series any time soon. Because there are a lot of international cricketers out there. And also, the, the merit of playing more than a quarter of your county championship season using a different ball for that reason. 
Hmm. It's first ball of a new over from Booth. Top-edged pull from Kashi Valley, but it goes well behind square. Although there were cries of catch, it's a long way down there to Ollie Hannah Dolby, so they'll come through for a single 155 for one. The wisdom's lost on me, Phil, let yep. me tell you. Well, I, just looking at this game, there isn't one, with great respect to them all as individuals, there isn't one bowler here who's going to like to be playing for England. No. And, and I don't know. I, mean, I, think and I wouldn't think if you go around the counties, there are too many England bowlers who are going to be playing. As this is fuller from Booth, pushing forward defensively is Roderick, and there's no run. It's like the argument which says, let's play the first round of the county championship in Abu Dhabi or somewhere to get used to overseas. Who, who of those players is ever going to play for England in <coughs> in India or Pakistan? They're not. No. So it, 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 sometimes you have to question what, well, what planet the decisions are being made on. Booth loses his run-up this time. I don't think that's necessarily wind-related. He uh, got into a bit of a soft shoe shuffle part of his way to the crease. Never quite regathered himself, so I thought, I'll have another go at that. Not a problem. County Championship debut for Booth. He won't actually care what make of manufacturer <laughs> of the ball is. He's taken a wicket with it. And he's in. Back of a length, guided out into the offside. There isn't anybody short in at point, so Danny Briggs has to come across from cover. And another single to Roderick, which takes him to 60. 156 for one. And maybe it's just a, another sign of quite where the ECB value county championship cricket. And yet, at its core, there is no better breeding ground for professional cricketers. For learning the core skills, for playing consistently, getting games under your belt. Pitched up by Booth, dabbed down into the offside by Cashy Valley. This partnership now is uh, the larger of the two, 79 added by these two after Jake Libby put on 77 for the first wicket with Roderick before departing for 38. Caught just in from the boundary by Danny Briggs off Booth. Well, this season is the 68th season I will have watched county cricket. And the amount of tinkering which has taken place in all those years is unbelievable. Booth, again, full outside off stump. They thought about a quick single there as it was pushed towards point. He's back in now. It's uh, Barnard. And again, no run. And the number of ideas which have come and have been... Oh, I've got to do this, got to do that, do the other, and just dropped. Remember uncovered wickets, the return of. That didn't last long, did it? <laughs> no. No. It's uh, quite one of balance needs to be skewed further towards batsmen. Obviously, it's another bit of a mystery. Is uh, Again, forward is Cashy Valley out to the offside, and there's no run. Uh, Mel will be back with us in 10 minutes after I've got my next report done. She's uh, she's in the wings at the moment. She's kind of limbering up a little bit at the moment. She's uh, she nipped down to the Penn Museum and let's see what else Birmingham's made. She did. She did. I'm sure, I'm sure she's been to the chocolate factory. Haven't you? She's never been. She's never been to the chocolate. She know. Well, she needs to visit that. Yeah. Only Hannah Dolby uh, trudging back into position. It, it's a quiet afternoon and the crowd. Uh, I, I, we haven't had a, sort of one of those yelps of you bears. Well, <coughs> no. You know, when, when when things aren't going their way, we haven't had a shout of you pears either. It's, uh, there was a very there was a, a smug contentedness about the Worcester supporters. At, That's not at unreasonable. Two, at lunchtime. They didn't say anything, didn't crow, but they just had a very self-satisfied look. Hannah Dolby is in, bowls, and forward comes Roderick, just pushes it back up the wicket. Hannah Dolby fills up his own bowling. Worcestershire people I've been speaking to over the course of the winter, a lot of them were downplaying 
their prospects in this division. But you get two good overseas, and I know Jason Holder's only here for a short period of time. But real interest to see how Nathan Smith turns out. Rob Jones, I think, a really good pickup for them from Lancashire. Adam Hose, we know his capability, and he's been given a more consistent opportunity to play first class cricket, and that will only benefit from him. Let's hand off again, Ian. Again, forward comes Roderick and just defensively plays it uh, past Hannah Dolby, but uh, again, purely defensively. You've got the potential of Kashif uh, We know Jake Libby can score runs in Division 1. Gareth Roderick making runs today is a real bonus. It sets him off yep. in the right direction this season. D'Oliveira is perfectly capable at this level. Um, Waite has played plenty of First Division cricket. So, you know, Tom Taylor to add, who's played yep. First Division for, for North Ants the last couple of years. Again, defended by Roderick, and again a dot ball. No, I think they've got uh, they've got a pretty well balanced side they they put together. They, they look stronger than the North Ant side that had two years in Division mm. One. Uh, I think they look stronger than the Gloucestershire side that struggled. They've got more First Division experience about them. Their production line in, in the seam bowling department has been excellent in recent years. They've got a good young spinner who may not be needed this week, might not be involved this week, but they've got a good young spinner in Baker. And Dolby fills this next one with his left boot and uh, it goes out to Bethel, who's at uh, mid on. So there's no reason why they can't equip themselves pretty well <coughs> in this division. And, and okay. Both sides have probably come out of this potentially in, in looking at what's going on around the country. A lot of teams will talk about this ball and maybe we'll shut up for about it for now. But this is a good way of betting in the way they've performed today. This next one is flicked away nicely down to deep backward square leg just off his heels. Uh, it's a short boundary down there. So there's a couple of guys deep on just behind square on the, on the onside. And one of those saves the single. Worcestershire move on to 157 for one. Because they, they batted at a much higher tempo this morning, but the Bears didn't do the best job of protecting the short boundary. They also found real difficulty with the, with the breeze, the gusty wind in the first hour that, that knocked Hannon Dolby out of his rhythm straight away. And then they've come out and consolidated this afternoon. There's nothing wrong with that. It's day one of a four-day game. It's good cricket. This one is bringing... Alley forward to play defensive into the offside. It's the final ball of Hannon Dolby's over. The single from it, 157 for one. But, uh, Roderick is on 61, 52 to Kashif Ali. And the one man out was Jet Libby, who was out uh, during the morning session after around about an hour this morning for 38, giving Michael Booth his first first class wicket and the only wicket that was should have lost having been put in 157 for one credit to Warwickshire is also for stemming the tide in this session they haven't uh, bowled as many four balls there's not been uh, help yourself stuff so just 34 runs scored in 19 overs since the interval so the uh, run rate overall is being dragged back down towards three and over but they have had to set some defensive fills. Looks like they're going to bowl a little bit of short theory here because long leg has been joined by a deep backward square leg and a deep mid wicket as uh, Booth continues. But he bowls full outside off stump and it's pushed neatly wide of Danny Briggs for a single by Roderick. He's to 62, 158 for one. Alex Davis, who uh, having won the toss today, would have hoped that his first day of captaincy it's going to lead to a barrage of wickets. It's it's not turned out that way for him. Personally, I'd rather see this than see somebody struggling at 60 or 70 for five or six, I'd have to say, because they can't play in the conditions. So it's uh, it's achieving that end. There have been three chances put down today as well. As Kashif turns a full ball towards mid-wicket, uh, diving and scooping it up two-handed is Dan Mosley at short mid-wicket. 158 for one it remains. Breeze a little bit gentler for a moment, but uh, I'm not surprised that people's overcoats have remained in position, Phil, today. No, no. Well, 
I haven't yet been out to take any photos and I haven't got my coat so I'm really probably not going to rush to go out there and sit in the in the shade in the pavilion. Booth short pulled along the deck that's a nice strike from Cashy Valley. Will Rhodes along the boundary rope to field but they'll come back for two. Good throw from Rhodes. Mm. And, uh, it's nice to see a bowler in the actual correct position at the stumps for when the throw came in. So if there had been any uh, hesitation from Roderick returning to the non-striker's end, but that was uh, very neatly pulled by Kashif, got over the ball. He's the 54, 164 on this idiosyncratic stance where his uh, bat is vertically upwards as the bowler approaches. And it really does come down at the last second. It's up around his ears. <laughs> Still there now. Booth releases, the bat comes down, and he's pulling, it's in the air this time, and it's going to die just before the mid-wicket mid fielder. He really did nearly fall into the trap there. They're coming back for a tight second, and they'll get there. He goes to 56, it's 162 for one. But that was so nearly the perfect example of a plan coming off. He mistimed the pull that time, he got it airborne, but he's clothed it to such an extent that it dies before a sprawling Alex Davis can get to it. Yeah, he just moved himself into that position um, for that. Actually, walked across and, and sort of looked back and positioned himself. But in the end, ha I think had he have just been under it a s fraction more, it probably would have carried. But he got, as Richard said, he got over the top of it and played it in the end very well because he played it down in front of the fielder um, and got away with the shot. And now, of course, he won't pull the next short ball. He'll get up onto his toes <laughs> and defend it out into the offside because once bitten, twice as shy. 162 for one. Just after the end of this over, I should get uh, my next update done and then make way for uh, Melinda to join Phil. And I'll come back in half an hour, Phil, to get you. Yep, Are you heading back fine. to the museum for tea? No, um, we're, I, I, we're going to open at tea time, but uh, I'm not going back over. Carl's going to do it. Oh, there we go. 162 for one. Worcestershire. Dating listeners. It's BBC WM and BBC CWR in just a moment. This over has taken a while. There's another delay here as helmets are moved. So Booth prepares to move in again, feeling a little bit unfortunate. And that last shot didn't go to hand. And he bowls short. This one is pulled safely through mid-wicket for a single. Uh, Adage Baston, 163 for one. Uh, Worcestershire, they continue to go well. It's been a lot slower in this afternoon session as they look to build a good start. Gareth Roderick on 62 has been a very well compiled innings. Cashy Valley has needed a little bit of good fortune. An elegant innings of 57, but he was put down on 34. A decent chance for Rob Yates at first slip. Uh, a few moments ago, a mistimed pull by Cashy almost went to hand off the bowling of Michael Booth. He took the only wicket to fall so far. Worcestershire 163 for one. This is Richard Wilford reporting from Edgebaston. And that is the end of the over, so Phil, I shall uh, depart and let Melinda back in. Thank you, Richard. Here, yeah, Hannah Dolby continues. Overhead, a little bit more dark cloud coming in from the west. Um, over to our right, it's bright blue, but uh, some darker cloud. Oh, stop it, Phil. Up. Stop it. We're not having that. It's, it's play all day. Play all day here at Edgebaston. I said it true, right from the but start. It's black cloud over to the <laughs> left. <laughs> it's just a sort of grey as Oliver Hannon Dolby runs in, and this ball's just gently patted backward of point. He does the fielding. No run there. Yeah, we're very lucky. I think play's been abandoned uh, at other places around the country for yep. today. So this is where it's at, Edge Baston. about, th I think, three games on there in Division 1, which have been abandoned for the day with no play. It just it means the sun's shining on, on Edge Baston in more ways than one. Absolutely. As Hannon Dalby runs in, bowls to Kashif Ali with that high back lift and... Just rolls back past the bowler, but I won't get a run there. If you notice that, his back lift is really, well, really high. It's, we were talk, just saying that. It's right virtually to the moment the ball's released. Yeah. It's, 
It's like vertical, vertical basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, obviously, uh, Cashy Valley. It is. He gets it down into the right place though at the right time. He quickly readjusts. It's uh, quite impressed with uh, what we've seen so far from him. Uh, he's he's easy on the eye mm. as a as a batter. As Hannon Dolby comes in and he just prods this one in towards mid on uh, no run again uh, and he, he i mean he's played all around the place he probably in some ways had, had thought oh is this is this going to work uh played for a few different counties and it's come through the sacker been picked up and now finds himself in division one for worcestershire and he's got a half century in his first outing of, of 2024 so that's a really wonderful start for cashy valley yeah I um, I remember saying, gave us the stats. I think he got 93 last season, his highest score against Yorkshire. Han and Dalby in again, and this one just, oh, I've just whacked him on the the right hand a little bit. Mm. He's shaking his hand. Right, doesn't get a run there. The ball just jagged away very quickly from what looked like a tip of his glove. But yes, the Sackers, I think they've got four players the top of my head who have uh, picked up contracts with different counties and people can correct me if I'm wrong but I think that's a, the case so along with the, the, the ACE program as well I was talking to a gentleman Chris Marshall at lunchtime who was uh, here they're, they're launching a, a girls and women's club in in Birmingham so he's here with his kit Joe Leach is involved with that his company as Hannon Dolby comes in, and that's nicely driven, quite square. Pass the fielder at cover, but they'll just get a couple of runs. Add to the total. That means that it's now 165 for one with Cashy Valley on 59. Yeah, so talking about you know diversity and looking at different ways. No boundaries, cricket club, and yeah. they've they've launched. They're launching a, a women's and, and girls team. And uh, I had an interesting chat with him about all the things they're trying to do to, to get lots of different people involved. There's a lot of initiatives going on at the moment. And Dalby has just run, lost his run up again. That's the fifth time, if I haven't missed one in between. Uh, four we had times one this the morning. previous over as oh, well. There we yeah, go, so, so six times. <coughs> he bought the first over he had in this spell was fine, but uh, he's pick that problem up again that, that crosswind is ge is getting him it's i think the problem he's got is that the wind isn't consistent it's blowing first one way and then the other yeah he's in again once more got his run up right this time and again just cashy valley defends that back to the bowler and he's immediately given his left hand a, a shake so whether or not he's he's copped one on the finger and it's just giving him a little bit of an issue when he's when the, bar, the bat is uh, hitting the ball, I'm just jarring it a bit. But it's the end of the over. 165 for one now. Worcestershire travelling nicely with Roderick on 62 and Cashy Valley on 59. It's been a good partnership, this one. Put them in a very good position on day one after, mm. after losing the toss yep. and being put into bat. Well, they've made uh, excellent progress. They've Irrespective of what we've been saying with this ball, watch your attack clearly. The Duke's ball is uh, is a very different force to, to the one with this uh, kookaburra until at the moment. Did you say kookaburra? <laughs> Why? Is that, that, that's <laughs> it's <laughs> this is turned into the onside and there's one. No, they're coming back for two. That reminds me of when English people come to Australia and they go to near, we were talking about Bondi Beach earlier today. Well, near there is Coogee Beach. And I often hear English people refer to it as Coogee Beach. Right. Like the Kookaburra. This is a bit like, it's, more, it's, just, it's a real Lancashire thing, isn't it? If you're having a look at the kook pook. <laughs> <laughs> Seemingly. <laughs> well, I'll know. We just break off as this next one is pushed into the offside. The noise they make when you're out trying to in the morning trying oh. to have a lie in, I, they could, 
Well, that wasn't what I was calling them, kookaburras. <laughs> well, yeah, kookaburra, it, it's a real... At, at the risk of, of scaring our, our listeners, it, they, they do make a lot of noise early in the morning. and It's a bit like a laughing... They're called the laughing bird, yeah. but it's more like a... I don't want to do it too loudly into the microphone, <laughs> but that's the sort of noise that they make. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm not going to to <laughs> to give up the day job to be a bird impersonator. No, that's probably sensible. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> uh. Here comes Booth into bowl, and Ali is turning this one away, clipping it away down to uh, man down at 45 degrees on the behind the wickets. They've got uh, Warwickshire got field here they've got a, a, a fine leg they've got a sort of man back 45 degrees halfway back and then they've got a man back at deep a deep backward square leg they've just changed that now and uh, made the switch Bethel having to run right across for the new b the batsman um, Roderick who's now at the crease and he's gone back to a third man position um, but Warwickshire really beginning to spread their field around the boundary now that attacking stunt at the beginning has gone as this one is driven to down wide of um, mid off who's done drop down to do the fielding it's uh, benjamin back on again yeah it's it's one of those things we've seen them try unorthodox fields we've seen them putting places in you know, catching positions up, up close, two together, uh, all over, slips, no slips, whatever it is. But I, it's just hard to see where the wicket's going to come from. At the moment, they have put down certainly one chance in the slips. This one is lifted over point for six. <laughs> Short ball from Booth. And Ali just waited, opened the face and lifted it straight over cover point and down to the hover cover for six. It's, it's not a long boundary, but that was a well-controlled and beautifully played shot. First six of the match, I think. I haven't missed any, have I? No, uh, that's uh, a, uh, it might be the short boundary, but that was a, an absolutely terrific shot. It was yeah. controlled the whole way. Yeah. But again, as soon as he played that shot, Kashifali, he was shaking his left hand. So he's, he's clearly not comfortable. He's got an issue out there. This next one again has wrapped him on the glove on his right arm hand. It uh, was short, went to play it away, he's dropped the bat, and now is uh, shaking the hand and calling on assistance. He gets a single for it. It's the 100 partnership uh, for these two 177 for one. Cashamali uh, has gone on to 67. Well, I've just been talking about him shaking his left hand and, and having a problem. And, and now it's right yeah. right hand from that last ball. So he's, he's copying blows left and right, Kashifali. And the physio is just out there now having a look at him. So hopefully it's not nothing too serious because he has battered beautifully uh, in this partnership. He's 67 coming off 118 balls. So he's been scoring at a slightly quicker pace than Roderick, who's taken 150 balls for his 66. But Roderick has really been so solid today. He scored quickly at the start and then settled in. And it's mm -hmm. a, the two of them really have put Warwickshire in a very good position so far today. Or even Worcestershire. Worcestershire, sorry, <laughs> yes. Oh, I got my W's mixed up. Bears and pears. They shouldn't have rhyming names. That's what that's what I say. I don't think Warwickshire would be quite so keen <laughs> on and a, a strong position at the moment. No. No, so. it's it's been hard. And as I said, you just it's hard to see where the wicket but comes it, from. At this it point. is, yeah. The 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 attack looks adequate but it doesn't look threatening at all um the, you're not missing any cricket he's still being treated uh, down there cashew valley he's uh, getting treatment on his right hand at the moment yeah, um, might, might look at the left hand as well we might be looking at both because he he's looked uh, uncomfortable he's taken yeah. one on on either hand but it's 
Yeah, yeah it's tough. I, I think you'd say early on uh, that, that Warwickshire perhaps struggled with maybe the breeze, maybe <clears> the new ball, and the fact that they had that short boundary as well didn't defend it as well as they would have liked. And that really allowed Worcestershire yeah. to get off to a, a racing start through Roderick and through Jake Libby as well. And Yeah, and they got a little bit of luck going their way. They a couple of chances put down. Um, a couple of balls squirted through the slips down to the boundary, but the buck didn't... Uh, that was all to their advantage. And uh, 77 on the board in just about an hour. Uh, of the two, it looked like Libby was probably probably the slightly the more vulnerable, um, and so when he did go, it was the, was really the one you would have expected to go. But Roderick's batted really solidly, and Cashy Valley, since he's come in, has uh, has played some beautiful shots. He's not been a hundred percent safe but uh, he's played one got away with one or two little slightly false shots but overall a terrific inning so far that certainly has been well the running repairs have been made and now running in is oliver hannon dalby and that ball wow that really really hurried kashif ali he just jammed his bat down in time i think he, he's been rushed there by Hannon Dolby? Yeah, I think it was the rush. I don't think the ball did very much. I think no. it was just the pure pace that just almost did him then. It was very late. That was one of those where bringing the bat down from that acute angle back down on the ball, he was almost too late on it and uh, it nearly paid the price. Oh, that might give Hannon Dolby some encouragement as he runs in once more. That's just pushed into the mid-wicket area by Kashif Ali. He's just had treatment after being banged on each hand a couple of times. Beautiful lofted cut over point for, for six just before they had those running repairs. He's looked good. He does have that high back lift that... <laughs> well, it was that, that six was right surprised in terms of the way he played it he got his bat down much earlier as Hannon Dolby delivered that next ball he just played safely the lights are back on or half on yeah oh, I think it's that bit. cloud you told me to put on but in <laughs> fairness that cloud has actually built up to our left but has gone over the city rather than coming across the ground yeah, so see? It's, it's gone over the far side Mel's been Puffing and puffing at it, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but the lights have come on, so whether there's some more coming in behind us, which we can't see. But uh, at the moment, there's sunlight on the ground. I, I'd love to be here one day when they have to change the bulbs, just to watch as Hannon Dolby is in. It's a short ball, and it's pulled firmly. It's just going to go straight down to the fielder coming around from deep square leg. So they'll just get the single. Chap has to climb up the tube and change them. Does he? Uh, the tube? Is yeah. that big enough for someone to yeah. go inside? Yeah, you have to get a very small man. <laughs> <laughs> I am so gullible. <laughs> it would have to be a very small person to get inside that tube at the top. In comes Hannon Dolby, straight back at the bowler who does very well to field on his follow through effortlessly uh, just no just looking at them actually there's one or two of them which do appear to have gone i don't think the full complements working on the one to the right there the there's a couple of the top part of the e which aren't on well i wasn't sure if that was because they're just not turning them all on no i don't think oh. you don't, i don't think they do it that way i think you the whole lot's supposed to come but i assume you wait until a certain level's gone, and then you change the bulbs. Right. I don't know. Hannon Dolby in, and that's just turned around the corner by Roderick. They'll get a single as a fine leg fields. And is that the end of the over? Yes, it is. It's 179 for one with Roderick on 67, and Kashif Ali keeping pace on 68. No, uh, the only thing I know for definite is yeah. that I'm not volunteering to change them. <laughs> well, what do they do? Do they 
get a crane. They get a cherry picker, which goes up. Uh, and does it. Uh, have to be a very big yeah. cherry picker. I, I would, yeah, it's, it's, it, they, they've got those really tall ones. It has to be, obviously. I mean, that's a ridiculous name for it, really, because I grew up on an orchard <laughs> in Australia, and we did have cherry trees, and, and they do not grow as tall as the... Uh, as the floodlights here at Edgebaston. No, so no. <laughs> we, we had one. It was called an Afron. I don't know why. But say, if they grow picker. that big, the sword in Australia is pretty good. Well, we've already discussed that yeah. the magnolias grow far bigger here than they do in Australia. Maybe the cherry pickers do too. Change in the bowling. Yeah, Danny Briggs is back on. He bowled an over before lunch. That customary over which you're allowed the, your spinner to have on the opening day and he's in for his second from the pavilion end and his first ball is driven by Roderick back down to him and he fields and then threatens to throw down the stumps at uh, mm. sending Roderick hastening back yeah that was that was that was a bit bit feisty wasn't it this next one is in with a bit of spin on it and Roderick is forward to it and just uh, playing it into the on side not totally convincingly Briggs had a quieter season last year, but the year before had been in terrific form. And, uh, he'll be looking to get that, capture that again. This one is played out into the offside, and Robbie Yates not able to cut it off, but uh, Chris Rushworth tidies up behind him. Briggs in, and uh, a little jump up as his expectation, but uh, nothing happening as this one is played back. Behind the stumps, Will Rhodes is warming up as well, as this next one is driven down to Davis. Danny Briggs, I'm told from... Aaron got nine wickets in eight county championship matches in 2023. Yes, it wasn't a great season for him, was it? At 38.44. This one is shorter and is cut away down to the cover point boundary, where it's fielded... Uh, restricting to Roderick to a single end of that over, just the single from it. And at the end of it, Worcestershire are 180 for one. This partnership worth 103, with uh, Cash Ali having made the bulk of those 68. Yeah, he's, but he's, he's taken a lot of wickets in T20 cricket, Danny yeah. Briggs, hasn't he? He's yeah. a top. In fact, he's yeah. taken more than anyone, I, it, my understanding is, in T20 cricket yeah, in he, England. Yeah, he got a lot of wickets um, over the time. Uh, he was uh, been a big wicket. A lot, partic a lot with, you know, sort of catches in the deep on the boundary. Got quite good at wrapping up at the end of the innings and uh, getting wickets like that but he's been terrific um, servant for Warwickshire since he joined well it is a change at the other end as well because it's Rhodes coming back into the attack he's number for 14 after his six overs bowled so far and he's bowling to Roderick over the wicket and that's driven they've got two fielders that's in there at, at catching cover right next to each other. They could be holding hands. Uh, you can see, I think it's it's Mosley, Mosley and Bethel. And Bethel. Yep. Oh, good. I got them right. It's, it's very difficult coming in, not having watched many of these players. Yep. But, uh, it, 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 does get, it does get better. It's always a challenge as Roderick waits. Rhodes bowls and that one's lifted on him and he just plays it into the ground and it's a little back heel from Rhodes to Mosley. I was I thought it would be good if Dan Mosley actually lived in Mosley, but I don't think he does, does he? No, Mosley. and it's spelt slightly different. It, He's it got is. a U in his name, whereas yes. Mosley is M O S L E Y. But it would still be good. Is it if for those who are listening. A lot of people want to call him Mousley. Yeah, we have discussed it. I checked with him. He has told me himself yeah, that is Mosley. Yeah. So that for people who are listening who don't know Birmingham, that's a suburb about five minutes walk from here. Yep. As Rhodes is in and just a press forward by Roderick onto the offside, no run. It's a lovely suburb as well. Ali Martin, the, the Guardian cricket journalist, lives in Mosley. Uh, okay. And... Uh, yeah, some lovely pubs, very oh, nice yeah. high yeah. streets. Some nice houses there as well. Um, yeah, very nice uh, area. Some lovely properties around, uh, well, around Edgebaston and Mosley, all this part of Birmingham. There's some really nice uh, places. It certainly is. Roderick on strike, and he just lets this ball 
whistle past outside <laughs> of stump from roads. I'm not interested in uh, being suckered into that. Been good from road so far. Hasn't given up a run yet. Coming back into the attack from the Birmingham end. It used to be the city end, didn't it? Yes, now it's the it, it, end. It, they changed it to the Birmingham end after the Birmingham Council made the uh, the loan to the club to build this pavilion. Rhodes in once more, and it's an edge, and it's taken its slip. There's the breakthrough. It's been hard fought and hard going for Warwickshire, but in the end, it was a short ball, and Roderick was suckered into just having a nibble at that one, and it was safely taken in the slip. So that is the second wicket to fall. Rhodes, a good change in bowling to bring Rhodes back in and they'll be delighted with that because Bobby it's been Yates. a long time coming. Yates taken the catch, a uh, very comfortable catch. Um, he'll, those are the sort which he won't, uh, he won't miss. That was straight at him and uh, at a nice comfortable chest height. And Yates who took 30, wicket, 30 catches last season is on his way this season. So Roderick departs for 68, a fine half century. Yeah. He's helped put his side into a really wonderful position on the first day of the county championship and their first match into the top flight of the competition in 2024. Mm. Yeah, I think that was a, a really good innings from, uh, from Roderick. It, uh, he got Worcestershire off to a real flying start with uh, Jake Libby and then he played it just went calm he allowed um, it, on this second wicket partnership he allowed Keshi Valley to take over and do the bulk of the scoring but again remains very confident he's got 180 on the board half just over halfway through the opening day I think he's done his job extremely well he so certainly well, well has. Played, well played to him. Got off to a flyer early oh, on. Absolutely. In the morning. He was he was scoring at T20 pace mm -hmm. in the first few overs, but settled in. But now he's departed. And it's Jones who's now in. Uh, first ball from Rhodes is just pushed away to backward point. So it's a wicket maiden for Rhodes. Terrific over. He's made that incredibly valuable breakthrough. That's exactly what was desperately needed by Warwickshire who've had a difficult day so far in the field. So 180 for two now with Jones yet to get off the mark and Kashif Ali now the one steering the innings on 68. Debut for Rob Jones has just moved to Worcestershire, Lancashire and uh, he's uh, Come here looking for opportunities. He's, I think he's a good pickup for Worcestershire. Batting at number four, he's, uh, he's got three first class centuries and eight fifties, Aaron tells me, as Danny Briggs starts a new over down the leg side. Uh, just not sure he got any bat on that, whether it caught the pad, but to runs to Hannon Dolby, who's. Yes, Backward square leg. There's no run. This one is punched down to extra cover. It's the next delivery. Getting through his overs quickly, Danny Briggs. He's uh, helped the over rate a bit and pushed them along. The floodlight's still on here as Briggs in. Bowles brings Ali forward and runs this one again into the odd side. And there's no run. A bit of shouting you can hear now from the crowd. There's somebody <laughs> making some comments as in comes Briggs, gives that plenty of air, but uh, forward comes Ali and just meets that with a dead bat. And, uh, Briggs feels off his own bowling, working the ball as it's in and bowls. And this is glanced down to Hannon Dolby just round the corner on the onside, and there's no run. with the final ball of this over. He's in and again. They're going to get a single this time because Hannon Dolby has to come scampering forward to pick up to virtually square leg position but uh, doesn't stop 
the batsman crossing giving the single off the over 181 for two we've had 56 overs so we've got 40 remaining in the day got eight overs to go to t um, and a little bit behind the clock but not too bad and if danny briggs bowls a sort of lengthy spell then probably <laughs> pull that back well it, yeah it's just the he bowls his overs very quickly yeah. he's he's almost Ravindra Jadeja <laughs> quick yeah. uh, gets through them very fast but it's Rhodes now back on at the Birmingham end he's bowling to Kashif Ali first ball is just chipped straight down along the carpet and it's been misfielded at mid wicket so they'll scamper through 183 I think for two I think Warwick will be at the end of the day when they examine their day's play <coughs> will be a bit disappointed with their performances the players coming off here for a little bit of rain i think first rain break we've had in the day um and the umpire's quickly taking the players off as a little shower comes in across the ground you can hear the hover cover being fired up i'm a big fan of the hover cover <laughs> i love the hover cover i you know people will already realize i get unreasonably excited about lots of strange things but the hover covers one of them i don't have them in australia uh, that you watch like about 20 people running around and, and being very inefficient in in folding out various pieces of canvas and i think the hover cover is wonderful not happy to see it but look it's it's not too bad i'm a bit disappointed that my full day of play <laughs> has been interrupted but I'm hopeful that it won't hang around for too long. You should have been here when the Brum years ago. When the the Brumbrella. Brumbrella. I'm obsessed with the Brumbrella. I would we've love we've to have We've seen got that. a feature on it in the museum. Ah, uh, see, I have to come to the museum. Where is it? Ah, it's for you to find out, me oh. to know. Is it? Is it over the other side? <laughs> it is over the other side. So I don't often go over I to know the that. other side. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> you, don't, you don't ever go over there unless they no. make you park your car there. Ah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I was over there. I was in a box over there on day on the well second or third day of the ashes test oh, right. invited over to a box and it was actually interesting because I'd, I'd never seen the ground from that side it's <laughs> like oh there's the media center oh you can actually see the journalists in there yeah. that's a bit We're of a worry see where the school that little scoreboard is over mm. in the corner oh yes 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 if you go down where they're disappearing down the stairs yes then we're just on the bottom on the right hand side well you know i love a museum and I'm sure with the wonderful history of this ground and this county, there's plenty to see there. But unfortunately, there's not plenty to see in the middle at the I moment. I don't think this break's going to be long enough I to get you over there. No, I don't, I don't think it is. They're not, they don't look too... They're not exactly racing to get those uh, covers out. I think it's a, a shower, and I think the umpires have taken the precaution of just bringing the players off. Now the current situation is that Worcestershire are 183 for two. Jones is out in the middle. He's only faced one ball. He's without a score, Rob Jones. And Kashif Ali uh, on 71. He has been absolutely terrific. Two wickets to fall. Uh, Libby departed on 38 after a pretty sparkling start caught, caught by Danny Briggs and, and Booth taking his first wicket in first-class cricket. And Roderick as well batted outstandingly for 68. And he was out caught in the slips by Yates. A good delivery off Rhodes, who's one for 16 at the point of time when they've gone off for play, off 7.1 overs. And the other wicket taker booth, at one for 61. So it's been tough all going for the Seamers, but the sun's out now. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be off for very long. No. Sunshine. Rich uh, they're going to take tea, Richard's saying to ah. us. So that's a very sensible thing. Take tea um, whilst they had the break, and then we don't lose any overs. So you can actually still say you've had no interruption for rain. Aha! I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm so good. So we will take a break. 183 <laughs> for two. We will be back with you in about 15 minutes.
Very good afternoon. Welcome back to Edge Baston. If you're uh, waiting for play to resume because uh, the interruption was met by a T interval, that means that we haven't lost any time this afternoon. So uh, we're still on track for a full day's play on the opening day of the season, which is extraordinary given the weather that we've had in this area over the course of the last couple of weeks and given the events elsewhere with so many games called off for the day. But the two teams are re-emerging in sunshine right now. Shadows are cast longer than they have been all day. Umpires Lloyd and Saggers making whirling arm gestures to each other. And we will get underway with a lot of overs remaining still. Another, well, one ball shy of 40 overs still to go. So a long session in the field for the Bears. Will Rhodes, he took a wicket in his previous over. Uh, it was one ball into his eighth. Cashy Valley, 71 on out. Rob Jones and only had time to face one delivery. And he is going to be on strike. And uh, we will resume with the day. There's been Worcestershire's, although it's fair to say their progress in the afternoon session was somewhat becalmed. Just 60 runs scored in 26 overs. So it's going to be Will Rhodes to continue the over. I'm Richard Wilford from BBC Radio WM. Uh, Phil Brett is with us from uh, Warwickshire County Cricket Club. Melinda Farrell will rejoin us. Uh, tomorrow, Brian Halford will take my position. And uh, George Dobell will also be joining us for some spells tomorrow. Looking forward to that. And it's Rhodes to continue. And it's actually uh, Cashy Valley who's on strike. He's taken his jumper off and he uh, steers it behind square for a single to go to 72, 184 for two. The sunshine's so bright that it's become difficult to see the numbers on the uh, main scoreboard at the far end. And the floodlights are still on for now. So whether they think there might be a bit more weather. And actually, the direction in which the two umpires were looking a few moments ago, Phil, suggests to me that they do think there might be another... Uh, a shower, a shower on its way. Yeah, it comes over, doesn't it? From uh, it comes up from Worcester, really. That's the way it comes. And uh, don't, don't be apportioning blame. <laughs> Rhodes in and just turning around in defence a little bit. There was Jones, but he guides it back down into the offside. Michael Booth as the fielding. Two slips in place now. Yates at first and Bethel at second and a half, really, and. Uh, as it was this morning, the breeze is really starting to blow the back of the trouser legs. Chris Rushworth is warming up, so the weather, if anything, may have cut Danny Briggs' spell short. If Alex Davis decides to stick with the seamers again. Jones playing and missing outside off stump. That ball might have got up a little bit more than he was expecting. It certainly went through him and uh, just coming down the wicket and giving it a little bit of a tap to one of the few deliveries which has actually beaten the bat but, uh, during the interval we were discussing the fact that Will Rhodes might be used rather more purposefully mm. as a bowler now that he's not captain in the side and he took two championship wickets last season has one today the repeals behind the stumps as Jones just gets turned around again a little bit by that a height would have done for him but I also think he got a little bit of wood on that yeah Definitely. Yes, there was no interest from the bowler at all. Sort of, I think more anticipation from the slips and the wicket keeper there. But uh, again, right on the mark here after T. Rhodes. And, uh, it's going to send you. square leg deep for the uh, final ball of the over in case Jones fancies a bit of a launch. So a shorter ball, but actually it's full and it's off the outside edge and it'll go between slips and gully. Doesn't travel too far. Ed Barnard retrieves it, just throws it underarm to Bethel. And Bethel to Michael Burgess, the wicketkeeper. But he gets Rob Jones off the mark with two on what is his first championship appearance for his new county, Worcestershire. 28-year-old from Warrington. Three centuries in his championship career at Lancashire. Was getting frustrated with limited opportunities and taking his opportunity now to play for another county in Worcestershire. Got some players, got a few players now that have moved across, the likes of Jake Libby, Gareth Roderick, Adam Hose as well, Matthew Waite, finding a new home. And I mean, Waite's done very well since he made the move from Yorkshire. We've now got uh, 
Another former Warwickshire player on their books in Ethan Brooks, who was in the squad for today's game. His brother making his debut for Middlesex today. It's uh, an odd one to see uh, no Brooks on the Warwickshire staff this season. <clears throat> of course, Ed Pollock is there at, uh, down at Worcester, but I think he was in the squad. This first ball is, Richard was quite right, Briggs out of the attack and uh, Rushworth is back in. So uh, Chris Rushworth bowling from the pavilion end in, as the sun comes back out again. And his first delivery to Cashy Valley is played away into the offside. There's a man back on the cover point boundary just in case he wants to repeat that remarkable shot we saw before T where he just lifted the ball over cover point for six. Rushworth in and, and he cuts this one away tight down to exactly where we were just talking down to the cover point boundary which is fielded for just a single. And he moves on to 73 and the total on to 187 for two. Yeah, it was a good shot, that lift over oh, point. I was, shot, uh, I was upstairs in the press box at the time. And, and you know, with the field that was set and that short boundary, it was the right shot. Yep. Lovely shot. So, there's Rob Jones facing Chris Rushworth. In he comes and bowls, and Jones is behind that and just runs it away out into the offside. No run. That wind still blowing across the ground. The flag. There's no Worcestershire flag here today, but uh, they haven't brought one with them. Or if they have, then nobody's been to put it up. But the Warwickshire flag is there. Nobody was brave enough to go to <laughs> that top deck of the stand when the wind was hurling this morning. Yeah. That might have been a smart choice. It looks like it's been closed, that top deck. This one is clipped away nicely through square leg and is going to be brought back from the boundary because it's raced along the turf, crosses the rope. The rope is, oh, a good 35 yards in from the holly stand, um, and that ball travelled quickly across the cut square, uh, virtually all the way to the boundary. It's virtually square all the way to the boundary edge, and uh, that one raced along the surface. So another fall to Cashew Valley. Oh, sorry, that was Jones who uh, scored that one. That's his first boundary for Worcestershire and played away nicely. It's dried off nicely, that bit of the outfield. Mm. It was very sodden this morning. It's Rushworth in again to him. And uh, this one is going to be his second boundary for Worcestershire because this time it's on the other side of the ground. He waited and then cut it away through the gully. But, uh, perfectly safe, in control of the shot. There's nobody down there. And uh, it's just a question of go and fetch and bring <coughs> it back. And that uh, race is uh, Worcestershire up to 195 for two. So the run's coming quickly after T. And Rushworth's first over, proving to be a little bit expensive. We've had nine from it so far. He doesn't look full of the joys of spring after those two shots, Chris Rushworth. Just strayed a little bit in length. Here he is in again, bowls. And this is going to be more runs, just a single this time, turned away behind square which means Jones will keep the strike and will move to 196 for two. So 10 off that over from Chris Rushworth. He's now north for 42 from 12. So still looking for his first wicket, as indeed is Oliver Hannon Dolby. So Warwickshire's two main wicket takers last season are both uh, at the moment wicketless. Yeah, missing the uh, added pace of Hassan Ali at the moment, waiting to see when he's going to arrive. Um, Liam Norwell not selected in the end. He was in the squad for the game. Would have given them something slightly different. Michael Booth given the opportunity on his debut. He's got one of the two wickets to fall. The other went to Will Rhodes, who's in to bowl now to Jones, who comes forward and uh, nudges it out in the offside. Booth does the fielding at cover. I'll get an update uh, off of BBC Radio WM and BBC CWR during the course of this over. Two slips in place. Point. Extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, short mid-wicket, um, square legs in front of square, and long leg. Those are the fielders on the leg side. 
as Rhodes approaches once more and this is steered towards short mid wicket slightly tentatively from Jones he didn't want to go through with a full shot there mindful of the field that's been set looking for an error goes a fair bit of gardening halfway up the wicket 196 for two you have to score is it 250 for a bonus point these days? Yes. So uh, Rhodes comes in again, and this is uh, guided towards the uh, man in front of Square this time. And again, no thought of coming through for a single. thought that might be something they changed back 196 again. for two, Worcestershire here at Edgebaston on the third session now of the opening day of the season. Second wicket fell just before the interval, which came early because of rain. Gareth Roderick, who'd batted very well for 68, just fended at a ball from Will Rhodes and nicked it through to Michael Burgess. Kashif Ali on 73 got one extravagant six over point. He's looked in very good nick, having been given a life on 34 when he was put down. He's been joined by Rob Jones on his Worcestershire debut. He has 11. Worcestershire 196 for two. This is Richard Wilford reporting from Edgebaston. And uh, off the back of that report, a warm welcome to those of you listening to uh, Sport Extra. On the opening day of the county championship season, we've been blessed here in that we haven't lost any cricket. We had an early tee because of rain, but got, in, got back on after 20 minutes. Uh, haven't lost anything at all as Will Rhodes drags one down short of a length. It carries nicely through to Michael Burgess and there's no run. Phil Britt alongside me from Warwickshire County Cricket Club, but Melinda Farrell will be back with us very soon. Worcestershire getting back into Division 1 life with uh, just the right sort of spirit and the right sort of concentration today. They'd probably argue they've given the two wickets away. Libby for 38 and Roderick for 68. But there have been three chances put down by the home team as Jones covers up his off stump to this final ball of Will Rhodes over. 73 to Kashif Ali, 11 to Jones. 196 for two. It's been a very accomplished batting performance, Phil. It has. They have uh, came off this morning, started off like a rocket, put in by Warwickshire, uh, Warwickshire's new captain, Alex Davis, and uh, Worcestershire had uh, absolutely no uh, worries or concerns. They went off, fired off, and uh, they raced to 50 inside the 10 overs, and uh, the scoring rate continued. 77 put on for the first wicket, and century partnership for the second. And as Richard said, both wickets really coming a little bit as a surprise. Here's Chris Rushworth, starts a new over, and uh, this one is pulled by Cash Valley down to a deep mid wicket. Has to get a bit of a running round from uh, Booth, who gets there, returns the ball, but they're b home for two. So that t takes one to 198 for two. They have tried the tactic of bouncing people out a little bit. I mean, there, there will be debate, of course, in these two rounds of championship matches about the Cookerborough ball. And we've talked quite a bit about that today, so I won't go over old ground, but it is interesting to see how many wickets have uh, fallen around the country in those matches that are playing. And it, it's not been perhaps as predictable as you might anticipate. Might not have been a, a flurry of wickets anywhere yet. Rushworth bowls, and this is played away again confidently into the offside for a single. There's a man out on the deep cover boundary who does the tidying up, uh, restricts to a single. So Kashi Valley moves on to 76. Rob Jones on 11, and Worcestershire on 199 for two. And uh, Warwickshire worked with the uh, six bowlers today. Alex Davis, the new watch captain, has changed his uh, attack round frequently, but uh, very little in terms of success coming from them. As Rushworth still looking for his first wicket, is in and bowls. And forward comes Jones and just gets right over the top of that and plays it down into the ground. And it rolls back up to Rushworth, who almost wearily bends down and picks that ball up. But, uh, I think the lack of success has that impact on a bowler that uh, they start to feel more weary. A few wickets, and it's amazing what it does to you the other way. Uh, 
George Dobell will be uh, nipping in to join us tomorrow from the cricketer. And he has an interesting theory about opening week wickets. As Rushworth this is turned, as Jones comes forward to it, turns it to mid wicket. I shan't um, steal his thunder. I shan't say what his theory is, but um, there is a suggestion that we shouldn't necessarily expect the clatter of wickets that you might anticipate on the first week. But you'll have to ask George about that tomorrow. It's an interesting theory he has. 199 for two. Certainly, I mean, it's never looked like there'd be regular wickets today, has there? Oh, no, any point. no, no. This one is played away. Late, pushed by Jones, waited, opened the face, ran it away, down through the vacant gully gap spot and down to the ropes for another boundary, down to uh, third man and uh, just played with nice timing and it brings up the Worcestershire 200 so uh, that's come in the 60th over 203 for two and uh, they continue to tick along nicely and uh, the runs again beginning to come a little more quickly since T although just looking out now it's uh, it's got a little gloomier overhead again so whether there is a bit of dark cloud coming in from behind the pavilion but uh, certainly has a less of a enticing feel as this next one sees Jones playing it at pushing forward solidly playing it out to extra cover Briggs does the fielding there's no run it's 203 for 2 76 to uh, Ali and Rob Jones on 15 yeah, the, the, the cloud has tended to move quite quickly through the sky today so when we've had a darker spell and you worry about whether there might be some rain it, it's very swiftly been followed by some blue which is about to happen again what i would say is the wind is not as strong as it was earlier in the day and we had some real problems in the opening session at ground level uh, ollie hannon dolby in particular was finding it hard to run in from the birmingham end such was the breeze he was being buffeted from side to side had to pull up during his run up on four occasions which is uh, something you just don't see Ollie do but it's quite dark at the moment as Will Rhodes is in to bowl and Kashif Ali sturdily forward jabs it out into extra cover where Jacob Bethel is fielding Bethel who uh, was probably the beneficiary of the uh, late withdrawal of Sam Hayne who was named in the squad yesterday Warwick's top run scorer last year but uh, he is not available due to personal reasons this week. Starting to look around to see whether they might see the odd brolly appear because uh, it does look like there might be a bit around as the next ball is dug in a bit harder by Will Rhodes, guided onto the floor by Kashif in front of Square and no run. The only thing I'd say, Richard, the ground staff normally, if, mm. there's, if there's any hint of rain, are stood by the hover cover to make sure it gets fired up quickly. And there's no, no nobody sort of appeared round by the cover. Yeah, they were certainly in position to intervene during that previous spell. Mm. It's more road, slower ball, defended out into the offside. 203 for two, it remains. It, it's not quite at what I refer to as wet light. You know, I've, I've tried to explain that to you before. But my God, I, there is this thing that I consider wet light, when you fancy that it's going to rain pretty soon. The sky seems full, the air seems full of moisture, doesn't it, sometimes? Mm -hmm. Don't think we're quite there yet. One for 19 in his 10th over, Rhodes. He's uh, certainly helped put a bit of a lid on that early scoring rate. And this is left alone outside off stump. Goes through at hip height to Michael Burgess, who only has Rob Yates for company. Yates, who will be frustrated to have put down Cashy Valley when he was on 34. A catch low to his right at first slip. One that Yates would expect to take. It sets his standards very high. I think it was 29 first-class catches last season. Yeah, all. something of that ilk. And, uh, almost all of them were at first slip. But he's poised now as Rhodes comes in. And it's off the outer half of the bat that this squeezes to point where Dan Mosley picks up. And there's no run. Barnard is coming in. Further forward from third man, as if he uh, feels it's time for a fly slip. Is that where he's going? Is that where he's going to stop? It might be. Looks like it. Alex Davis has tried plenty of different things today. 
No, he's going to no, keep on coming in. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, sort of a deep lying backward gully for a ball that is just jabbed down into the wicket by Kashi Fali. End of another good over. From Will Rhodes, he's been very tidy. 203 for two. Worcestershire, that's 20 runs they've added now in just short of five overs since the interval. And uh, Chris Rushworth's post T spell is going to be a fairly brief one as we're going to see the return of the slow left arm of Danny Briggs. I think that's fair. I think uh, Chris was getting up very little out of the, the wicket. Um, and a uh, bit the same as earlier in the day with Oliver Hand and Orby. I don't think uh, he was today either of the Warwickshire's main wicket takers from 2023. They've really been looked like getting wickets today. I think Danny Briggs has uh, tied an end, this one end up here at the pavilion end and got through his overs fairly quickly. So uh, Alex Davis may well give him a persistent run. This one is... Uh, Goes past everything. Did he get a little bit of bat on that? Tickling it down fine. They're going to come back for two. It hasn't been signalled. He's, he's, he's coming. He's, David Lloyd is poised. There we go. His legs raised and he taps his knee. It was leg buys. So two more to the total. 205 for two. Yeah. Uh, Umpires do like this thing. Where before they signal a leg by, their hand is out. As if, they're, as, as, <laughs> as if they're saying, well, I've known him since he was this high. <laughs> and then they signal leg by. But Jones remains on 15 as Briggs is into him. Jones comes down the wicket and goes to almost slap that one away and gets away with it uh, because had he missed that ball, he was going to be out by about two yards. Yeah, I don't think Jones wants Briggs to settle, but that was a cross-batted smear, yeah, was, wasn't yeah, it? It really was. So in comes Briggs again, fires this one in a bit quicker and back it goes Jones and cuts it away to a uh, backward point. Just needs to settle here a little bit, Jones. Not rush things. He's uh, he wants to press, not Briggs off his line, but he doesn't want to lose his wicket doing it as he digs this bullet one out and uh, drives it back to the bowler. Briggs gets again. He's ready before the batsman to bowl the next ball. He's getting through this over quickly. So He's in, bowls, gives that plenty of air. It'll be a single this time for Jones, turning it square on the onside for one. He goes on to 16, and the total goes on to 206 for two. Another 18 overs after this one till the uh, second new ball. <laughs> Such as it is. The first one hasn't done a lot for the bowlers. As forward comes, uh, and it again, well down that one. Is as he comes down, it wraps him on the pad, then runs back behind and, bring, and Burgess behind the stumps goes to snatch it off the pad and try and threaten him. But and he returned very quickly and was back into his crease. But uh, a good over from uh, Danny Briggs, causing a little bit of concern for the bowler. Well, he's nearly had a batsman, rather. He's nearly had a nightmare, Cashy Fally, there, yeah. <laughs> because he was not aware that that ball was rolling back towards the stumps. Now. He wouldn't have hit the stumps, but Michael Burgess was re ready to pounce with him out of his crease. He was in no man's land for a moment, and whether he got a shout or whether it just suddenly occurred to him that he couldn't see where the ball was, but he got himself back in timely fashion in the end, but that would have been a rather odd way to get out when you've played in innings like this, and he's, he has had a life along the way. That's the first ball of a new over from Will Rhodes. is a bit short and guided down, so it stays on the cut wicket. And there's uh, no run. Kashif doesn't want to give it away. Gareth Roderick might feel that he gave away a chance for a century today. The other match in Division 1 with any play, of course, the one at Trent Bridge. Essex, 174 for four. Dean Elgar made 80. And Jordan Cox, 57 not out. Both of those on their debut for the county. Um, Dane Patterson, an old and bit of good at isn't he? Three for 36. As, uh, just jabbing down on this next delivery is uh, Jones. Well, Rhodes has bowled a more challenging line than anybody else. Three games underway in Division 2. Glamorgan, 235 for two against Middlesex. Sam North East, 122 not out. Billy Root made 67. Kieran Carlson has 39. Uh, after a much-delayed start, North Ants are 50 for one after 18 overs against Sussex. A wicket there for Jaden Seals. Broad and Proctor have both got into the 20s. There's Rhodes. He's driven up towards mid-off. 
But Alex Davis does the fielding. Rhodes looks skywards. Didn't feel it was a convincing shot from Rob Jones. Uh, and the uh, last to start, Leicestershire 22 without loss against Yorkshire in the 10th over. Patel on 10 and Harris 7. And in the IPL, Chennai 127 for 4 with 5 overs to go against Hyderabad. Dubey made 45 of those. So it keeps you up to date with what's going elsewhere. Uh, all the other games were abandoned for the day one. As uh, that ball goes past at sort of bale height from Will Rhodes, left outside off stump. The bales are rather nutty shade of red today, I note. Yes. Are you mm. liking? No, not a lot. Oh, the traditionalist in Phil has come out. Yeah. I've, well, I must be honest, when I first looked at them, I thought, are they playing with bales or not? And then I had to peer and see that, yes, they were, but they were a different colour to the stumps. I what, don't what? quite understand that unless somebody's paid a lot of money to advertise on them. Well, so I can't read it. As uh, this beats the outside edge, that's a beauty from Will Rhodes. One for 19 in his 11th over, and that has gone past the edge of Jones' bat. Good full length, bit of nibble. The ball hasn't been doing a lot today. But that's a beauty. Yeah, I can't... Uh, wouldn't be a lot of point advertising on those, would there, unless no. it was only something... Gu no. Aim purely at professional cricketers. They look, they look like two rather vibrant chipolata sausages yeah. laid on top of the stumps. Rhodes to Jones, who this time gets into position behind the ball and is able to guide it towards short mid wicket. End of the over, 206 for two. Jones, 16, but a touch flighty in that over. Cashy Valley, 76. Still 33 overs left of play. On day one of this county championship season, it feels good to be back. Uh, Worcestershire have made good progress for them this was a big day this is uh, their return to top flight cricket they've been a yo-yo club for a while and a little bit of a break but uh, under the guidance of Alan Richardson the captaincy of Brett D'Oliveira here they are back Ashley Giles now the chief executive totally disrupted pre-season Phil as well just a touch <laughs> Briggs in that starts a new over the 64th of the innings Yes, it's, uh, it's been a really hard season for them. But, uh, of course, they're at Kidderminster for their opening games. This one is full and clipped away, but uh, beautifully fielded at mid-wicket. And terrific fielding there by Ed Barnard, diving down and getting uh, both hands to it and stopping what probably would have been four runs. This next one sees... Cashy Valley pulling, pushing forward and uh, again bringing Barnard in to play, but uh, not having to do the same acrobatics as in the previous ball. And again, it's played lean forward and again it's run to mid-wicket. He's almost in position to play the defensive shot yeah. before it's out of the hand of Danny Briggs. He hasn't had to move once he's there. Briggs bowls again. This one turned on the leg. They're going to whip through for a single. Hand Dolby has to make some ground from short fine leg to be able to pick it up, and he gets there comfortably with a single. So another one onto the total. Two hundred and seven for two. Yeah, that was well run. Jones, who's on sixteen, is back on strike as Briggs into him, and Jones goes back and covers up. Just forced back onto his stumps, but uh, got uh, everything behind it and played it away safely into the offside. End of another uh, over from Danny Briggs. That's his fifth over gone. And Worcestershire are 207 off 60 for two off 64 overs. There's no real sign of turn for Danny Briggs, but he is getting some lovely drift into the batsman there. And it just hurried him a little bit, but uh, it was dealt with. Will Rhodes to continue. And there wouldn't have been too many day ones in which he bowled a dozen overs. This will be his 12th. Not too many last year. Uh, probably only bowled 60 odd overs in the season. That's coming forward in defence. It's Cashy Valley out into the offside and no run. But as captain, it's uh, up to somebody else to judge how much they need Will Rhodes to bowl. And Alex Davis has felt that the former skipper is going to do him as good a turn as anybody. Mm. And he's uh, probably been right. He 
quiet around Edgebaston tonight. As you can hear, Rhodes bowls back of a length, and that's uh, nicely played off the back foot through the gap between points and extra cover for a single out to the fielder out in the deep. 208 for two, and Kashi Valley to 78. 78's come 142 deliveries and uh, he's got a I think we said 93 wasn't it, his highest first class score against Yorkshire so he's honing in on that Rhodes in again forward is Jones pushes it out into the offside Michael Booth is in to sweep in and field this time. It's a little bit murky again, but we're used to that. It's coming in phases. Alex Davis doesn't have many more options available to him. I think he's pretty much used everything up. I'm not entirely sure whether Bethel can bowl yet. So he's driven into the offside, picked up by Booth, or parried by Booth anyway. And again, there's no run. Rhodes keeping it tight. Whether he's been played as uh, purely as a batsman, I don't know. I know. Last season, he wasn't allowed to bowl with the injury. I think the ex expectation was that he'd be able to. I haven't looked to see whether he's uh, bowled much in the pre-season. When he had that, because it was effectively a stress fracture of the mm. back, it didn't stop him taking some extraordinary, extraordinary catches. diving catches in the <laughs> T20 Blast last year. So uh, this is guided down towards backward point. Ed Barnard picks up. He's varying his pace, varying his length, Will Rhodes, but probing outside off stump, and uh, he felt that ball was better than its end product. Maybe close to the end of a spell here, Rhodes. Yeah, you'd think, as you say, he's in his 12th over, 1 for 20 so far, so it's been uh, the economic over. Rob Jones gets himself back into position. Oh, and plays and misses at a ball that goes past the shoulder of the bat. That's a beauty from Rhodes. And frankly, too good a Jaffa to end a spell on. 208 for two. <laughs> and uh, it may be that uh, the new captain says, yeah, yeah we'll, have another, we'll have another one. We'll have another one, Will. He's just put his hands on his knees there. But... Um, Maybe that's the message he's got from Michael Burgess. Skipper says he'll have another. Not resting yet. <laughs> Danny Briggs will continue in the meantime from the pavilion end. Cashy Valley will be facing. He's on 78 as Briggs into him and gives that one plenty of air. Ali's forward to that, and uh, in the end, the, it was, uh, Danny Briggs was expecting Barnard to pick the ball up, and Barnard was expecting Briggs to pick the ball up, and between the two of them, they actually, in the end, almost clapped, bumped into each other. Here comes Briggs again with his next ball. This is uh, goes to cut this one away and gets underneath that one, and it's... Uh, in fact, gets over the top of it and goes underneath his bat and uh, through to Briggs and uh, Br it, uh, to Burgess. And Briggs throws his arms up in the air. And this next one is already bowled. <laughs> He's getting through this over so quickly. He's bowled the next ball, which is played back by Ali, back to uh, to the bowler. Forward he comes again, runs this next one away to Yates at extra cover. There's no run. Briggs right on the mark today. It's uh, not giving too much away to, to the batsman. This one is a bit short, and is having said that, is then cut away. He's short outside the off stump, and he's cut away for four. It's the opening day of the season. The commentator's curse had to kick in at some point. Phil, unfortunately, it was you. It was you on this occasion. He had bowled with total control. Yeah, and then dropped. Drags one down. Gets praised and then just yeah. lets you down. The grand staff are interested at the moment, yeah, by the way. They they're, they're, they're beginning to, to move, are they? They're hovering yeah. around the hover cover, which is called the hover cover because they hover around it because it hovers. It's, uh, or maybe both. Now they're having a look at the ball. Uh, yep, and umpire um, looks at it. Yeah, it's a ball. Have it back. It's round enough. It'll do. 
here comes Briggs in, gives that up air and brings a defensive shot for the final ball of his sixth over. He's naught for eight after six overs and it's 212 for two. Mm. I mean, maybe we shouldn't lament the opening couple of rounds being played with a kookaburra ball, even though uh, people who know considerably more about the game, the likes of Alex Stewart, think it's wrong-minded, but, you know. Um, because in the last couple of years with the Duke ball, we've been changing it about every 16 overs. I mean, I've seen some epic <coughs> days with seven or eight changes. Yep, yep. Changes more often than the rail timetable. Here's... Will Rhodes, who will continue after that blinding ball that ended the previous over. This one is short. Up onto his toes is Jones. Doesn't get much of that and fends it down towards Dan Mosley at short mid-wicket. If there is to be an interruption in play, Warwickshire would love to make a third breakthrough before it happens. The second one came not long before T was brought upon early by the weather. Partnerships of 77, 103... And now 32 so far. As, uh, this next delivery from Will Rhodes is pushed out towards point where, for reasons best known to himself, Ed Barner picks it up, flicks it over the head of Michael Booth, runs round the other side to catch it, then flicks it up and hits it off his thigh into the hands of Michael Booth. It, it keeps you interested, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Keeps them interested, doesn't it? As in comes Rhodes, and this is guided behind Square and the offside. Um, there will be some representation tomorrow from BBC Hereford and Worcester. Oh, I good. Read, so that'll be good for the balance of the commentary, although um, as Phil and I both have watched an awful lot of Worcestershire cricket when we were younger, that's kind of... We're getting you know some enjoyment out of the way that they're playing today. But see, uh, Dan Whiting is going to be here tomorrow, so uh, that will add to the mix nicely. Be standing room only in here. Something like that. Jones looking to drive up towards mid on. Helen Dolby is down fairly sturdily. As I mean, let one slip through. We've been left now by listeners to Sport Extra. Because so they're upset they haven't heard Melinda. We'll have to get it back on shortly, just to lure them back. She just borrowed your lipstick a moment ago, Phil, by the way. I saw her putting it oh on. No. Yeah. I hope you still left me some. Well, I'll see, otherwise your accessories for tonight will be hopeless. <laughs> Rhodes, back of a length, defended out into the offside by Jones. And there's no run. It remains 212 for two. Yeah. Cloud that first incurred the interest of the grand staff is now moving away to our right. There is a little bit trailing it yet, but they uh, seem to be slightly less troubled by what's coming. So try and make sure Mel's happy and we get through a full 96 overs. That's all she's come for. She just wants the 96. Rhodes again draws his man forward, but Jones is resolutely in behind that. 212 for two after 67 overs. Um, I may have a report to do very shortly for BBC Commentary and Warwickshire BBC CWR. So, um, at some point, if you, uh, 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 shall uh, I bring uh, Mel in here now? Because you, you can probably do sort of some little half hour here, and I can have a break at five, and we'll be, okay. we'll be, we'll be dandy, won't it? Well, I can have a little break after I've done the three minutes past five. Then um, so we'll just have to listen out to see if BBC Commentary and Warwickshire come. Cause I can't hear them at the moment. So shall I do that? Yeah, if you, should we get, get Mel in? As, as Danny Briggs starts new over and he's whacked on the full toss here, but no timing. A sprawling stop by Alex Davis, two-thirds of the way back to the fence. But he's come down the wicket to meet that on the full toss, Kashif Ali, and he tried to give it everything. And he's rather clothed it. Phil will be back. Take over from me in half an hour for one more stint today. Mel is going to pounce in. As uh, Danny Briggs floats one up, clipped towards short mid-wicket. Barnard down to pick up. No run. The wind has changed direction, but lower down anyway. Briggs once more. And that's another full toss, which will be turned around the corner here. Should only be a single. Booth comes in to pick up from the mid-wicket boundary. 
And that one, rather than one that was made by coming down the wicket, that was a rather more authentic full bunger, that from Danny Briggs, who's none for ten in his seventh over. Approaches once more. Full turned off his toes for another single. Cashy Valley 84. 215 for two. And the grand staff are moving away from the... See? They're moving away from the hover cover now, Melinda. Well, I, I, I told you early on, full day's play. I had confidence. And so far, it doesn't count that uh, they went off a little bit no. early because they went off for tea. We didn't lose any overs, so we're still on track. Dare to dream. <laughs> well, uh, what I can say is the forecast improved dramatically on what it looked like earlier in the week. And tomorrow looks like it'll actually be a better day. Steamy tomorrow. Yeah. Briggs ran the wicket, turned towards mid-wicket by Jones. And as far as Barnard. The sun certainly shone on Worcestershire here today. Final ball of the over. A quick single. It's driven up to mid-off and Rushworth is fairly deep and it's a good choice of fielder. Jones 18. Worcestershire 216 for two. Twelve more overs until the second new ball when uh, Rushworth and Hannon Dolby will have another go. And in the meantime, Ed Barnard is going to uh, take over from Will Rhodes at the Birmingham end. And, and you know, Rhodes has bowled well, mm. but generally it's hard to know where the next wicket's coming from today. Well, that's what I said early on. We've seen attempts to, to d implement a funky field, if you like, uh, a few times. And they've spread the field. They've brought it up. They've brought in slips. They've brought in catching covers. They've, they've done all sorts, but uh, it's been difficult to see where it's going to come from and look yeah this is this is part of using the kookaburra ball uh in the plan is is to basically see what the bowlers i think can do if the ball's not hooping around in the early overs of the season mm. i thought that perhaps that can sometimes flatter bowlers and and if you know they're, they're going to have to adapt and work out different ways to take wickets with the kookaburra ball, whether it's, whether it's finding an extra yard of pace, if it's, being, if it's just ad adapting your lines to make, and your lengths to make sure that you're still getting the right amount of movement. VBC CWA may, may, may be coming for a, uh, an update, or somebody might be in just a moment. Jones, yeah. you know, well, Jones is in, and uh, that ball's just, oh, sorry, Barnard's in, and that one's just pushed back by Jones, no run. Just have to listen to what's going on in our mm. ears for a moment to see what they do. I'll shush very quickly <laughs> if I hear them say something. As oh, Barnard, no, 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 that no. was just a little teaser from BBC Wales. They've gone away again. Not, not Wales. Oh, uh, wasn't it? But as Barnard comes in, I don't know where they are. That one's slashed away firmly down to deep third, all the way for four. So nice boundary there from Jones, who's finding his, his feet nicely out there in the middle. It's now 220 for two. Jones on 22. Kashif Ali, 84. Edging closer to that milestone. And wouldn't it be something to see him get there? What a wonderful story that would be. <laughs> I, I don't know where we're getting this stuff in our no, ears. No, 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 no. It's BBC W. I'm getting a message to them. Yeah, BBC W, because at the yeah. moment, I've got Addicted to Love you, playing in my ear. You, you might as well face it, you're addicted to cricket. <laughs> uh, it, it's quite hard doing this with that in your ear. In comes Barnard, and that is just pushed at, really, firmly. But uh, just into a diving cover. Alex Davies, I think that is out there. Oh, no run. It's... Uh, are you, is that Rob Palmer? Robert Palmer? It is, is Robert that? Palmer. Well, yeah. um, that's a bit of a music trivia that's question. Very good. He was from Batley in Yorkshire. Really? He was, yeah. I did not yeah. know that. Wow. Well, he's in my ear at the moment as Barnard comes running in. It's defended into the covers by Jones. No run. If I remember rightly, off the 1985 album Riptide. Wow. Uh, nah, see, I couldn't have yeah. gone that far. 
yeah. I was struggling to get, well, the, the name of the artist. Batley, hey? Batley. I've never been to Batley. You honestly don't know what you've missed. Uh, is it? And it's near Dewsbury, isn't it? Batley and Dewsbury are quite close. Yeah, I've been uh, to Dewsbury. Yeah. Had fish and chips at Bru Drew's Dewsbury as Barnard is in. And again, this time Jones fends it to the onside. Defensively, no run. As you know, I've been to a lot of places in Yorkshire. Uh, you know, being a rugby league girl. Oh, of course. Um, and the first job I did over here when I came over out of university was uh, was working on the Super League as a director's assistant on okay. the coverage. <coughs> so I went to a lot of places in the north as Barnard in again. This one pitches just outside off stump and it's just sent in front of point. And where it's fielded it easily. Oh. Two, two, two for two. Um, uh, no, they've taken it off. They just, they've taken it off. They've gone back to 220 for two. They had, they had two, two, Did they? two up there for a second. Yeah, I, 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 oh. I think you just saw it because you no, wanted it to did. see it. No, it did. It did. I swear. It's the end of the over, by the way. Uh, I'm, I'm, and it is 220 for two. I'm going to have to ring the station to get rid of the music in our ears, so bear with. <laughs> It's still going. It's, it's sort of pleasant, but it's quite difficult to talk with Robert Palmer in your ear. That's no offence to Robert Palmer and the successful career that he's had. Uh, although I probably couldn't tell you any other song that he sang in the trivia. What, question. Robert Palmer? Yeah. Simply Irresistible? Oh, that. okay. Yeah, no, no, that's fair enough. They're the only two then. Briggs is on. Just turned around the corner. It doesn't go far, but they're able to scamper a single. Are you you calling them? Um, I, I know what's going on, and they're trying to sort it. So, uh, well, yeah. I'll let you take over for Briggs. Yeah, yeah. I thought so you were calling them. Johnny and Mary. It's another Robert Palmer song. Used to be the Renault advert for years. Ah. Oh. Two hundred twenty-one for two. Oh, please get a single because then we will have a Richie. I'll have to let you do that justice when it happens. Oh, I'm, I don't do a very good. Richie, I'm not good with impersonations unless the kookaburras. As, uh, the ball is pushed at mid on the uh, next delivery from Danny Briggs by Rob Jones. And uh, there's no run. Oh, it's definitely on. It is it's gloomier. They, they, they just, do they just keep getting the overs in until they're bold? They will do today, won't they? As this is uh, stabbed out into the offside and there's no run. 26 overs is going to take us probably till about 25 past six. Well, that's if all right. It, if it doesn't Before get too dark, we should yeah. be okay. That, the light could be an issue. Mm. This is floated up. Much more air under that. And pushed out back to the bowler. He's actually floated up quite a few, Danny Briggs. Not afraid to uh, toss it up, which I don't mind seeing. There's not getting a heap of turn. Certainly giving up some air. Oh. Turn around the corner. For at least a single. Oh, In fact, I'm they're going to come back for two. Yeah, and that's ruined it for you. 223 no. for two. Oh, I'm very unhappy about that. There aren't that many occasions where you do get that score. So, ah. Go on. Just, no, just do it. Just, just, do, just do it. Just no, have your Richie moment. No I, no, I can't because then it ruins the special nature of it when it when it does okay. arise. It's, it's, it's two for 223. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the sun's out again, speaking of light. Yeah, it's in and out like a dog at the fair as uh, the ball is pushed back to Danny Briggs once more. Like a oh, dog at the fair? In and out like a dog at the fair, yeah. I've never heard that no, expression it's, before. Uh, it's archaic, isn't it? Is it? It's, it well, <laughs> I don't think there's any reason why you would hear it anymore. I just thought I'd vary the language a bit. Uh, 70 <laughs> overs gone, 223 for two. Cashy Valley 85, Rob Jones 24. And this partnership now is worth 43, so that's building nicely. And the home team are running out of ideas again with the new ball 10 overs away. wonder whether we will see anything from Jacob Bethel or even uh, some spears from Dan Mosley before we get to that 80th over. I know, it's, it's one of those things I wonder if, if having the Kookaburra in, we're really going to see pace making a difference in these early rounds for anyone who's actually got that extra yard of pace as 
Hanag comes in. Well, they drops that one in short, and it's pulled by Kashif Ali. But even though it's the short boundary, he didn't really get a lot behind it. It's easily fielded at deep square leg. It might be interesting to see how Jason Holder bowls later on for Worcestershire in this match. That not just his height, but his, I guess, extra experience with the yeah. Kookaburra. But, but not necessarily express pace. No, he's not. Uh, there isn't a lot of natural pace in this match. Um, Finch can bowl a heavy ball for Worcestershire. Yep. So um, he might get something out of it. It's interesting, you know, only one bowler anywhere in the country so far today has taken more than one wicket, uh, and that's Dane Patterson. He's got four uh, wow. for knots in the game against Essex. Essex, 172 for five. Um, and Patterson is not a bowler of great pace, but of real guile. Jones on strike as Barnard comes in, and it's a fuller delivery, but just punched into the covers. No run. Do they use the Kookaburra in South Africa? Dane Can Patterson you? used to the Kookaburra, yeah, therefore. Yeah, I'm quite sure they use the Kookaburra there. Yeah, they do. Use a kookaburra there, New Zealand, Australia. Like a lot of places they use it. There are a couple of other. There's a Joma ball, I think it is, isn't there, okay. in Pakistan. Yeah. SG ball in India, of course. As Barnard is in once more, and that is just flashed at. Goes behind point, but there is a fielder down at deep third, so that keeps it to a single. And now move on to two... 25 for two. Mm. New Zealand's kind of bucket list for me. I'd love to go to New Zealand sometime. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. Good. And great cricket grounds. The, uh, Of course, in Wellington, it's it's basically a roundabout. It's a, it's a big it's roundabout. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's, it's, it's quite extraordinary. Barnard in once more. And this one's just driven straight back to the bowler. Doesn't completely stop it, but enough to prevent a run. Uh, and then Hagley Oval is the other one I've been to yeah, there, what, which is Christ beautiful. Is yeah, in yeah. Christchurch. It's basically in the middle of a massive park. Nice. Uh, very, very nice. I was I was there. The only time I've been there was when Bre Brendan McCullum scored his 54 ball 100. Oh, broke, well, there you go. Broke the record. You chose your moment. Uh, it was one of the wildest innings I've ever seen. Barnard, that's a full ball floated up, I think, uh, out the back of the hand, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, but it's an outrageous slower ball that oh. is from Ed Barnard. It's almost a moon ball. It was. It, it, it floated. It, it took me a bit by surprise. Wow. Um, but it's, you know, trying everything. Yeah, that Brendan McCullum innings. Yeah. I, I, I have, there are some innings that you see when you actually have a, a really strong memory of where you were sitting and what you were doing. Barnard. In this time, he's dragged the ball down, pitched a bit shorter than that last one. It just dribbles down to deep third for a single to finish off the over. 226 for two with Jones on 25. Kashif Ali on 87, the unlucky number for Australians. True. Because uh, it's 13 short of 100. But yeah, that I, I remember we were in a, a tent, like a marquee. There was no press box as such. And I remember sitting next to Jeff Lemon, who's often commentated yeah. on BBC. Yeah. We were sitting next to each other, and it was such a crazy innings. He basically took line and length out of the equation because he was jumping around his his crease like a jackrabbit. He was all over the place, playing just the most ridiculous shots. And we kept looking at each other and laughing, and I have such a strong memory of exactly where we were sitting and the laughter involved, because we'd never seen anything like it. I think we're in danger of an interruption, by the way. Oh, are we? Oh. The grand staff are out, and the public are getting fidgety, and so too are the umpires. Danny Briggs is going to continue, and he's cut behind square for four. That's beautifully played by Kashi Fali. He'll move into the 90s, looking for a first, first-class century in his career. He's 91 not out. was put down on 34. He's batted very well since then. And he'd dearly love to get to that three-figure mark before there was any interruption Correct. to play. Don't want to be going inside Correct. like that, do you? It's a joyous occasion watching Brendan McCullum make 154 balls for you. Because I saw him make his 150-odd here in the T20 for uh, the Bears against Derbyshire. There's oh, just a bit of a leading edge about this from Kashif. does look like there might be a bit of moisture in the air. 
Yes, my desire to head to New Zealand was increased still further a couple of weeks ago at uh, the Glee Club in Birmingham. I saw a couple of Kiwi comics who were both very funny. So this is driven and uh, captured in his follow-through, diving to his left by Danny Briggs. Hang on, are you a member of a Glee Club? You don't have to be a member. The Glee Club it in town is... Uh, what is a Glee Club? No, no, here it's a comedy club. Oh! As this pushed forward into the offside. Not as I'm not doing singing and dancing and musical theatre as much as I enjoy it. Their knees just wouldn't cope. <laughs> but, but 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 yeah, there, there is. It, it's a very good comedy club in the centre of Birmingham, oh. in the Arcadian, and uh, the two, two of uh, New Zealand's finest current comedy exports were there about a fortnight ago. I mean, I just saw you in a whole different light for a second there, oh, Richard. Leg warmers, as uh, this is floated in by Danny Briggs. It is getting dark. Mm. Defended by Cashy Valley, who may be protecting his 91 rather than thinking about the next nine if uh, if there is to be an interruption. Might want to be careful. Alex Davis is three quarters of the way back to the fence in case he goes down the wicket and he doesn't. He blocks it out. And uh, Ed Barnard is running in wanting to start the next over because he knows that the conditions at the moment aren't great for the batsman. 230 for two, Worcestershire, though. And having done the hard yards, these two will not want to give it away. Jones has 25. Cashy Valley 91. Their partnership is now worth 50, by the way. So uh, that is the smallest of the three partnerships. The umpires, Messrs. Saggers and Lloyd, are conferring. And uh, whether there's much rain in the air or not yet, it, it's if they want to get the ground covered preemptively, if they think that there's uh, significant... For those things where, well, you just don't know with light if they go off for light, if uh, it might be difficult to get back on again. But yeah. then sometimes you can have that sort of evening sunshine burst that comes through if the clouds clear away now that daylight saving has started. The lights aren't on at full pelt yet uh, I don't know how much they'll do if it gets really dark they haven't checked their light meters yet but they're giving an indication as a seamer they've come off so Rob oh. Yates is going to come on and, and that is interesting in itself because that would suggest that Jacob Bethel is probably not yet fit to uh, be bowling so Rob Yates is going to come on for his bowl first bowl of the season Mm. So, uh, with very little warm up. Yeah, just uh, all of a sudden it was your own son. So, doesn't bowl a, a lot in first. Does it bowl at all it? in first class cricket? Oh, yeah, yeah. Robbie Ace has done quite a bit of bowling. Oh, yes, yes, he has. He's yeah. got eight wickets. Yeah, he's done. In first class cricket. I've even seen matches where he's been the front line spinner. Mm. And they've been a little bit short in his time. Yeah, he's, he's bowled in 33 innings, in fact. Best of two for 45. It's a big ass to suddenly say, come on, son, you're on. But such is the state of things with the light being well, as dark as it is. Well, it's good that Warwickshire's desire is to stay on the pitch because they could have yeah. taken the opposite position there and said, actually, I tell you what, Let's go in and regroup. We've got eight overs to go till the new ball. Just looking at the radar, just a little pocket, little pocket of rain-bearing cloud. And if it misses us, and it may be that dark stuff that's just overhead now, just emerging as we look from the front of the pavilion. Jones on strike as Yates is in. The first ball just turned to square leg. I'll get a single from that one. He got a little bit of grip on that as well, Rob Yates. That was, that was just offered in as it as it pitched. Offered into the pads. It was slow turn, but there was a little bit there. That might encourage him. Maybe it might. This could be the the sudden turn of events that that changes things for Warwickshire a bit. They've had rough going of it all day. Have the home side. Is Yates in once more? Floats this one up. It's very full and it's. Very respectfully pushed back to the bowler by Kashif Ali. And it could equally be the break that pushes Kashif Ali into a, two shots to 100. <laughs> All will be revealed as this ball is floated up outside the off stump and it is absolutely creamed through extra cover all the way to the boundary. So he does take the aggressive route, Kashif Ali, to the new bowler. If he thinks he's innocuous, then he may as well play a shot or two, and that's what he's done there. 
takes him to 95. So just five runs short of a century for Cashy Fally. And oh, what a remarkable achievement that would be for him coming in to Worcestershire here at the first game in the top flight. And he waits now as Yates is in. It's again a full delivery, very full Yorker length and just tapped towards mid-wicket by Kashif Ali. So he remains on 95 and just has a look around. Square leg is going back to the boundary. So his protection on that short boundary it's just in front of square leg. Kashif Ali has another look at that fielder out there. Making sure he knows where he is. Yates is in once more. Well, he tapped it towards mid-wicket. And then there was a big shout of no as he started to trundle down the, the pitch. Sent back. So just a, a little bit of tension as this milestone is near. Yates comes in another full ball. And again, this time it was just fine of mid-wicket. So he still doesn't get the run, though. And that is the end of Rob Yates over. I'm giving up those four runs at boundary ball, but he didn't yeah. have much time to warm up or get into it, did he? 235 for two. He, Jones is on 26, but the tantalising score is Kashif Ali on 95. I think Alex Davis has now reversed his thoughts from the previous over in that He's now in showing the intention to replace Danny Briggs with the seam of Michael Booth, and that will inevitably send us off for a hiatus for bad light. So, um, having seen that one over from Rob Yates, that was enough to make Alex Davis's mind up, and bad light is going to stop play here at, uh, what, coming up to 5-5. Five to five. And it'll be interesting to see how long this break is for. Uh, we have had periods of sun, but this is as as blocked in that we've seen the cloud at any point today, in truth. So 73 overs, 235 for three. Kashif Ali, who had that life on 34 when he was put down by Rob Yates, low down to his right at slip off Chris Rushworth, has batted beautifully now on to get to 95. Rob Jones with him has made 26. All three partnerships have been at least 50 so far today for Worcestershire. That's a credit to them. This one's worth 55 now as uh, we have an interruption here in proceedings at Edgebaston. We will be back with you as soon as there's any further play. But Bad Light is stopping things for now We're with a hint of rain approaching with Worcestershire 235 for two in their first innings.
Right then, it was a brief delay here at uh, Edgebaston, and uh, cheekily, the fact that they were going to bring on Michael Booth led to a uh, delay for Bad Light, and now when we resume, Danny Briggs will continue his spell instead. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, Melinda Farrell alongside Richard Wilford at Edgebaston. Uh, in theory, 23 overs remaining. Nothing on the scoreboard suggests we've lost anything uh, after that delay, which has lasted no more than uh, six minutes. Um, and I think because we're within, you know, we haven't lost as, enough to have lost eight overs, for instance. I think we're fine because we could have had an extra half hour. Well, it was quite funny because the, the sun actually came out full bore. It was yeah. bathed in sunlight uh, when the umpires walked out in the middle. Now, n not so much. There is still cloud hovering around and the ground is in shadow. I've got an update to do in about 45 seconds' time, which is quite appropriate. This what you're uh, resuming. Gives me something to say is that uh, Danny Briggs will continue. And Worcestershire, I hope that the interruption doesn't affect the concentration of these two who are well set. And it's Jones to face the first ball after the resumption, and he tries to turn it behind square leg. He gets a bit too much on it, and he hits it to Jacob Bethel, who picks up, and there's no run. Briggs is uh, white, look very white as he comes in left arm round the wicket, tosses this up, wraps his opponent on the pads. It was going down leg side, so it's a stifled appeal. And again, no run. At Edgebaston, 235 for two, Worcestershire. We've just resumed after a very brief delay for bad light. Amazing amount of cricket, considering the weather that's been around. And Worcestershire, back in Division 1 for the first time for a few years, have batted extremely well. They're on 235 for two. Kashi Valley is closing in on a maiden first-class 100. He's on 95. He was dropped on 34. Rob Jones with him on 26. A wicket each for Warwick for Will Rhodes and debutant Michael Booth, but they found it hard in the field after winning the top. Worcestershire 235 for two. That's Richard Wilford reporting from Edgebaston. And you missed little during that report because uh, just a couple of balls defended into the offside. And uh, Briggs will continue to wheel away. Pushing forward once more is Jones and no run. Often I'd call this bit the phony war, where you're just waiting for the second new ball, but whether it will have <laughs> any more to offer than the first one did is a moot point. I'll have to find a way. Briggs, this one down the leg side, there's an appeal, and he's been given. And is that a catch that's got rid of Rob Jones? He's gone for 26, and it looks like he's just tickled one down the leg side and been strangled. You don't see that so often from a slow left armour, but just as you were saying, they've got to find a way to take a wicket. They do. Jones will be bemoaning his luck there. He's been given for 26. Danny Briggs' first wicket of the season, and Worcestershire at 235 for three. Hey, he's just thrown his head back there as he trudges off. Uh, does Rob Jones and it, it just feel like it's an opportunity wasted. The batting conditions have been excellent today without with the ball not doing too much uh, but on that occasion he just went to flick it through the leg side just managed to get a tickle on at the ball angling across from Danny Briggs so that is the third wicket to fall and very much needed by Warwickshire but Worcestershire still in such a strong position As Adam Hose comes to the crease a new batter it's a very, very odd wicket, that, in many ways. But he, he knew he was out, Rob Jones. He he looked at the uh, at his bat in frustration after he was given. Burgess and Will Rhodes had slipped. Their reaction was instantaneous. So I think everybody has heard the nick out there. So uh, crucial wicket, really. And could and, uh, that be the opening that... Uh that they need still this light holds up if this weather holds up we've still got nearly an hour and a half's worth of play probably here today so still time for all sorts to happen the radar suggests we we ought to be all right here on in there's not much around so if that proves to be the case that's another good 22 overs of cricket and uh, not sure people would have expected that when they turned up this morning. Oh. As in comes Barnard. And that one's just guided down to deep third by Hose to get off the mark with a fairly cruisy single. He'll enjoy that getting off the duck so easily. Uh, he 
obviously was in Adelaide playing for the Strikers in the winter and then the Vipers as well. Desert Vipers in the, <laughs> the Desert ILT Vipers. 20. Must be fun making up names for franchises. There are some extraordinary ones, particularly in the Caribbean. There are some uh, wonderfully peculiar names. As over there, it's getting time for the Antiguan T20 tournament that I was at last year, which has got the best name of any tournament in the world. Go on, then. It's called the Cool and Smooth T20 Explosion. That even beats the Georgie <laughs> Pie Super Smash for me. The Cool and Smooth... T20 Explosion. Yeah. As in comes Barnard, Kashif, Ali... No, it's Hose now, actually. I've got the mixed up hoses now on strike. He's still on a duck. So that was Kashi Valley before. I beg your pardon. So he's now on 96. It's Cool and Smooth, a sponsor. Yes. It's okay. a, the name of a shop, basically like a, de depart a small department store. That's, that see, that's, sells a, all sorts. that's not the sort of business I would have expected to be. Co yeah. Cool and Smooth should be some tinned pina colada yeah. maker. Yeah. Was not Mr. Cool and Smooth a big supporter of cricket? as Barnard comes into full ball to hose and he's just punched that through the covers. It is going to the long boundary and slows up though, so they'll get another couple of runs for hose. It does keep Gashif Ali off strike. I think he'd just love to get that 100 out of the way. Surely Mr. Cool and Mr. Smooth are two of the Mr. Men. <laughs> they could be, couldn't they? <clears throat> I'd like that, but cool and smooth. It sort of says Caribbean to me as well. Okay. And T20 Explosion. It says so much in one tournament name. It's in comes Barnard once more. And this just goes to a well, backward point. So no, he won't get another run there. So Blast was taken. Yeah. He kind of, yeah. Bash oh, was taken. Bash. Smash. Yeah. A lot of other ones that just end up being, you know, initials. SA20, IL, T20, IPL. Yeah, okay. yeah. I know, but uh, yeah, cool and smooth T20 explosion. Because I always like the Georgie Pie big, big the mm. Super Smash. Barnard in, and there's an edge, and it's gone to slip. It's another wicket to fall. Hose is only briefly there in the middle. Departs for two. Barnard has his first wicket after toiling extremely hard without reward. So all of a sudden, things are happening for Warwickshire after a pretty difficult day. That means that Worcestershire now 238 for four after two wickets falling quickly. So that opening we talked about, maybe just getting a little bit wider for them to make some incisions into the Worcestershire batting, which has been very good today. Good low catch that from Rob Yates. Arguably a harder catch than the one that he put down when Kashif Ali was on 34. Because that is pretty low down. He's having to go forward to reach to it, but he gets two hands firmly under it. And the man who took, was it 29 catches last year in the championship gets his first of this season. Brett Dolivera pauses on the boundary rope and looks heavenwards before coming on to uh, join Kashif Ali at the crease. 238 for four, a double breakthrough. Adam Hose, who got frustrated by his lack of opportunities in Red Bull cricket during his final couple of, year, of years at Warwickshire, just wasn't going to look in at all. Unfortunately, on his Red Bull return to the ground, doesn't make a score. But a lot of time for Adam. He's, um, he's a cracking lad. Had him a couple of times on the uh, podcast when we were doing that, and uh, he will be frustrated. It does mean, of course, this match has two players from the Isle of Wight, which is always fun. Ah, Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight. I've been there too. Ventnor, right? Ventnor is yeah, on the Isle of Wight. Very yeah. good. Yeah. I well, we went over there before the ashes the last time and wandered around a ruined castle and I have no idea what that was. I've, I've, there's a theme. I mentioned Warwick being my first castle. I like castles. You, you, you never forget your first. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. Oh, but it's, it's the skipper, Brett D'Oliveira, coming... Into the middle now. His side has lost two wickets in the space of six balls. So just need a little steadying hand here from the captain. And he is on strike as Barnard commences his run up. He's in over the wicket to the right hander and he just plays that defensively into the ground and out 
to the offside. No run. End of the over. And what a terrific over that was for Barnard, who has bowled well without a lot of reward today, yeah. you have to say as well. 238 for four. Yeah, one for 29 with uh, from 13 overs. He and in Rhodes have been the pick of the seamers, which has been quite interesting, mm -hmm. really. Um, Booth also got a wicket. Chris Rushworth is doing some stretching now. But it's five overs till the second new ball is due. And Danny Briggs will now continue from this uh, pavilion end in Edgebaston. Footlights stay on. The ground staff are back in their dugout now. Football style dugout doesn't actually face the pitch. Uh, so this first ball sees Kashif Ali just lean forward and defend it out. Now, will we see this uh, talented young batsman make his first first class hundred? That's the next big story in this game. Waits and defends again. He's going to try and pick his moment. Uh, he's at a case of the nervous 90s. It could be. 26 years of age now. Born in Pakistan. Kashif Ali. Driving this into the offside. They'll take a quick single up to Chris Rushworth, who has a shy at the stumps. He judged that well, though, at Kashif. He was uh, slowing up by the time that the ball went beyond the wicket. Yeah, I was a bit worried about that slowing up. <laughs> Don't slow up when you're on 96 and you're running to the danger end. I don't care if you pass the umpire. Don't slow up. It's just three runs short now. I think he, I think he knew he was okay there. He has got a list A sentry to his name. His, his white ball average, 50 over cricket average, is around 50. Now he's some way behind that in red ball cricket, but we've seen what an accomplished innings this is. You know, it's, it's not a... But, it's not the end of the world that he's, he's had a chance. I mean, you, you have a life in many of your best innings. And set forward watchfully is Dolivera, the first delivery he's received from Briggs. Absolutely. It's what you make of that exactly. opportunity, right? You make the opposition pay. Yep. He certainly has done that today. Point has gone a little bit deeper to encourage a shot outside off stump, but it will actually go out to him as well as uh, driving, but without any timing was Dolivera. It gets him off the mark. 240 for four. Worcestershire finally getting close to the first batting bonus point. It is 50 runs too high. That particular target. Brings it again. Coming down the wicket and lifting it straight. And that is going to be 100 in the grand style from Kashi Valley with a masterful straight six. Curves over, long on. And what a tremendous innings it is for him. A maiden first-class century. Gets a good round of applause from his opponents as well. 171 deliveries, two sixes and ten fours. And a well-deserved innings. He's played some wonderful shots. That six-over point earlier, very memorable. Two wonderful back cuts as well for four. And now he goes through to three figures. And the first century on Worcestershire's return to Division 1. Goes to Kashif Ali. And what a wonderful story that is. Glorious manner of bringing it up. Just a little skip down the pitch. Just lofting it perfectly. And when you think he's played at Essex, Kent, Leicester, North Hants, not Nottinghamshire as well, but just eight first-class matches. This is his ninth to get his maiden first-class century. So a graduate of Saka, let's not forget that. The contribution that Saka have made to the game in broadening its horizons as Barnard comes in and this one has just played nicely down towards deep third. I'll scamper back for a second run. So Dolivera moves on to three. But what a wonderful story that is for Kashif Ali. And just great to see that there are different pathways now too. Uh, whether you have... Some who some players who might have fallen through the cracks of the traditional pathways, uh, where other means of for them finding themselves a professional contract. Sparnard is in. Oh, that one lifts up and whizzes past the shoulder of Dolivera's bat into the keeper's gloves. He's found a little bit of extra pace there, Ed Barnard. He's varied his pace to try and create, but it was a you know quite an orthodox. Good length, you know, outside off stump ball that accounted for Adam Hose, new to the crease, just fishing and 
They're trying to get something similar past Brett D'Oliveira. They've chipped away. It's just, it's just not been easy for Warwickshire at any point. Well, there is some adjustments. They've had some difficult things to deal with, although you would say winning the toss and electing to bowl first match of the season is a lay down Mazaire, isn't it, yeah. normally? Uh, D'Oliveira waits, and that's a full ball, full toss, flicked away and easily gets to the boundary. It was almost to the, at the boundary rope before he finished the shot. It went so quickly off the bat. So just straying somewhat, both line and length. Barnard. As we welcome back listeners to uh, Sport Extra, Worcestershire 252 for four. We've just seen Cashy Valley reach his first first-class century in the grandest of fashion, hopping down the wicket and nailing Danny Briggs for a straight six. Beautifully hit. He did have a life on 34 when he was put down by Rob Yates at slip, but it's been a tremendous innings from Cashy Valley. But it's Dolivera on strike now. Barnard comes in again. He strays down the leg side, not as full, but it's given the same treatment. Just flicked easily by Dolivera, who's raced to 11 off just seven balls. But he's been given a couple of gifts, really, by Barnard, who has bowled well today and not got much reward. He got the reward of Adam Hose, but then... He's just been carted around a little bit at the moment in this over. He's in again. This time it's a better ball, better line. It's full, and D'Oliveira can just punch it back to the bowler. Yeah, so uh, I was just rejoining us. We had a six-minute delay for bad light. Suddenly the sun came back out. And then two wickets going down in quick succession. Jones caught by Burgess down the leg side off the bowling of Danny Briggs for 26. Excellent piece of glove work from Burgess. And then Adam Hose nicking to first slip. Rob Yates taking the catch off Barnard for two. Barnard's in again. And it's just going to get a single, I think, off that one ball. Just dribbling off the bat. It's 257 for four now with D'Olivera on 12. Off just nine. Cashy Valley, 103 to his name. Um, he will remember this day for a long time, I imagine, in his career. First century in first-class cricket. Well, it's a dream come true. You, you mentioned that he, you know, different pathway from many other cricketers, and the fact that he's got his chance a couple of years ago when he was 24 to get into first-class cricket, and uh, he's played beautifully in white ball cricket. Now he's shown that he can do it in this format of the game as well. And that's great news for Worcestershire as they look to re-establish themselves in the top flight. As D'Oliveira prepares to face Danny Briggs, comes forward and defends back down the wicket. So I guess that's been a question for them. Jake Libby scored a lot of runs mm. for them last year, but they were quite reliant on him, weren't they? Well, we'd be delighted to see Gareth Roderick make a good half-century here today as well. This is onto the pads, turn around the corner, and uh, a sprawling stop there from Jacob Bethel at square leg. Sun's come out again. We've got shadows on the field, lengthening now. Briggs round the wicket, flights this up a little bit, driven with a hint of aerialness, as it were. I'm going to invent that word. But picked up by Barnard at uh, short mid on. Well, I invented swashbuckly. Buckley. Swashbuckly. swashbuckly. Forward in defence once more is D'Oliveira. A, a spider is making its way slowly across the window of our commentary box. Is it? Yeah, a little spider Where? just here. Oh. I don't know whether he's inside or outside. I suspect outside. Back of a length and left, well not left, missed. He's falling away as he tries to cut that D'Oliveira and in the end misses the ball. It goes through to Burgess. He was never balanced, D'Oliveira. He chides himself. To be fair, that's too small to be called a proper spider. <laughs> right the wicket once more <laughs> pushed out into the offside and there's no run Do you know, Melinda is never one to rely on the accent alone to let you know that she's <laughs> Australian <laughs> well when I when I grew up we're the, the main ones that you had were huntsman spiders that we had so I grew up on an orchard just outside of Orange it's the first time I've mentioned my hometown today which is very restrained is it, is it really the first time yeah I thought yeah. it was the second nope, time nope I have not mentioned Orange yeah. when, uh, when you said you were an orange girl I thought you meant your spray tan uh, 
<laughs> Excuse me, I've been been away for the summer. Okay, I'm sorry. not wearing, I've not got any spray tan on. Uh, no, so we grew up on an orchard, so out of town, and we always had a huntsman. They were probably about the size of my hand, and right. it would sit up in the in the corner as. Barnard continues his spell from the Birmingham end. To Cashifali, it's a short ball, uh, but it's really at a good line that meant Cashifali could just pull his bat almost uh, away in the end and just let it dribble off to the leg side. So we'd have a, 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 a spiders, a couple of them, these huntsman spiders, about yeah. the size of your hand that yeah. would sit You've up small hands. in the corner. <laughs> that I do have small hands, yeah. you're right. Yeah. But... It's there's still reasonable size. Big, it's big for a spider. Yeah, big for a spider. Barnard in, just offended, back to the bowler who just uh, takes it on his foot inside of his his heel, uh, and for some reason, I, d I mean I don't know what the lifespan is of spiders, but every year we would have a seven-legged one, and I don't know whether it was either the same spider who just had a very long life, or if there was some genetic thing with the spider family yeah. in our house that meant there was always a seven-legged one. Barnard in, just offended onto the leg side this time by Cashifali. You weren't using dubious pesticides in the orchard, were you? No, no, not dubious oh. ones. But I always remember the seven-legged spider because his name was Boris. Boris? Boris. Named after who? Karloff, Becker or Johnson? I, I have no idea. My father just told me his name was Boris. And so I knew him as Boris, the seven-legged spider who was always in our house and came out every summer. Size of my hand. Magnificent. <laughs> in comes Barnard. It's another short ball. Really lifted at Cashifali. He's able to just whip his bat around. Doesn't go too far uh, behind square leg. Enough for them to get a single, which takes them to 258 for four. And Cashifali is on... 104, Brett Oliveira on 12. Are they deadly huntsman spiders? No. Nah. Well, actually, apparently they're quite venomous, but they don't have um, sharp enough or strong enough pincers to actually okay. inject the venom. I, just, I often wonder how Australians survive. <laughs> well, they're the day. They're, they're fine. They it's look scary. Between the spiders, the snakes, not. and the really awful lager. I mean, it's just... Oh, please. It's just extraordinary that you any oh, survive. Oh, no, it's not bad lager. It's lots of good lager. In comes Barnard. That ball is just guided nicely down to deep third, running in by Dolivera, 259 for four. Yeah, people say they get scared. Honestly, if you went to Australia for three months, you probably wouldn't see a spider or a snake. And honestly, okay, you don't see them. I suppose it depends where you are. It does depend where you are, yes. But when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're having a pie by Sydney Opera House, you're probably not seeing a spider. No, and I'm not having that about the beers. Lots of very good craft beers at the moment. And unlike it, this country, they're actually served at a good temperature. Honestly, that's not a conversation <laughs> we want to have now. You're going to have to come to the attic. That's all ah, I'm saying. Oh, yeah. That's ne next time we're on duty Actually, together. That, look, I just want to say for those listening, that is the name of a drinking establishment. I'm not being, I'm not not being uh, drawn into. You're not being propositioned. Uh, or, no, or like no. some sort of kidnapping situation. No, not on this occasion. <laughs> Has it happened? <laughs> Has it? Well. Oh dear. Get some odd invitations. You never know. Oh, uh, Barnard. From the Birmingham end is in. It's a short ball and it's pulled hard. And in the end, well, there's a good rolling diving stop on the outfield, deep square leg. And then he looked over his shoulder. He thought it might have gone over his head and over the rope, but managed to stop and it. It's a heck of a stop from Danny Briggs in the end because it, it, ne it died before it reached him. I mean, it wouldn't have been the first time today that somebody's fallen for that trap. That's how Jake Libby got out, mistiming a pull trying to hit a six to the short boundary. And Danny Briggs took a great catch on that occasion. And this time it just died on him. But he did well to stop it with his body. 260 for four. 17 overs to go. We're one over from the new ball. Ooh, the excitement builds. Yeah, yeah. can we have a duke, please? Please. <laughs> Worcestershire, well, no, Worcestershire should be very happy with another kookaburra. As uh, Danny Briggs prepares to bowl a new over. Alex Davis 
Um, almost the furthest away from the bat. He's coming up towards long on here. See, uh, concern that Cashy Valley might try to go long again. He doesn't. He just dabs the ball back down. Alan Dolby um, is warming up. He and Rushworth, the two opening bowlers, are wicketless so far today. Although Rushworth could easily have had one, but for uh, a spill by Rob Yates. Briggs is clicked into the leg side and there's no run. Certainly one thing that's different from this morning is the the wind is not nearly as, as ferocious as it was when no. it was blowing Oliver Hannon Dolby off course. Briggs flights this up and it's uh, played back up towards him once more by Kashif. Worcestershire are also going to make a conscious decision as what they, what they want to get to in the 110 overs as well. You would think they'd want to get to 400 but it's starting to get a bit of a tight chase, that. This is driven back to Briggs again. I mean, the way the morning session was going, you thought they were going to go for the 450 in the full set, but that would take more than six and over now. Briggs fires this one in, and it's pulled round the corner for four. That wasn't his best, Danny Briggs. Just trying something a little bit more fancy, because I think he knows these are the last two balls he's likely to bowl in this spell. And that was uh, turned around the corner very well by a set batsman. 109 for Kashi Valley. Well, just sat up perfectly for him, didn't it? Uh, and it, look, they did score really quickly. They were going at six and oh, they were going, got 10 off the first over, I think. And they were going at a rapid pace early on when the ball was new. So maybe they might feel Worcestershire that with the new Kookaburra, it might just come onto the bat uh, a, b a bit better, give them, give them more scoring opportunities especially with Kashi Valley well set. Briggs once more forward comes Kashi Valley end of the over. That's 80 gone, so it is new ball time, and Hannon Dolby is immediately striding towards the crease and taking his cap off. So 16 overs to go. I think Contrary and Warwickshire, BBC CWR are going to come for a report at 5.30. Do you want another quick break while Phil's still here, or well, it's up to you, Mel? It's up to you. Well, you can stay, you can stay. <laughs> Everyone's like, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? That one of those things where no one wants to say what they yeah, want. See, this is, again, the difference between Australia and Britain. We're all going to say, oh, I don't mind, I don't mind, it's up to you. No, oh. you decide. I, I don't mind. How long have we got? We've got now, I'll tell you what, we've got, we've got, we'll fight we've, nip we've got, off. 16 overs. I don't want to give you too much information, but I might nip to the loo. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I don't know quite which bit of information it is that you haven't given us. 264 for four. Wow. It's been a day, isn't it? The start of the season. And the thing that Mel brings such enthusiasm with her to the opening day of the cricket season, it's wonderful. It really is. It makes it, you know, We're just happy to be here watching cricket, and given the weather in the last week, and particularly the last 24 hours, none of us would have expected to have seen so much cricket. If we, if, we, if we keep it with me this over, just uh, can say we may well be an update in the midst of it, but Phil Britt from Warwickshire County Cricket Club, curator of the museum, and an edge master. And loo break. In, in yeah. <laughs> and toilet <laughs> attendant <laughs> extraordinaire. <laughs> oh, dear. I hope she's taken 20p to pay the place. fee on the door. Yeah. Um, we haven't reached that point yet. Football clubs will do that soon. Charge you to use the loo. You can see it coming. <laughs> 264 for four. This stand worth 26 at the moment. It's Donivera who's waiting for Hannon Dolby to approach. If the light holds 60 more overs today, I think that might be a little bit tight, though. We'll see. As Hannon Dolby comes in, and it's a short, wide, slow ball that Donivera does well to reach in the end. Dan Mosley will give chase into the slow part of the outfield, and they come back for two. Um, that was very, very easily recognisable as a loosener. <laughs> 266 for four. How did he reach that? One-handed in the end, yeah. I think. Only a short man, Brett D'Oliveira, continuing such a rich family tradition with Worcestershire. And uh, has led this side really, really well. And they're proudly leading them in Division 1. If Hannah Dolby back of a length is guided down towards third man here, should only be a single. Mosley is across to do the fielding so we will update uh, BBC CWR shortly once they've got through their uh, football preview it's a rather steadier breeze now they're still still brisk the coats will stay on all day for the uh, spectators at the Birmingham end 
as Kashi Valley takes fresh guard for the seam of Hannon Dolby. That bat held high behind his head again and gets into position nicely to defend. In from extra cover comes Barnard and there's no run. Floodlights on but not needed at the moment. few grey clouds floating across from the left hand side hopefully they won't trouble us too much and then Dolby back of a length and that bounces quite high this uh, new ball that's interesting carries through to Michael Burgess and there'll be no run here comes the update yeah 267 for four Worcestershire batting well on their return to first division cricket Warwickshire finding it hard to make inroads throughout the course of the day indeed the first two wickets are rather given away Jake Libby holding out to the deep square leg boundary off debutant Michael Booth Danny Briggs taking a good catch and then Gareth Roderick batted well for 68 before fending Will Rhodes through to Burgess uh, century though for Cashy Valley he's batted quite beautifully the 26 year old his maiden championship century 109 brought up with a straight six off Danny Briggs just after Briggs and Ed Barnard had taken a wicket apiece, Jones for 26 and Hose on his return to Edgebaston for two. Brett D'Oliveira, the other man at the crease at the moment, the second new ball has just been taken, Worcestershire 267 for four. That's sort of the full review of the day there, mm. Phil. Yep. Let me, let me, I'll do this last ball and then you can, uh, you can describe Chris Rushworth's return to the attack. Unusual to see these two not having taken a wicket in... Yep. Yeah, it will be 27, 28 overs between them on the opening day of a championship season. This, uh, this is driven by Cashy Valley. Full ball from Hannon Dolby up towards mid on. There is no run. Michael Booth picks up 267 for four. And the Worcestershire batsmen have played them really well. They've, I don't think either of them have been at the top of their game throughout the day. <coughs> They've uh, struggled against the, the win, particularly with Oliver Hannon Dolby and Chris Rushworth quite got that nagging accuracy and uh, that ball which uh, moves about it uh, he struggled I think with this newer ball to be able to uh, get very much from it he's going to have another go here from the pavilion end he's uh, into his 14th over 267 for four he potentially got another 15 overs but I think Richard said I would be surprised if we got all 15 in before the close of play at the moment, the conditions are fine. It's pretty cold out there, though. I did go out to take some photographs for the for, uh, for the hundred and uh, the Kashif's hundred, and it was a uh, very fresh. The crowd has thinned down as the day has gone on, but still the hardy few have sat down at the Birmingham end as the sun does reappear. So two slips wait for Rushworth, who is on his way through to Dolivera. He's in and bowls, and this is glanced away down to fine leg. They run the first hard. They're going to come back for the second. That's good running. And back they get for a second run. So 269 for four. The element of knowing your fielder there, isn't there? Yeah. To some extent, in that uh, Han Dolby was never going to be able to swoop onto it. Came up with a wonderful diving stop in the uh, tail end of the morning session. So as things done, we could get through a complete day here, which you know, forecast, forecast much it? better for tomorrow yep. as well. A bit windy, they'd say, but Rushworth in, bowls, and this is going to be more runs. This one through the vacant gully area, down to third man for a single. And that's all it will be. Donavira seems to have come in with a real intent to be busy. Yep. Well, if Worcestershire can get through tonight, through these remaining overs, however many there are, <coughs> with f just four wickets down, six wickets still in hand, and be somewhere past 300, like 310, something like that, I think they'll be delighted with their day's play. That little... The only blip in the day was just after that rain break where they came back and lost a couple of wickets in consecutive overs. This one from Rushworth is clipped away by Ali through to the cover boundary, but uh, fielder out there for a single. 
roads out there. One more to the total, 271. Cashew goes on to 110. Alex Davis has spoken a lot to Will Rhodes in the field today. They've actually each made about 25, 30 yards to have a word with each other. And, uh, Rhodes may have another part to play with the ball yet before the close of play, you'd fancy. Rushworth in and again forward defensively. Oliveira plays that one back down the wicket and again there's no run. Yes, we have been incredibly fortunate here when you look around the country and see three matches in the Division 1, not a ball bowled on the opening day. And uh, and not all sort of in the north, uh, Lancashire, Durham and Kent. This next one, again, is played defensively. And testimony, I think, to the way the ground staff have performed to get this ground in such good condition with after all the rain we've had. It's remarkable. And the new drainage at this pavilion end may have left the ground a little bit scarred for maybe two or three more weeks, but it needed done. I mean, mm. this is the area that, yep. that the wall of water seems to come down to. Yeah. But uh, but this area has been very very good. There's one of the patch that is scarred away to our right where it has still been quite soggy. That's Rushworth Ian passed on by Lloyd. This one is played and dropped at slip. Uh, well, that's. A that series of drops, it's Bethel this time mm -hmm. at second slip. And Oliveira gets a life on 19, and that's the second serious chance that's been dropped off Chris Rushworth's bowling today. Yeah, that was steered and high to Bethel. He got, it was just above shoulder height to his uh, to his right. And he got both hands to it, but was unable to hold it. And I think Warwickshire are going to look back on their analysis of the day's play, and they will probably be very critical, I think, of their of, of their catching and uh, to a degree as well they've been a little bit tardy in one or two of their ground fielding yeah. during the day so not the best day for Warwickshire there are, there are four full chances that have been put down and, and to be fair all of them have been difficult chances but if you take a couple of them it makes a real difference Dan Mosley two in quick succession both very low down Rob Yates one that he would expect to have got to his right when Kashif was on 34 Kashif is still there at the moment. He's chipping it. Oh, and he's been caught quite brilliantly in the covers by Ed Barnard. That is an astonishing one-handed grab. It looked for all the world like it was going over him, but he's just managed to snare it one-handed, and Kashif has gone for 110, and he looks at his captain, Brett Dolivir, as if to say, did that just happen? A wicket for Hannon Dolby, but the credit absolutely has to go to Ed Barnard. That is a remarkable catch. Yeah, I was looking beyond him because it, it was a similar sort of shot to the one he played earlier, but a little bit further round in terms of the lifting it over the infield. Um, he got a six with one earlier in the day. And that one I thought was going to race away through the extra cover boundary, but brilliant timing and uh, ac aerobic from... Uh, Acrobatics, rather, from uh, Ed Barnard as he leapt up one-handed and took the catch. And Oliver Hannon Dolby delighted because it's turned a miserable day for him into a little bit better. He's looking at the umpires to say, I'm "Sorry, you're gonna have to give me out for that." <laughs> and it's a brilliant catch by Barnard, who's been very industrious with the ball today. He eventually, was rewarded with the wicket of Adam Hose, nicking behind for two, and now. A great catch by the man appointed vice-captain yesterday under Alex Davis in his second season, having come across from Worcestershire. Also the end of what was a magnificent maiden first-class 100 from Kashi Valley, who was given that life on 34, another drop off the bowling of Rushworth, but played some beautiful shots, two sixes that will live in the memory this season, one lifted over um, point for six on the short boundary side, but a really well-executed shot. And the straight six that took him to three figures off Danny Briggs. But that was, for First Division cricket, a real coming of age for Kashi Ali. Congratulations to him. And out yep. comes the uh, very tall, very strong figure of the former West Indian captain, Jason Holder, on debut for Worcestershire. Great pick-up for the next few weeks. Sadly, as he's pointed out in an interview, he won't see New Road as a player because of uh, the flooding. And he'll face Hannon Dolby, and it gets up at him a little bit. And he has to watch it as it just rolls past his off stump. 
They're going to keep a close eye, Jason Holder, but a really good pickup for a few weeks. A cricketer of not only immense pedigree, but of great character yeah. as well. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic. He and Oliver Hannon Dolby, who's bowling to him at the moment, we were talking earlier on in the day about height, and these two, six foot seven, six foot eight, they're two of the biggest men, you, tallest men you'll see in county cricket. Hannon Dolby in, holder forward, and he comes forward quite a long way, as you can imagine, with that stride. Dabs it out into the offside. Dan Mosley does the fielding. I was mentioning earlier today. Uh, when we were running through the team, that Holder for me has done so much to restore some pride <coughs> to the international game in the West Indies. Um, under his leadership, they looked a far sturdier test team than they had done for a long time. And uh, whilst he's had a little break from the test fold, I believe he is available again now. And he awaits Hannon Dolby, and that one goes past the outside edge. Good delivery from Hannon Dolby. There's a look back at the batsman over his shoulder as he's going back to his mark. And just the sense that Hannon Dolby, for the first time today, feels that he's hitting his straps. And that did shape a little bit. The first new ball did not shape much at all. This has been a good um, three quarters of an hour for Warwickshire. They've got three wick picked three wickets up and uh, just got themselves back into this contest. Having had most of the day, they've been on the defensive. Hannon Dolby... To Holder, that's a good leave outside off stump. They do back quite long. I mean, Matthew Waite coming in at eight, that's quite a luxury to have a, yeah, a player of his quality with the bat. Nathan Smith, the uh, Kiwi, um, signed as a pace bowler, but also very handy with the bat. And, and Joe Leach at ten. Yeah. Um, it's at the point in his career where he quite enjoys giving it a bit of a long handle there. And he's got see, the point is he's a good batsman with it. Yeah. So, so with his eye, um, a very good ten. So there's still plenty of work to do here for the home team. Just should have put themselves in a decent position in this game. If Hannon Dolby is in to hold it, and off the inside half of the bat, he's able to knock it down into the leg side, picked up by Booth on debut. And at the end of a successful over for Oliver Hannon Dolby, the man in his testimonial year this year, raising money for charity, cure leukemia, one that's benefiting in uh, the uh, Cricketers uh, Benevolent Fund as well. He's got quite a number of um, events, hasn't he, uh, yeah. organised? Yeah, he has, including one at Lord's. It's, um, enjoyed did it. Did you, you it, go to the dinner I, the I, other I night? I did go. Um, he invited me along to his uh, oh. his testimonial launch dinner last week. Good. I mentioned earlier, a really good panel of speakers. Ashley Giles, Jonathan Trott, Dennis Amos, Jason Ratcliffe was on the panel as well. Uh -huh. He's here today. I saw him earlier, former Bears bat. Chris Rutherford starting a new over, and he has got the outside edge, and Brett Dolladera is the next one to go, and Rushworth gets his wicket, and suddenly Worcestershire sliding a little, 271 for six, and the Dolladera goes. Uh, so Rushworth has a wicket. He should have had Dolladera in the previous over, but he's uh, made up for it. Low tumbling catch by the wicketkeeper, and... Warwickshire pick up a second bowling point. Well, that drop cost nothing, did it? No, nope, cost nothing absolutely nothing. And uh, Burgess taking a tidy catch there at uh, shin height to his right. First slip relatively wide, actually. And uh, very, very useful double breakthroughs. So that's two double breakthroughs, 235 and 238, just after the bad light stop play. And now two wickets going down on 271. Brilliant catch by Ed Barnard in the previous over. And now Chris Rushworth gets uh, a wicket that he will feel is overdue, having seen uh, two great chances go down off his bowling earlier. Although, you know, to be fair to Jacob Bethel, that last one came at him very, very quickly. Yeah, it did. But um, I think Bethel would be disappointed that he, uh, he put that one down. But it didn't cost him anything. So... You know, you consider Matthew Waite sort of a quite a, a strong, broad Yorkshireman, big hitter, sturdy customer. Then he stands next to Jason Holder. <laughs> it's, well, it's not fair, is it? It's not. It's not fair when people are built like that. Look at that. Well, was sure a slip from two thirty-five for two to two seventy-one for six, and uh, 
This new ball's got a couple of wickets already. As Rushworth in and Wait is behind that one, just plays it into the onside, and there's no run. Surprising how quickly a game can just turn one side completely on top for most of the day and then half an hour play and the other side gets back into it, such as the beauty of cricket. Matthew Wape is smacking the bat into the floor as Rushworth is in. That's uh, given plenty of air. And played back into the offside by Waite. The light's still holding quite well, so we're getting through these overs. We're not. If we're probably going to get most of them in, you know, Richard. Oh, yeah. Mel's going to be very smug if we do the full ninety-six overs. By I the know. Way. <laughs> really smug. This next one is turned away by weight, but uh, straight to square leg, and Booth comes running round and does the fielding, and there's no run. Both batsmen on naught. We've only had that once before today. That was at the start of the game, and that didn't last very long because I think the first ball went to the boundary. So uh, did didn't it? Just, just yeah, they just lent square leg. Just yeah. while they walked out, ready to face the first ball, and that was it. Here's Rushworth in, and Wait punches this one back down. He feels off his own bowling, and there's no run. So those spectators who've hung on, and quite a few have today, will be uh, pleased. Most of them will be Warwickshire supporters, one would think, that they've actually been able to see something positive for the Bears. That uh, terrific innings earlier on in the day from uh, Cashy Valley. As this one is cut away behind Square, down to uh, Man at Deep, backward point for one. So weights on his way, 272 for six. Six wickets to six different bowlers. Yes. There's a quirk. Yes. I mean, it's fair dibs. Yeah, just Rob Yates, who bowled one over, who hasn't got a wicket so far. Well, he preempted the bad light. He, he brought on the bad light. And that created a couple of wickets. So I think he gets an assist for that. <laughs> don't know whether don't know whether they'll mark that in them. They haven't come up with assist yet, have they? In cricket, yeah. but it won't take long. It'll I, be there eventually. Well, the beauty of cricket is that it, unlike football, it doesn't need people to try and staple a bunch of spurious statistics <laughs> into it because it's already full Got of perfectly plenty. good, <laughs> perfectly reasonable, and uh, meaningful statistics in it. Mm. Twelve overs left in the day, and Hannon Dolby. To bowl, oh, and for a moment it looked like Wait was going to play on there. Inside edge, narrowly evades his leg stump. Gathered by Burgess to his left. Actually, it was off stump that it passed. False shot. Gosh, that wasn't far away, was it? It's a thick inside edge, jag back. and But he gets away with that one. Oliver Hannon Dolby's mood will be considerably better than it was when he was two overs for 20 this morning, but uh, one for 52. He'll want more. This is a little window opportunity that Worcestershire have given Warwickshire here. Forward and just uh, gently playing it with uh, loose hands out towards point. His weight picks out Barnard and there's no run. I've been trying all day to find Nathan Smith's squad number. I'll just have another try. The problem is when he does if he does come out, they're wearing sweaters, so we won't be able to see his squad number on the back anyway. But uh, I'm trying to get it for the scorecard. Forty-one. Is that what it is? I've got no oh. idea. <laughs> I can't Look, believe you. I'll take that. any number at the moment. <laughs> Hand Dolby back of a length, but uh, forward with a stride, almost walking through the defensive shot. There is weight. Two hundred and seventy-two for six. Ed Barnard is keeping himself supple in case he's needed. Again, before the close of play, he might well get another go with a second new ball. Five seam bowling options used in all by the Bears, with Michael Booth on debut. He took the first wicket of the day. 
Your debutants around in this match, Holder and Smith and Jones for Worcestershire. And I'll be passed on by Saggers. And again, just dabbed with soft hands by Waite. He and Holder now will take some time to play themselves in. 78 runs required to get the 350 in terms of getting three batting bonus points in 25 overs. That is very much doable. 128 in 25 overs to get the fourth batting point. Um, to be fair, if these two stayed together for most of those overs, they probably would challenge that run rate-wise. Both positive players by nature. And Waite leaving a ball that was hanging in above off stump from Hannon Dolby. Gone a little bit quiet at the moment. As you should just trying to recover from that little flurry of wickets. A few spectators have drifted away now. A lot of the spectators, of course, today have sort of been in the indoorsy bits at this end yeah. of the pavilion if they yeah. can uh, keep in the warm. But for most of us, uh, the start of a new cricket season, it has this feeling of coming home. And it's great to see Edge Baston. On the opening day of the season, this one is just dragged down the leg side by Hannon Dolby. Burgess across to take it, left alone by Waite. End of the over, 11 remain today. Here on the BBC Cricket homepage, you can follow the live text throughout the course of the day as well. Shall I make way and let um, Mel, who's okay. now... Don't, don't, <laughs> don't. Whatever it was that she went to do, she's now done it. We accept that. You, you can do. Good grief, he's so indiscreet. I mean, she is too, but, but that was... <laughs> Thank you. Phil Britt will be back tomorrow, <laughs> part of the team tomorrow. Uh, I shall see you on Sunday. No, no, no. You'll see me in some week's time. Oh, you're not yeah, back no, again this no, game? No, oh, no, right. no, I'm here for the day. Oh, OK. <laughs> right, Richard Hosh, we'll see you then whenever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Phil. Phil and Mel will be here tomorrow. It's like a double act. Here's Chris Rushworth into Holder, and he beats the outside edge of the bat. And Holder looks around a little bit anxiously at Michael Burgess, but he got nothing on it. So uh, Brian Halford, Dan Whiting, and George Dobell will be around with Mel and Phil tomorrow. So uh, you will have a five-person team. Mel. Wow. I can't believe uh, you're even contemplating allowing me and George DeBell to be on the radio together. Uh, well, we might keep you apart. I don't know. <laughs> but listen, listen. Neither of you is going to come up with anything as good as James Bondite. So <laughs> I, 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 that's, that's, that's all I'm saying. Uh, Rushworth and driving at it is Holder and he plays and misses again. He's getting a little bit fidgety, even though he's only faced seven deliveries. Wanting to get off the mark. Yeah, well, he, uh, he probably comes into this game with a fair bit of expectation. It's high profile signing for Worcestershire, desperate to get himself back into contention. To in that West Indies test side. He missed out on the tests in Australia. He had a lot of white ball commitments that he had signed up for in the Australian summer. He still wants to be part of test cricket. He get off the mark this time. He's uh, wrapped on the pad and it goes back down the track until it hits the stumps at the near end and knocks the bales off, which uh, umpire Lloyd is not thrilled about, but he stoops to pick him up now. Dan Mosley could have stopped it before it got there. And uh, I've, I found out something incredibly exciting. So, Stuart Burley has uh, tweeted me uh, after talking about... Exed you. He's exed you. Uh, this, no, not ex. He's exed you. No, uh, no not exed. <laughs> Left alone outside. I'm still, that was very wide, that from Rushworth. <laughs> and is it a no ball? Is the umpire signalling a no ball? No, he isn't. It was two to go. It's all right. Uh, and uh, look, he's... he's revealed something about me about my childhood that, that i never knew do you know what he may not be alone I, I, i'll let you go first because i have a correspondent who might have done similar so go on well i was talking about the seven-legged spider that we yes. had every summer called boris yes he says hi melinda there is a very famous song by the who called boris the spider presumably that's why your dad named pet spider as a ball go, goes well wide down the uh, leg stump Pass a leg stump, left alone, of course. Uh, yeah, that's why your dad named your pet spider Boris. There you go. Well, see, BJ Evans, who is a person of few words, 
sent me an email that, and I'm going to read the. Have we got time before the next ball for me to read the entire email? Wow. Here we go. Here's the entire email. Yes. Check out the Who track. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. As <laughs> Rushworth is in, driven this time by Holder, and that's a beautiful shot through extra cover, and that'll have him feeling a whole lot better. He's off the mark in style with a four. End of the over. Worcestershire, 276 with six. Check out the Who track. Well, as I do, obviously I know the Who. I, I couldn't tell you their entire back catalogue, but... That's this is this is something about my childhood that I never knew until now. So I have to say thank you to everybody out there who's been listening today, who's, uh, who sent us tweets and, and emails because there've been a lot today. I think everyone's just very happy like we are to be back. It's cricket. And cricket. It's cricket. Summer, not yeah. yet, but sort of close. It's all right. We're inside. Uh, we are. It's Mind you, I do insist having the window slightly ajar. Partly so it won't cut one of my cables off, but that's neither here nor there. Well, it's it's definitely pleasant in here. But thank you for all of you who've been part of our day. As Oliver Hannon Dolby comes in and bowls, well, just a length delivery to wait, presses that into the onside no run. We've got another song in our ear now, but I yeah. can't name this one. No, I can't. No, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a bit like a Harry... It means nothing to people who are listening. It sounds a bit like a Harry Styles song, only it isn't one. So. Didn't know you were a Harry Styles fan? Oh, no, I really am. Yeah. No, genuinely, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, you don't need to apologise yeah. for that. I didn't say I didn't. Wait, wait, as Hannah Dolby comes in and that one just slightly strained down the leg side and turned around the corner. They'll get a single there quite comfortably. And so we've got the two men. So Hannon Dolby's bowling now to Jason Holder. And uh, Jason Holder, I think, has, has been, usually it says he's 6'8". He's Hannon Dolby, sometimes it says it's 6'7". Some things say it's 6'8". Jason Holder looks taller to me. Mind you, I'm looking from a long way away. And That's an me at a Harry Styles concert. Just, 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 just so way. you know, I'm just proving wow. it. That is a, he's wearing a pink hat with sparkles on it. As Hannon Dolby is in, just firmly defended, solidly there by Holder. You're wearing a pink hat yeah. with sequins on it yeah, that we, spell out dad. Correct. Or are they smarties? No, no, no they, are, they are sequins. Sequins. Yeah. With your very pretty daughter wearing a red fluffy hat. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There we go. So that's proof. Of true, true. Harry Styles, a Shinado. Yeah. Who's just seen him the once? But you see, twice. Twice. Oh, you are then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's proper. Yeah. Good pop music makes you smile. Oh, doesn't it? So does good cricket. Exactly. Here comes Han and Dolby. That one is just straight in at the stumps. To hold up, defends that one though. They, they like that one. There's a few hands on heads. From that delivery, yeah, just uh, it just got the thin side edge onto the pad, which stifled the appeal. I think it probably would have been going over if it if it had just struck pad. I think it would have been going over the top there. They're tall pads that Holder wears. Well, a tall bowler bowling at tall pads. It's probably there must be two of the two of the tallest in the uh, county championship. Have we got in action right now? They are right up there, aren't they? Days of Boyd Rankin are behind us. Oh, uh, well, in comes Anne and Dolby again. It, it's got a good bounce on it, but it's easily put down by Holder. So, of course, these two, I talked before about having sat down to interview Jason Holder and discovering that while sitting, we are exactly the same height. I've got a picture to prove it. So he's got long legs. It's all his legs, and yeah. A short torso. Yeah. Uh, Boyd Rankin, I have got a photo of me interviewing him during the first Ireland test against Pakistan at Malahide. And it is the funniest photo because, honestly, I look like Frodo's little sister. <laughs> it, 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 I, I look like I barely come up to his waist as Hannon Dolby is in and that one's just left outside by Holder as he takes a step forward and it's the end of the over. 277 for six with weight on two. And hold it on four. Yeah, it's I, I do look absolutely ridiculous. I'm just standing there literally <laughs> holding my mic 
directly in the air above my head at this giant of a man. And the cameraman, who was six foot four, is standing on tippy toes just to try and nice. get a decent angle of his face. Heights can be very deceptive. I, we used to be involved, my family were involved a lot with basketball over the years. And m my mom is only four foot ten. And, you know, so she's, a, she's a short woman. She's, um, she's fabulous. She was, she's the person who brought me to my first game here ever at Edgebaston. And ended my first day of test cricket. I shall come to the height difference thing in a moment as uh, Chris Rushworth continues and bowls and is driven beautifully by Wade. He'll get full value for that. That is your textbook straight drive from uh, Matthew Waite. Takes him into onto six. 281 for six. There's a guy, a guy from Manchester who was playing for the Chester Jets at the time called Alan Bannister, and he was playing basketball late 80s, early 90s, who was genuinely seven foot four. And if and my mum got on really well with him, and if you put 4'10 against 7'4, <laughs> the taller person looks twice the height of the shorter person, even though they're actually not. As uh, This is back of a length and defended up towards mid-off, with quite good timing from weight, picked up there by Davis, and there's no run. So I've got a report to do in the next few seconds, but it, it was just extraordinary how it looked like somebody was double the height of the other person. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, that's a challenge. I had to stand on a step interviewing Stephen Finn during the Ashes. It's a constant problem for me. <laughs> I'm five foot five. I'm not Perfectly tiny. Normal height. But, yeah, tall players are tricky. This next ball is wide and outside off stump and it's dispatched by Waite. That just sat up and waited to be hit. And he gets his second boundary of the over. Takes him to 14. Here at Edgebaston, Worcestershire, 285 for six in the final eight or nine overs of the day's play. Vital double breakthrough with the second new ball for Warwickshire. Ollie Hannon Dolby had Kashif Ali caught brilliantly in the covers high up by Ed Barnard. Kashif out for an outstanding 110. And then Brett D'Oliveira was pouched by Burgess behind the stumps of the bowling of Chris Rushworth for 19. All rounders Matt Waite and Jason Holder at the crease now for Worcestershire, who are 285 for six. This is Richard Wilson reporting from Edgebaston. So during that report, so the ball come off the thigh pad of weight down to long leg for a couple more runs. Will Rhodes is warming up as if he might be about to replace Ollie Hannon Dolby for the next over. We'll see whether that's the case. He's bowled well today as Will Rhodes. But these two look like they've weathered a little bit of the storm here. I've added 16 now for the seventh wicket. As Rushworth scuttles in once more. And Waite is cutting him again in front of square. There's a chase around the boundary rope. And a, well, it looked like a good diving stop, but he's missed the ball. And it's hit the rope. And Ed Barnard signals that that's four more. To wait his third of the over. He's up to 14. 291 for six. He's played some lovely strokes as Waite. We've seen a gorgeous, crisp, straight drive. We've seen him cut... I've seen just, just a, a range of very elegant but uh, exciting shots from him, I think. It's good yeah. to watch. Didn't try and overhit that. This is a full ball now that he can whip off his toes for a single out to the man fielding at deep mid-wicket, who is uh, Michael Booth. And a very productive over. 292 for six, and Will Rhodes is indeed going to come on. Hannah Dolby, one for 53 from 18 overs. He's really dragged his figures back after... Struggling in the early part of the day. Well, it's interesting the, uh, the the difference between the first new ball and the second new ball, and perhaps that shows that they've learned a bit from it. Also, perhaps the the, the wind not being quite, although it's still pretty nippy out there by the looks of the the flags and also the the sight screen, big white sheets opposite us. But uh, perhaps also there is this adaptation to the Kookaburra ball being used instead of the yeah. Duke's ball this time around. I think the gusty wind did play a part. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it's it, not so much of an excuse as, as a reason, really, why uh, things were difficult for a while. Well, and also while we're talking about the ball, we're not talking about the pitch. And, you know, if there's not much in the pitch uh, as far as seam movement goes, that obviously plays <laughs> into the hands of the batters if it's, if it's quite flat. So, of course, all sorts of different factors that, that play in. As Rhodes commences his spell from the city end, he's bowling to Waite, who tries to flick that one down the leg side, but 
He's missed that one. Just would have been a leg side strangle if he'd got a little feather on it. Uh, but Rhodes, one for 20 off his 13.1 overs. Bowled seven maidens, so he's actually done quite well. But there is this adjustment to be made with that kookaburra ball difference. In comes Rhodes again. And this time it's short and wide outside of stump. Slash and a miss from weight. The umpire has called it a no ball. So he's just having a look at the, the foot mark as he walks back. He like just kept a little bit lower than he expected. It, he'll try and kid himself that he, he, he heard the no ball call. But, <laughs> but you know, he, everybody knows he hadn't, but... Uh, uh, no danger because it had been overstepped there. So. Well, he comes in to bowl that one again. And this time, wait, just lets it squirt off the bat to backward point. Doesn't get a run. But he's he certainly lifted the tempo, his weight, since he since he came in. He's play, played some nice shots around the ground. Just looking at a little recovery after losing four wickets in a reasonably short space of time. In comes Rhodes again. He's on his toes, punching that one to mid on. No run. Yeah, that burst of four for 36 looks quite strange in the context of this game, doesn't it? It, it did. Well, a couple came before the new ball. Yep. Uh, it, just after that delay for bad light. Yes, yeah, so perhaps that disrupted things a little bit as well. That catch by Barnard at cover was absolutely cracking as well. Sometimes you need a bit of brilliance. As Rhodes comes in, he just plays across the line. An almighty swipe there from Waite. And that's another four runs. He really has put his foot down, Waite. He doesn't want to wait to get this score going again. Bit of a one-day shot in the, to the extent that he's dragged that from outside off stump, but he's done it with such certainty and confidence. It was a really fine stroke. Here's a score to 298 for six. So I think they'll be reasonably happy with that Worcestershire today. In comes Rhodes again. This time it's just turned around the corner neatly by weight, and they will get a single, which takes him to 20 takes the score to 299 for six. Cricket's full of what-ifs, isn't it? In that they'll be, when they were put into bat today, if you said, okay, you'd be 300 and odd for six at the close of play. Yeah, okay, we'd take that. But actually, mm. you look at, you were 235 for two at five o'clock, and then you think, okay, we may have thrown that away. It, it, it looks a fairly flat surface, looks a good batting track. It's the Kookaburra ball. It feels a bit 450-ish. I don't know. In comes Rhodes, and that's just left a little bit extravagantly by Holder as he waves his bat through the air. And it is the end of the over, so it remains 299 for six. Holder is on four. Weight is on 20. Yeah, it, it, but that does happen, doesn't it? I mean, so yeah. often uh, we see a little cluster of wickets falling. And then things just changing slightly. I, I actually just think this might be a really competitive game when it comes Good. down to it. Good. You know, yeah, I like yeah. to be positive. No, you do. And you do. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, it's going to be a really good contest. First up, I thought it would be. I thought it would be. I mean, we're only in day one. But I thought well, Worcestershire would be very up for this game. You've got to go to day three to work with my colleague, Mike Taylor, because the last time, the last day's cricket that you were scheduled to work with, together was at the <laughs> oval yeah he travels all the way down to the oval on a on, i think it was on a sunday night <laughs> ready for a monday morning's cricket and the match finished in 13 minutes yes <laughs> i do remember that quite well i felt i felt quite sorry for him i'm sure i'm sure my company was not worth <laughs> that <laughs> definitely not Is it you? Is it me? I don't it's know. You. It's Booth. Booth is coming back into the attack. <laughs> Michael Booth, who comes in and bowls on off stump and is driven up towards mid off, and there's no run. 299 for six. 
And the light's actually holding up reasonably well too. It's it's well there's still a lot of cloud around, it's quite high, so I thought it might be the challenge getting the overs in because of light, but it's okay. Booth once more driving and missing his weight, beating the outside edge. Well, it's been it's been quite aggressive weight and it's been good to watch and he's played some fine strokes. Gee, I think they'd really love to go in at stumps, just six down though. I have these two out there fresh in the morning. I think, as I said, the weather's meant to be quite fine tomorrow. Sunny most of the day. So it might be a good day for batting. Booth just back of a length, defended back down the track by weight into his follow through and no run. 299 for six. So, all in all, those four wickets just feels like it's even things up a bit. It's, it's, it's hard to say what really you would be expecting the score to be with a new ball, new conditions. That short boundary you think would be an encouragement. Pulled the next delivery out towards the deep square leg fielder. And that's the 300 up for Worcestershire. A second batting point. Wait quickly on to 21. And they get there in the uh, 90th over of the day. It's been a good performance. They flew before the lunch interval today. 123 <laughs> runs in the first 30 overs. It's uh, been just under three and over since then. Putting a good, solid total on the board. And Booth has lost his run-up. Second time he's lost the run-up. It's uh, seen a lot of that today. Yeah, well, I mean, Alan Dolby five times, four in his first spell. Yeah. And now a second time for Booth. And the, the breeze has changed direction a couple of times in the last minute or two. Yes. I mean, he's not, he's not <laughs> quite the same height. He's not quite the high-sided vehicle that Oliver Hannon Dolby no. is, Booth. Booth full outside off stump and an extravagant leave from Jason Holder. He does do that. It's, got, it's quite an elegant yeah. leave. It takes his time doing it. He's very sure of it. It hasn't got the comedy value of uh, Courtney Walsh. <laughs> I, th I thought you were about to say Steve Smith or Marnus Labuschagne. They're the biggest oh, comedy leavers Steve that I know. Steve Smith is ridiculous. Of course, Labuschagne is an imitation of Steve Smith because <laughs> everything he does is an imitation of Steve Smith. <laughs> Don't tell him that. Oh, I think he knows. This is full, a drive and a miss, and it goes through the wicketkeeper, and that's an unlucky over from Michael Booth. He's bowled pretty well there. 300 for six at the end of it. Six overs remaining on the day here at Edgebaston. It is really troubling, Jason Holder, there. It's been a, a good comeback. There have been times they've bowled well, and there have been times that have just seemed to be, uh, just not rusty, but yeah. just not quite sure of... of I have what the lines they're going for, what lengths they're going for. If, if, if Warwick should sure. have the morning session back, they'd love that and have mm. another go at it. I think they they bowl well this afternoon to contain Worcestershire. Mm. So, I mean, since the uh, lunch interval, it's been 177 for five. So much more even game. Yeah, it was that first session that really made the difference. Yeah. And as we've said, it's Worcestershire's first day up in the top division, so it'll be a nice settler for them, I think, just in, in getting those runs on the board in what they well, undoubtedly feel is something they can work with, especially oh. after losing the toss and being yeah. sent in. You would normally think first day of the, the season, you might be in a bit of a trouble. As in comes Rhodes, this one is just clipped very fine and it's going to run all the way to the boundary for another boundary to wait who is dealing in ba in boundaries a bit that's four times i've said that word in space of 20 seconds but he is dealing in them isn't he, he? is he is and at least you're not doing the he scored one six and four boundaries because when you actually mean one six and four four <laughs> so when they do that they do that a lot on the uh, ipl coverage you know okay okay i promise i won't call it a maximum oh, if it goes over yeah, the road no, don't mind it in a way, it's different. Uh, welcome back, by the way, listeners to Sports Extra for the dying embers of the day here.
Here comes Rhodes to wait. Again, it's down the leg side, but goes straight to the keeper. Past the bat, no run. You rejoin us with Worcestershire 304 for six uh, into the final half a dozen overs of the day. Been uh, well, it's ebbed and flowed. It was uh, Worcestershire's morning session and uh, largely their afternoon session, but uh, they collapsed, or mini collapse anyway, from 235 for two to 271 for six. Matthew Waite and Jason Holder steadying the ship at the moment. And it's Rhodes. He's in over the wicket and just to press forward and defend from Waite into the covers. No run. We've seen an outstanding maiden first class century from Cashy Valley. He made 110 today. 68 for Gareth Roderick. 38 early on for Jake Libby. The uh, six wickets taken by six different bowlers on this opening day. Yeah, had to work hard for them, it must be said. They're in the wind. In comes Road. One of them who's worked hard. Again, ball just pushed into the covers for no run by Wait, who's muscled his way to 25 off 33 balls. It's been actually quite an entertaining little innings from him so far. Well, he was given two fours down the leg side in quick succession, wasn't he? Uh, it was at the end of a spell from Ed Barnard, mm -hmm. just before the second new ball. Yeah, he's played a lovely drive. He's cut well. He's looked good. He's on strike now. In comes he. He's whipped his hands around there and sent the ball down to deep mid-wicket, straight over the boundary rope. Another shot across the line. He scored a boundary out there a couple of overs ago. And that's another one for Waite, who moves on to 29. And a score to 308 for six. Yeah, he's been very stern on anything short. He's been able to dispatch it offside and leg side. And it gives them the sort of momentum that means Worcestershire have got a real chance of getting to 400 in 110 overs to get that fourth batting bonus point. They'd be pretty happy with that first game, first oh, innings yeah. of the season. The wait, waits. And this one is just angled down the leg side a little bit by Rhodes. He just flicks it around the corner and they'll get a single to finish the over. It keeps weight on strike and the score is 309 for six. Wait moves briskly onto 30 off 35 deliveries. Hold up, much more circumspect. He's scored one boundary, and that is his only scoring shot off 18 deliveries ball that he's faced. It's been an interesting first day as county captain for Alex Davis, that's for sure. Marshalling his bowling attack. He's used seven bowlers, albeit uh, the one over from Rob Yates. The off spin was... Uh, Largely to stave off the threat of bad light, which then did take us off for all of six minutes. And it meant we didn't lose any cricket. We are on schedule to get the full 96 in, although it is getting a little bit darker as Booth begins a new over. And Waite is able to kill that one outside off stump. And it rolls out into the covers. And it's picked up by a slightly world-weary Ed Barnard, who took a terrific catch to end the innings of the Centurion Cashy Valley, giving Hannon Dolby his... Wicket. Yeah, that was an absolute screamer. Just the one hand as he twisted his body around. Yeah, leaping up oh. its uh, extra cover. It, would, it was quite a screamer. Uh, fishing outside off stump is weight. Booth is unlucky. He extends his follow through a little bit to make sure that the batsman's aware just how unlucky he feels he's been. 309 for six. 4.4 uh, overs remaining. Remember what I said? Remember what I said at the start of the day? Full day's play. Full day's play. Full day's play, Full I day's said. Play. Huh? Yeah. I've huh? Had a, we've had all sorts of things. We've had spiders the size of your hand. We've <laughs> There's all sorts of things you said. I don't know how much of them are true. And uh, this is guided much more neatly. Behind square, there are two fielders closing in on it. And it's parried along the rope and they'll come back for two. And he had to <laughs> chase a little bit for the second. Then Alex Davis... Dives backing up a little bit more vigorously than he needed to because Will Rose is just hovering behind him in direction where he was just going to be able to comfortably pick up the ball. And Davis now is just checking that all of his limbs are in the right places. He'll pull his trouser legs down again. And wait, meanwhile, has progressed to 32. 311 for six, Worcestershire. A lot happened in that ball. <laughs> Some of it didn't need to. <laughs> it was quite a ferocious dive. Booth to wait once more, pulling this in front of square for four. 
Again, the short ball is not going to work. Unless you get it up around shoulder height, you're not going to inconvenience Matthew Waite. And he's up to 36. We, we talked earlier in the day about the fact that it's quite a luxury to have a player with his experience coming in at number eight. He uh, is very much uh, an all-rounder with even skills, really. Very proficient with bat and ball. And as a batter, he's uh, coming and playing a really good hand for his side. He's dominating this partnership with Jason Holder, who's in before him. Holder's got four, and Waite's got 36. Yeah, and I think he's he's closing in on a 1,000 first-class runs, Matthew Waite. So if you talk about experience, that's it there. But anything short, it's three boundaries he's scored by pulling in front of square. This time he'll pull behind square a short ball onto his hip. It'd only be a single, though, because Hannon Dolby can come across and take it. Michael Booth, the bowler, playing as an overseas at the moment. He uh, will become an English player whilst at Warwickshire. 23 years of age, born in Zimbabwe, but uh, raised in South Africa. This is his first-class debut. Before today, had one wicket in List A cricket and five in T20 cricket. He's now got one in first-class cricket, that of Jake Libby. Not a bad one to get as your first. As Jason Holder leaves a ball outside off stump, goes through the wicketkeeper, end of the over. Four overs to go. I think it'll be tight, likewise. So, you know, your prediction, Melinda, is... I, 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 look, 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 I'm building up some tension here. I'm ramping it up a bit. Your <laughs> prediction that we'll get a full day's play. No, wait for it. <laughs> We've got to have some jeopardy. Is very much in the balance. Well, I think in the spirit of things, it works. Because time-wise, essentially, apart from six minutes, we have had a full day. We didn't lose any overs for that rain because they just took tea early. Mm. Uh, I think I'm going to claim a moral victory no matter what happens because I know that you love to do that here. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> well, this has been a lesson in... British-Australian <laughs> relationships, to be perfectly so honest I, with you. I'm a dual citizen. I just want to remind you that. I am a dual citizen. I've got both my passports. I can pull out whichever one I want to whenever it's the most convenient. Hmm. As Rhodes continues his spell, he's over the wicket to wait. He firmly drives that one, but just as far as mid-off, so they won't get a run there. He had a, a groin injury, I think, at the end of last year, too. So, Mr. missed some matches, did wait. But he's certainly starting off this season in style. 37 off 41. And just the aggression he's shown with that lower order. Very confident. He's on again now. And that wasn't so confident. In fact, it's out. It was a shorter delivery outside the off stump, maybe a little bit slower than what he expected, and he's just feathered a cap through to Burgess behind the stumps. So what was looking very positive for Worcestershire as far as a lower order smashathon goes, it's abruptly brought to an end. He's gone for 37 off 42. And leaves Worcestershire 316 for seven with stumps closing in quickly. Somebody I could hear on the effects microphone criticising the umpire. I don't know whether it was because they felt they should be off for bad light by now or whether they thought it was a bad decision. It can't be a bad decision because Waite walked. He was already on his way before the uh, figure was raised because he, he knew he got a nick on that. And, you know, I think very deserving Will Rhodes, his second wicket. Now, he only took two championship wickets last season, at about 100 apiece. But he really under-bowled himself. He didn't... The previous year, he bowled himself a fair bit, particularly in one-day cricket. Last year, he under-bowled himself. This season, it's up to Alex Davis. And this is his 16th over of the day, two for 36. So he's been a very, very useful performer. Yeah, and I won't be sorry to have that extra option as well. And... It's time for Nathan Smith now out in the middle. Another intriguing signing, overseas signing. He's the New Zealander. Uh, he's been playing for Wellington over the summer. And uh, got his best first-class figures as well. He's the leading wicket-taker in the Plunkett Shield. He's got 45 first-class matches under his belt. He's signed for the whole summer. Richardson, I know, sees him as a, a good all-round package. He's now got a 
see what he can do with the bat. He's facing now and just defends the first ball he faces from Rhodes back to the bowler. Mm, 117 first class wickets at 26.94. 1,700 first class runs at 26.64. So he's nearly got the averages the right way around yeah, to well be a genuine all-rounder. He's got a, he's got a first class high score of, of 114. So mm. that's, uh, that's his only century. He's got 10 half centuries. So. Keen played half coming in at nine, isn't it? Yes. So quite intrigued. He's on strike now, and this time he, he plays forward at one that whistles past the outside edge of the bat into the keeper's gloves. I think we might get a light meter reading at the end of this over because it is going quite dark. We've had mm. the floodlights on for most of the afternoon and early evening. Oh, we've done so well when you look at the weather all around the country. Birmingham Bados has managed to <laughs> pull it out for everyone on the first day. Here comes Rhodes, and this one, this time, it's just left by Smith. It doesn't sit that well, does it? Birmingham <laughs> Bados. No it, it, no, it doesn't. I sort of was searching for a second. Bermaker. Bermaker? Huh? Uh, yeah. It's closer. Maybe. Yeah. Although we'll work. have to think on that. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it does Birmingham. It doesn't have a it doesn't have a nickname like that, does it? As Rhodes comes in, that one is just a bit shorter, but angled in at the body is taken off halfway down the pitch. There is a ball is flung back in at the stumps. He's back safely. Fielder at mid wicket running around sharply. Had we used the nickname, we could have we, we could have gone straight to Brumaker. That would have worked. Brumaker. Brumaker. So. Um, Burn Bados. Maybe Burn Bados. Could that work? It's, it sounds okay. really uncomfortable. It's been a long day. No, honestly, I, that's what I've been thinking for a while. Three hundred and sixteen for seven. But a very very enjoyable one in the com company of yourself and Phil and all of our listeners. It's so good to be back talking about cricket in England it really is the thrill of the championship season the umpires are going to consult now if we did go off I think that would be it for the day because we're uh, approaching 6.30 and uh, we are indeed going to get the light meter reading which was done at this end when we had our six minute break earlier and I would say it is every bit as murky now as it was then Michael Booth is waiting but I think the light is going to be offered and I would be astonished if that wasn't it after uh, 93 overs. So we're going to be three overs short of uh, Melinda's full day. <laughs> moral victory, moral yeah. victory. It's 6.30. 316 for seven, Worcestershire, with Holder on four and Smith yet to score. The uh, ground staff will start getting ready. And uh, when we see the wheelbarrow come on, uh, that generally will mean that the day is over. Worcestershire batted very, very well, having been put in this morning. Uh, lost Jake Libby for 38, caught by Briggs off Booth. He top-edged a pull. Well caught that by Briggs. They took lunch on 123 for one. Uh, Gareth Roderick, he was out for 68. Second man to go, caught by Burgess off Rhodes, just fending one through to the wicketkeeper. That was 180 for two. And uh, when Bad Light Stop played just before five o'clock, it was 235 for two. Then a bit of a collapse. Jones caught by Burgess off the bowling of Briggs down the leg side for 26. Adam Hose nicking to first slip. Rob Yates taking the catch off Ed Barnard for two. And then two wickets in very quick succession on 271. Cashy Valley with a fantastic maiden first class century of 110. Caught by Barnard leaping high in the covers to give Oliver Hannon Dolby a scalp. And then Dolivera, Brett Dolivera caught by Burgess off Rushworth for 19. And just before bad light brought upon us what uh, looks like it's going to be the close. Uh, it was Matthew Waite caught by Burgess off Rhodes for his second wicket for 37, 316 for seven. The fact that the wheelbarrow is on tells us that is going to be the close of play. Just a, a final thought from you, Melinda? Well, I just think it's been a wonderful day. We've, uh, we may not have seen the wickets falling, but we've seen some entertaining batting. Uh, oof, there's been lots to talk about with the Kookaburra ball, but for me, definitely the story is seeing Kashif Ali score that fine century, his maiden first-class century. What a wonderful story that is. Brilliant to see. Another, uh, I guess, feather in the cap of Saka, an encouragement for all they're doing. And hey, 
County Championship is back. Cricket's back, baby. Very good. Uh, now, Mel will be back as part of the team tomorrow. I'm going to go to a dark room. Uh, 316 <laughs> for seven, Worcestershire at the end of the first day. Play will resume tomorrow morning here at 11 o'clock. We'll be with you for ball-by-ball -ball coverage just before then. Have a pleasant evening and a very good night to you.